Good evening. Glowing finger with the five gifted subs. Thank you very much for that, dude. That's super generous. Drop the W's in chat, please, guys. Let's see who do we have here. Mumsel, TF, welcome in. Turbo, welcome back. Liberty, let's go. Glowing finger, thank you, dude. Ubo, welcome, welcome, welcome. Alder, good day, Vata. A little bit of a bonus stream chat. Fortunately, all my plans for my day off and all that jazz have, are not happening. Because the weather is dreadful, but that means we get to check out videos earlier. What's a day off? I know. Don't seem to be getting them anymore these days. What is it, Nixie? No, you're not getting any more. No, no. Go like that. Go like that. Yo, Shady. Welcome in, dude. Took nine hours to cover Mike's video. We're going for ten for this one. Nah, this is like... How long is it? Just under two hours? Yeah, that's like four. Four or five, right? Alright, give me a sec, chat. Best podcast ever? I hope so. I'll be very interesting with this one. Serious question, have you considered moving yaw to right stick? Impressive how well you aim with it on pedals, but it has to be limiting you? Yeah, but... Why be the top dog when you can kill people with your feet? Again, I fly for atmosphere. I, my flight method will be one of the best when we get control surfaces. Because mouse users and right joystick users will be over yawing and they'll be dragging too much. All depends on CIG, obviously. 
So I would rather have fine control over my, uh, my role. But again, for space, I would agree with you. Yaw is better on the right stick. But in atmosphere, yaw on the pedals is way better, allowing you to have fine control over roll and pitch. F14 top dog. Exactly. Plus soon I'll be connected to Elon Musk's uh, neural network, so I'll just be doing it whilst I'm sleeping on stream. It'll be fantastic. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Michael Dark Low Lawrence. Welcome to another episode of the Darkness. Fuck, man, it's way too late for this shit. It's a it's a bonus stream chat. It's meant to be my day off today, but the weather has like ruined everything. Storms are coming in, headaches are kicking off. So I was like, all right, well I'm gonna clean, I'm gonna have a shave, uh, and then I'm gonna watch the yogi video because we're meant to be doing it tomorrow or Thursday, depending on if I was getting back or not. But since all the hikes are cancelled, it's like eh, might as well do something, right? So I was like, all right, you know what? I'm in a semi-decent mood. Let's fucking queue up. Let's go to stream. Yo, beer. Thank you very much for the fucking five months, dude. Appreciate that. And the good thing is, it's like an hour and 47 minutes, so... It should be nine hours. Let's, nice let's to hope, see right? you. Thank you, dude. Appreciate that. But yeah, hope everyone's doing well. The other videos should be out... In the next, like, 10 minutes or something like that. On the VOD channel. Just bad weather, dude. I ain't going 2,000 meters up whilst there's, like, thunderstorms and shit like that. Knowing my luck, I'll just fucking get hit by lightning. Then become immortal, and then you guys have got to watch me for the rest of your life, and then I've got to find new people to watch me for the rest of their life, you know what I mean? Just not gonna take that risk. One hour video to react to a boy. Can't wait for the 10 hour coverage. No, no, no. Again, it was three hours. We did 10 hour coverage because it was like three hours and 20 minutes for Salty Mike's one. Plus, we had a lot of conversations and stuff like that. So. You know what I mean? Let me just shut this down. I would be unbeatable, yeah. But I would also be bald for eternity, and I'm not really in the mood for that, to be honest. <laughs> if it grows my hair back, sure, right? Alright, let me load up this video. Two hours of yesterday was us talking about boars. That's probably actually fucking true, right? That would be true. Alright, let's fucking dive into this. Let's get on with it. Two, one. Oh, we need a. Uh... Yeah, I'll do. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Launch Sequence Podcast. I got another episode for you, and uh, this one Yogi! is a special one. We're gonna be talking about master modes, fix, finishing up some of the coverage I've been doing over the last couple weeks, it, yeah. and obviously nice a lot of the conversation that's been going on. Uh, but we got a Again, special guest today. Actually, the one of the people behind this system itself, and also the one who is on with me. Uh, just a couple weeks ago to talk about this and we are just going to dive deep into the flight model so thank you so much for joining me yogi appreciate you yogi seems to have got yeah, his sure. uh camera looking Welcome a little better than on the live show thank you as well. Welcome. the uh nvidia right, so, ai is kicking in good um before we get started i want to thank supporters obviously for making this possible you guys are here live if anybody wants to join this podcast live feel free to uh sign up on patreon or youtube and if not, well, this is always coming out on audio platforms, so keep an eye out. Nice. Before we get started, though, before we jump into everything, um, I want to let people get a little bit of an introduction to where you guys are coming from, and for anybody who may not have a preamble for this show, why we're even having this talk. So, oh my God. Uh, Yogi, Yogi, if we can start force. with you. See that blurring. How did you yeah. come across Star Citizen? And when? Across Star Citizen? Yeah. Oh, it was back in uh, 2012. Uh, 
yeah, basically that. Uh, I saw the announcement for Star Citizen, and I'm uh, basically booked stuff right away. Uh, my wife was a little bit awkward about this because I said, uh, I'm going to buy, or I'm going to spend like, I don't know, maybe 120, 130 Only 120 euros okay? or something Jeez. like that for a game that doesn't exist. And this was right while we were at university, we're low on money. What? And she was like, Am I, am I older than Yogi? I mean, to be honest, that would surprise me. What? So, um, but yeah, this, I, uh, I just thought the vision and all that was great. I, I always loved uh, CRS games. So, um, so you started as a player? A, yeah. Okay. As and when did you start working with CIG? Uh, this was about 2017. Uh, I was working at Frontier as an uh, audio programmer. And uh, oh, I worked at Tappet and uh, we wanted to leave the UK. So, um, and CIG had a studio in Frankfurt and um, I knew the audio director back then. Um, so I switched. Okay. And, uh, oh my God, like he no switched sides. Audio team he does have a lot of hair. Yeah, he does. To, yeah. <laughs> to take me on. Ah, audio was a great time. I loved working in audio. So is that a is that like a normal? I wonder if he's regretting to going into flight like the flight stuff. How did that happen? No, no. I mean, I mean, no, no, <laughs> uh, no. Uh, while I, while I was playing, I don't know which which version it was. Two two thousand seventeen. I think this was before the three point Before three point oh, like that'd be two point yeah, six. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So a little bit after 3.0, I started uh, fiddling around in the uh, in the head tracking stuff um, because back then head tracking was like just offsetting the camera. And so basically, when you would use Tracker R to offset your he's got fingerless cockpit, gloves on. Right, basically, it, it offset holy this, shit just, uh, from the helmet. So now he needs a boombox. He looked right into the into the helmet and raise it up high. Um, and I hated that because <laughs> this is the thing that actually made me stop playing Star Citizen because I was so annoyed by that because I always played flight sims and. I love head tracking. Yeah, uh, so the head tracking back basically then asked, day was uh, Jens so bad. back then, who is uh, he's now like a coding director, but uh, um, for uh, the gameplay coding director. So back then I asked him, could I just change? Then he was like, yeah, sure, put it in. And then, uh, and then the next thing that I can remember in that regard is that uh, Chris asked me to do some look ahead stuff based on the head tracking work. And then because I couldn't manage my my uh, gameplay and audio things at the same time, I just swapped then basically full time to gameplay. Okay. So how did and you? Then, oh, yeah, sorry. No, go ahead. And then over time, it's just like um, at, at at the time when the swap happened, we uh, the vehicle experience team was 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 um, both created, and then we basically like the task of that team was to just improve the gameplay. Um, mm -hmm. So basically, it took ownership about uh, certain tuning variables. It took ownership about the experience, how the cockpit feels, and so on. Um, but uh, yeah, and then it basically went on from there. You were talking about uh, before the podcast, we were chatting, and you were saying that you have thousands of hours in DCS Flight Simulator. <laughs> um, yeah. So is that always been? Is that is that why you got into Star Citizen oh, because of the flight stuff? Shit. Or was it just the overall? Sorry, guys. Game Fuck. Itself? Oh. No, it was it was the flight stuff. I always liked okay, spaceships no, actually, more than my neck planes more than I like cars. <laughs> so um Oh god, that was horrible. It just it's 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 just natural interest for me. Um the DCS stuff is like I mean god, that's it, it like helps a fucking with knot there. understanding Oof. flight mechanics, it helps with understanding uh comp, uh com combat geometries and all that, although DCS is not really transferable to Star Citizen directly. Um we definitely can learn a couple of things from that um it's also like the feeling that some players want when they when they fluffy dogs think about emerge the, pub message let's say the experience yeah. they want to have in, in, in stars like, and then i need to go to a chiropractor and get like some of the lower discs and stuff like that sort of like adjusted or something like that because i've never had it and i kind of feel like with the falls and knocks i've had over the years it would be kind of cool to maybe get some correction done and stuff like that but yeah, holy shit. I was fucking sore, whatever that was. But it also released a huge amount of tension. Compare that to a similar flight, some then some some things you can you can take on, like how the cockpit feels when we have like taking or something like that, or the feeling that your cockpit is so much under stress that it might fall apart or something like that. So a couple of things around. are transferable, but um, over there. overall I just I just like I just like planes and spaceships. Okay. Planes and spaceships. 
Avenger, how about you? What got you into Star Citizen? Uh, the original Kickstarter, being a fan of the games and being, you know, obsessed with the same kind of stuff Yogi's talking about. Airplanes okay. have been a part of my life and space shooter games since the 90s, you know, playing x Wing versus TIE Fighter and all that stuff. And then I played Star Wars Squadrons. And it's just, you know, from one to the next, I've been playing basically every space combat shooter game under the sun until I got Star Citizen. And I fell in love with SC, you know, because at the time it was like the... The 1.6 and then the 2.6 and 3.0 was a little rough and then it started getting much better and then by the end of like the 316 era it was quite good again and then when yogi came out with the live model um that's when it really for me that's when it's like it went from i love the game to i don't want to play anything else ever and uh now we're here fighting words when was that uh when when was what like when when, when when was that changeover that you said that you didn't enjoy playing anymore? No, 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 no. At no point have I not enjoyed playing. I'm saying it got to the point where I went from I love this game to I don't want to play anything else but this game. Oh, and I thought you were when, saying you don't want to play live... this game. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I was like, all right, we're no, getting the, started. The live... <laughs> no, no, the live model is when for me it's like, yeah, that's when I started the YouTube channel and, and from pictures? Okay. people what I know about flight games. And then... Uh, yeah, it just kind of went from there. And now we're here at Master Wars. Then let's Do you start remember what the version oh. was back then? So well, the original, like when you first came out with the new the new flight model. So when you remember that interview you guys had and you're saying uh, went and spoke to some pilots and, uh, you know, talking about the... Oh, okay, there was, and was and three... And there was like 315-ish? Three three right? 14, yeah. 14 that, something, yeah. Yeah, maybe, right? Uh, that I was when... I've patched since the beginning. Um, every flight mode, every model... Um, even the ones with the bad head tracking <laughs> and you know for me that's that's when the game really really became something special for me I think I think that was around the time there was like a an inside Star Citizen episode and the team came out and kind of said this is our initial we're, we're, we're taking every ship we're bringing them back to their basic balance and we're starting over with like the combat balancing and all that stuff I remember that. That was um, that did push a lot of people to start getting into fighting more seriously. Let's start with with that kind of from a baseline of of the talk today. So around that same time, um, there was also a an effort to slow down speeds. I think there was a feature in one of the patches that said um, uh, high speed combat is going to be different. Missiles might be more, you know, or, or less. Um, they might not track as well and things like that. That also is kind of in the same energy as what Master Mode seems to be, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, is that for me? Or is yeah, that yeah, for that's you? for yeah. you, Yogi. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, but like, uh, it didn't work. <laughs> right. So I wanted to ask about <laughs> like, that. We tried, we tried like a couple, like, like I remember this thing, like it's, it's, my memory is a little bit hazy on this, but, but we definitely tried a couple of things to make, to encourage players to, to slow down. Right, we we uh, we tried to, I mean, not publicly, but we tried to uh, change. I think like fire rates or, or 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 spread or something like that. We changed the lock on times for missiles and all that stuff. But mm -hmm. ultimately, um, players just still like the the benefit you you're getting from just like <laughs> putting the pedal to the metal and just like and just fly fly fast uh basically compensated for any kind of like debuff you could possibly get so we never we never encouraged or we, so we, we were never in, able to encourage people times I pause it, to actually two, fly close hours. to each other and get this um fly in a way so that they can actually see uh, see the spaceships it was always like yo q thank you very much for the fucking prime um, and dude. this was not Appreciate like, that. interesting for us which is why we later basically went to it we gotta enforce the lower speeds so Master mode. Uh, I want to push. Oh, hold up, hold up. I want to push yeah. back on that just a little bit. And I love you. <laughs> Sorry, you fucking start, man. Please, let me go back here. Master mode. Uh, I want to push. Oh, hold up, hold up. Speeds. So cross, which is why we later basically went to the, we gotta enforce the lower speeds. So master mode. Uh, I want to push. Oh, hold up, hold up. I want to push yeah. back on that just a little bit. And I love you, Yogi. Right. You are correct. <laughs> like jousting is like it happened, like the speeds and stuff. But I just want to say that it it was still possible to tune that model, and for the speeds to be adjusted 
to some degree so that fights could get closer. But the geometry that you had in that model worked actually really good. It's just that so many people never, I guess you could say, got to the skill set where they could actually get to that point. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So, but why is that, Avenger? Why is that? Because it didn't work. It only worked for some people. Man, this dude will not let go of this shit. Like, you have to understand that only a few people that would sit their asses in fucking Arena Commander for six months, 12 hours a day, and do the same fucking shit over and over again, and nobody wants to play a fucking game that has that sort of, you've got to do that, and you, like... This dude will not let go of this shit. Nobody gives a shit about life. You don't tweak something that's garbage. You fucking rip it out. It's like a band-aid, right? You don't keep the band-aid on just because it's got a fucking Mickey Mouse sign on it. You rip it off and you replace it with something that's healthy. So the result was people <laughs> skating by at ludicrous speed. But, um, you know, one of the options of that my flight, like that flight model is it still had, in my opinion, it still had slightly closer fights once you get to the point where you can manipulate your ship and control it, right? Because of the way the box system worked. Um, but anyway, that's... Well, so I think it's... Some, there. I, think, I think a lot of people who are now playing the game probably didn't even know that you guys were trying to do more natural things to slow down combat. And I, it's, I think it's important to communicate to folks that this is something that was allowed to be done via player skill and player control, uh, but ultimately it seems like you guys are going for something a little more artificial because the game simply isn't moving in the direction you need it to fast enough. Is that accurate? That is that is accurate. Yeah, I nice. mean, like the the thing with the with the player skill uh, and the and the speed is, I, I mean, a one's right. Like two, when yeah. when you really really know how to do these things, then yeah, it can be great. Really good. But you are, you always have the problem is that two players that want to fight against each other, they need to. My only issue with Tomato's show, and it's just me, is the revolving text in the background keeps making my eyes focus on areas that it doesn't need to be. You know what I mean? Like, it keeps moving, so my brain's, like, trying to translate through everything. So, <laughs> that would be my only criticism of the you background. Or, or but it's a really to nice setup. Style of fighting. Uh, at any time, any player can just like, you know what, I don't want to fight with you, bye, I'm going, right? And there was almost nothing you could do to force the people to stay in that fight. And then... That's why I'm trying. Axis, how you doing, dude? I'm trying to do that, but obviously my peripheral vision, like, I have 15-15 vision, so it's quite narrow, right? But in the peripheral, it's just hyper-focusing on these areas going like that. And then the main focus of your, your eyes, I'm like, <laughs> quickly just, it wants to keep fucking moving there to see, you know? I didn't even notice until you said, dude, my peripheral vision is just constantly picking up. And it's like, you know, when you, you see somebody walking, you're like you're focused on like maybe your phone and you see like somebody walking past and your, your brain instantly tells you to check it out because obviously, Primal instincts kick in and it's like got to make sure you're not getting being like harmed and stuff or like I'm gonna just use the word like predator sneaking up on you and stuff like that So your natural instincts kick in to go and check it out and sometimes people walk past you like why is that person? But your brain tells you to do that. So whilst it's moving my brain is telling my main like vision to be like you gotta scan around something's fucking up here, you know the amount of training a normal let's say let's say a casual i think if it just started, wasn't right, moving it investing in would be would so be on. good it is very hard but to it's just a me thing you know to do in, in order to become competitive which then leads to the problem your vision naturally that good my vision is insane absolutely insane like i can read text like fucking 90 feet away and stuff not like where i can full bleed a, like a sentence but like if a bus is like Say I'm at the top of a hill and like in a street or something like that, I can read a bus, where it's going, all that kind of stuff. Like I've got insanely long vision. But also I've got a weird vision where the faster things come towards me, the slower it appears right in the center up here. So that's why for me with low flying, why I can get so low and go so fast is because I see the beginning part of it super slow 
and the peripheral view is going so fast. And that's what allows me to basically memorize a rock incoming to dodge in between it. Um, but no, I've got absolutely we, perfect we vision. Right it's just 15-15. Although I've really invested in PvP combat in terms of like, I want Star Citizen to succeed as a PvP game. But we don't have a lot of PvP players at the moment. Like a lot of, like there's, there's just not a lot of players. What have I been saying for the past like week? Listen to this. I'm really invested in PvP combat in terms of like, I want Star Citizen to succeed as a PvP game, but we don't have a lot of PvP players at the moment. Like, So why bother wasting time trying to make it where the 0.35% fucking community is happy when you have 99 point whatever the fuck doing other things? A lot of like there's there's just not a lot of players interested in that because the the entry level for that is yep. so freaking high. Yep. And that and um, uh, it is a little bit more exaggerated with the with the difference between you know um, hotels <laughs> versus uh, MKB controls and so on because I hope eventually one is not showing again the arcade game, but maybe I want to see Darth Vader. <laughs> Dude, that was fucking that was just so fucking bad. If you have a keyboard and you want to go forward or backwards or to the sides and so on, you you just have a digital input, right? There's no there's no fine tuning in between. Yeah. Um, hey, Danny, so, hey, Danny. So sure, like you you can you might want to have this this high skill area of of playing the game there, but if if nobody can actually learn it fast enough to actually enjoy it and not become better uh, or, or can't become better, then we failed as designers. Yep. Right. And. Um, that is the problem that we're currently trying to fix. So the main goal yeah, is I, lowering I the skill floor. No, you want to raise the skill floor. Or yeah, right? raise it. Be, no, because you want no, no, it, you want no, 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 no. You want you want to you want to <laughs> you want to lower the skill floor so that you have an easier access into that. Sorry, yes. So when I conceptualize it, I'm saying you want to raise people up to a point where they can get to that level where. No. You want to lower it so they can get on fucking board. If you raise up the skill ceiling or the skill floor, it means that I've got fucking climb even further to fucking play the game. You lower it so I can get on board and then fucking get the lift going up. Has any <laughs> what fucking lift has Avenger One ever been on, man? He's got a fucking grappling hook, fucking Batman utility belt. He's like, Woo! I'm fucking going up, man. It's like yeah. you get 80% of the game in the first couple hours. He's sitting on 729 IQ. Yeah, that's exactly. Like, that's kind of yeah. the, you know what I mean? So it's like easy to pick up. It's There's less knowledge barriers. It wouldn't surprise me if he has a Batman utility belt. Because like who knows about tricording? Who knows about, it's just not something that yeah. people will pick up, right? Um, yes. But get to that point where people can get in, it's, which is what I've, I've been saying for years. And when you came out with the Master Mode stuff, I'm like, this is good. And I still believe that. I think fundamentally Master Modes makes all the sense in the world, right? We just have to get to a tuning where It's funny how like in that video he said, this is good. But then literally the next video that came out when we got Master Modes, Master Modes is garbage and shit and fucking it's a joke and it's all that stuff, you know? The existence of uh, scale Tricordian is not like, no guys, Tricordian is not an exploit. Because everyone can do it, right? You would just call it cheese because if you didn't know exactly how to do it, you know what I mean? You are at a, 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 a disadvantage. But it isn't cheating the game, as people think. The problem is if you don't know how to do it and, you know, right behind it, basically, then that's where it becomes a bit of a thing. It's just cheesy, that's all. But it's not an exploit. No way. Because everyone can do it, you know what I mean? And people sometimes do it naturally, right? He appears to be contradicting himself sometimes. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> Let's just continue. He can flourish and also give a place where, like, a rookie pilot is not going to walk into a meat grinder and be like, I'm not doing this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, it's not just flat mode. There's also things like, like matchmaking. We don't have effective matchmaking for like competitive. He should really write a script out, Pock, beforehand and read it maybe like to some of his close people in his organization. You know what I mean? Or give them the ability to read it and then, you know what I mean? Put some fine points in it. I kind of feel like he 
rushes a thought in his head straight to a video without planning it out and stuff like that. And that's where communication can go fucking <whistles> because you have something in your head that sounds good, but then when you actually say it, it doesn't come out the way that you translate it in your brain, blah, 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 blah. So writing scripts is a very healthy thing. Plus, it keeps you on point. Sometimes he bounces from one point to another, comes back to the main point, and it's like, you've gone around a fucking couple of laps for no reason, right? That's where you lose people, they get, you know, pissed off, blah, 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 blah. So I would definitely say if Avenger 1 wants to start really putting out his points, he, he needs to write a script. And there's no shame in doing that. I think it's very professional if you do. As far as I've heard, it wasn't meant to happen, but point taken. <sighs> See, the thing is, we've had tricording for a long, long time, Pain. You know what I mean? For a long, long time. Should I write scripts before talking to my wife? Dude, I, I don't know what your partner's like. You know? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe go into your room and be like, Partner, today I have cooked breakfast with coffee. Would you like some? This should be good. I'm not going to get shouted at, right? You know? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know, dude. Things and so on. Uh, but yeah, at the moment, if you, <laughs> if you jump into... If you jump into... Yeah, PvP, Jedi. Because again, at the moment Avenger 1 has a lot of good points. The problem is his communication skills to other people is what makes it a negative, right? Is that he's got a good point on what he's trying to do, but he can't translate it. To people, that's all. And that might be dyslexia or just not processing it and stuff like that. I have a very no filter issue. So basically, like if I walk up to somebody and the first thing I think in my head is that they're a cunt, I say that they're a cunt. And that's just it, you know? It's not Tourette's or anything like that. It's just literally. I don't monologue things in my head very well. Like, I talk to myself constantly, and when people walk past me in the streets, I'll be like, you know, I'll just say what's going on in my head, you know? Oh, come in. Uh, Karibadus. Hope I'm saying that right. I got dyslexia. That's something different. Well, dude, I'm not a fucking doctor or whatever it would be that knows everything, but you know what I mean? D dyslexia is like, can affect people in different ways, you know? But again, you might just not be good at uh, communication skills. A lot of people aren't good at communication skills. That's fine. You can't knock that down on somebody. But I would say it's probably best to have maybe a script for some of his videos, you know? And, and what do you see? Yeah, fine. You see, you see. You come into this area full of sweaters, right? You're like, let's do this, and then you die, right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, I want to I interject, because I will get back to kind of uh, master modes and where it's <laughs> headed, but I want to interject about PvP, because that's obviously a big part of this conversation, but uh, like you said, the majority of players aren't really that concerned with it. Um, is, is PvP something that be. you guys see yeah. as being a big that, part That would of the be game, my recommendation to Avenger 1, on, is before he just makes a video, just happen, write a script down what he's thinking, forward. and... Okay, so from the, from the design directive I got... Take right? it from there. I, 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 like, again, I know a lot of content creators that do this. They write a script on how, what they want to do, and they take it to, like, two or three people of their closest friends, family, whatever, and allow them to read through it, um, or even voice it where on Discord, because everyone's got Discord this day, so Avenger 1 could speak to three people and say what he's thinking, and they could be like, I think you should change this because it comes off maybe a little bit too arrogant, or this contradicts yourself massively, you know what I mean? But the problem is, and this is what a lot of humans have these days, is they're constantly surrounded by people that will bullshit you and not tell you it straight to your face. You know? That's why whenever I watch these things, I say it how it comes out of my mind or how it comes across to me. And if people don't like it, wear a fucking helmet. I don't give a shit. And that would be the no filter issue that I have. Is that I'm not here to make friends or keep everyone fucking sweet and happy. You can do that with your own lives. But if I think it's shit, 
because it's coming across to me as shit, I'm going to tell you it's shit. And if you don't like it, again, I don't fucking care. You know? You could call me two-faced, disingenuous, whatever the fuck. I call it as I'm t saying it to you straight. I'm not lying behind your back. If you're a cunt, you're a cunt. You might not be a cunt, but you're a cunt to me. So how many people from chat will be called a cunt by TDL at CizzyCon? Well, when I went to last CizzyCon, nobody was called a cunt. Hawk. You know? However, everyone kept feeding me fucking rum and cokes and double rum and cokes until I was fucking crawling back to my hotel nearly paralytic. Nearly got fucking hospitalized by the fuckers at the bar season. Like, too much fucking money. It was a lot of fun. I haven't seen you at CizzyCon. Uh, well, last one would be 2019. I didn't go to last year's one because it was just way out of my pay grade. Too expensive. Like yeah, again, if I go to like CizzyCon, it's three or four days. I have to put the dogs into like, um, like or put them to places where they can get walked and all that jazz, and that's that's what costs a lot of money. So, drunk law is funny as hell. I'm pretty sure Drunk Law will be at Susan Gone if I manage to get to go. I will have to be doing a, like a fundraiser later on in the year to, to be able to go to Susan Con because I've been pricing everything up and it's just with the stuff that I need to do around the house and how much it costs to put the dogs in and stuff like that. It's just, it's very, very expensive. Yeah, this is the person who's currently uh, responsible for space combat. Uh, the directive that I got is... Zerosti uh, is really good, yeah. This is a PvE game. That allows PvP, not the other way around. Um, um, I might stream which means, it. Like, I don't know sideways. There's this question whether... Let me just quickly pause Yogi here. Um, I'm hopefully wanting to upgrade my phone this year. to Because if anybody doesn't know, I go hiking and I take photos and stuff of dogs, training, all that jazz. And the Pixel 5 that I've got here is, is quite old now. Camera is getting a bit on. So what I was thinking is, if I can get an upgrade, I'll use this as the, like, streaming camera uh, and have it on some sort of fucking, like, I don't know, thing like that, you know what I mean? Or it'd be like that, right? And I could strap it to myself and then I can use my other phone to basically um, do it and stuff like that because, yeah, I, I need to see about it because obviously, like, no offense, you guys. I'm going to Citizen Con to hang out with people, get paralytically drunk, go and do some sites and stuff like that. I'm not really wanting to stream cues and fucking sweaty dads standing around, you know, wanking each other off for fucking Citizen Con and Star Citizen. That ain't me, guys. I hate to tell you. You know what I mean? So I would rather, like, want to just go and enjoy myself. Like, if I can do something, because I know, like, um, I'm going to be traveling, if it all goes ahead, I'll be traveling with Henkin. Uh, so maybe we'll do some RL streams on his channel and I can hold the fucking camera and whatever, you know what I mean? But again, it's, it's October, guys. It's so far away, I don't really want to be like, yeah, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Because again, if somebody like comes up to me and like, oh, you're streaming, and be like, you know what I mean? Or it's like somebody, oh, Darklaw, you killed me on Daymar over and over and over again. You're a dickhead. And I'll be like, well, good, you know. There's so many things that could go fucking wrong, you know. Like the, the changes that we're doing are foremost aimed weird. at making the whole game better but for basically all players that want to enjoy combat versus... Uh, just making things for PvP better. And this is also the reason why we're currently having master modes in that kind of state. Uh, right, so I do agree. Like the one v ones, for example. Like I mean, the one v ones were like called out as, oh, they're lame. They're uh, kind of like you feel locked in. Yeah, I agree with that. Right, that's 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 <laughs> that's true. Right, but the changes, the other changes we did were. <laughs> See, the thing is, <laughs> they were still better for the overall. I'm on the page what CIG is trying to do, which a lot of people will not be happy about. And that's build a game for the 99% of the player bases that are doing things in the game currently, yada, yada, yada. I personally don't care about the sweaty PvP arena commander guys, you know? Like, Yogi says here that he'll try and find something for that, but they're trying to work for the, the main game, right? Yo, Rad, how you doing, dude? Well, game. So, um... 
we do hope that I we think can that's focus more important, a little bit more personally. or uh, tweak in this the game time, a little no. bit more so that it allows more PvP in the future or has more more interesting death, right? Uh, but we won't get there in uh, in three two three. Um, so yeah, later in the game, I mean, uh, which Tyra said this uh, <laughs> as uh, in the threat uh, inspector where I where I was. Uh, I mean, in, in, in this one, SC, uh, uh, I see, I said, mean, oh, it's a great space combat game. It was like, oh, it's not a space combat game. Stars and more. Yes, I agree. So um, Taras <laughs> uh, mentioned that there will be areas where you are, which are more PvE and PvP dominated. Yeah. Um, so PvP will definitely be and stay a part of Star Citizen. They I don't. At the uh, moment, yeah. it's more like, what do we do first, right? You know that a huge amount of the community in DCS world, for example, only do the PvE stuff, which is fighting the NPCs and doing missions and all that jazz, right? Only a few people actually get involved in the PvP, because PvP is actually very, very difficult in DCS world. It's very difficult. But it's the same as like in VTOL VR, you know? I found more servers that are just PvE oriented, and it's a lot of fun. The problem is PvE in Star Citizen just isn't that good right now. And that's down to server performance, but also the AI is very janky. Um, but CIG always say that the AI is always based on like the lowest level or the highest level, and then it's just because of servers and stuff. So we'll see. You know, it's still, I would say, a couple of years before that. Well, for now it is Hawk, but CIG have always wanted it where like you would go to Terra. And if you tried to do PvP there, the NPCs would just fucking skull fuck you, right? So we just don't have that yet. We don't have the high and low sec. We've just got... Yo, okay, free. We've just got basically one solar system, and now we're going to get Pyro this year, which adds more PvP area, if you think about it. Like, Pyro will be the PvP area, and Stanton will have PvP, but it'll be a lot less, right? It'll be a very, like, a huge amount less. And then if you add Terra in, there's even less PvP, you know? They said that AI basically goes to shit under a FPS server side, yeah. It's, it's just unfortunately, what a lot of people forget about this, how you doing, Rizna? Is that Star Citizen is very dependent on tech. And not just the tech on our own home PCs, but servers, internet, Stability, optimization, all these things, and everyone keeps forgetting about it because they're so used to playing a game that's maybe on a 15 to 30 tick rate server, but CIG ain't running that system right now, you know? For you, Hawk, maybe not for the 20% you're attacking, though, you know what I mean? It's great experiences, yeah, but that's where CIG will create the arenas for us, Hawk. For people like you and me that enjoy PvP. So you'll have like Terra, which is very difficult to do. You can still do PvP in Terra, but it's going to be very difficult and you're probably going to be serving 24 hours in prison because the NPCs will absolutely blob you with four times the amount of ships and they're high-tuned, right? And then you go to like Stanton, which is a little bit of the middle ground. You know, you have PvP, you have lots of PvE, but the NPCs are not too tuned up. And then you go to Pyro, where it's some areas that the NPCs will be highly tuned, but because they don't give a shit about you attacking other players, it's more of a PvP thing, right? We've just never really had that. We've just had Stanton that everyone sees about and stuff like that. But I've said this many times on stream. I can play the game as a blue player and never come across another person PvP me. Or attempting to PvP me. In a whole day. I can do 12 hour stream. And nobody will ever come across unless they're stream sniping, right? Which and then, I, I, again, I don't care about that shit. But I can lit Because of my knowledge of the game, I can just avoid all fucking nonsense. But not everyone's in that state, right? So having different zones for, like, different levels of PvP. Because, again, you want to go off, like, if, if Pyro had juicy money and juicy like, modules that you could get and stuff like that, then all the PvPers are going to be fighting each other over that. They won't really care about Stanton. It'll be the low-tier brackets that would be in Stanton fighting. And again, really, like, if you're still getting caught by somebody like that, then that's kind of, like, on you and stuff, you know? 
I do think even if I'm being attacked, the PvP stuff is usually the highlight. Yeah, but again, not everyone likes that shit. You know what I mean? And the way I always advertise it, Melkor, is it's ba they're basically baby in the corner waiting for Patrick Swayze to fucking save them. You and me are the Patrick Swayze's. We're already up dancing and fucking having the time of our life. And the bitches are sitting in the fucking corner crying their fucking tears out until they get handed a hand. You know? That's on them, right? There's nothing you can do about that. Now, some people will go on White Knight and fucking save those type of players. And some of us will just be like, nah, we're having a party over here. My pants are way too tight. <laughs> and at the moment, we have so much data to update. It's like, I, I cannot, at, at the moment, I cannot even say when, when we're considered PvP, like fully PvP ready. And there's actually a couple of things. Yeah. But the problem is they don't have the do mentality to do that thing because be a lot of them are like, I have 1.4 million of cargo in my ship. I'm going to make 1.8 million of cargo if I sell it, right? So I'm getting a 400k fucking profit. Instead of, but they, they want that 400k and nobody to attack them. Whilst if you think about it, if you just made it where you made 100k profit, and you started giving three other people 100k a piece to protect you each way, everyone makes money, and you're a lot safer. But the problem is they don't want that interaction. They don't want... Uh, humans are greedy, filthy hobbits that just want to take and take and take. And some people just want to take more. And that's why you lose your stuff most of the time, you know? For me, I think it's a good idea to hire... PvPers and stuff to protect you. But the problem is, they'll hire people that have no idea how to do the PvP and stuff. And you get all these orgs that are like, we're a fucking security org, and then you fight five of them by yourself and you slaughter all of them. You know, why would you ever hire these things? So CIG really needs to bring out a rating system, like Uber, basically. Where I could sign up as, oh, I'll help you out killing folk, right? Not protecting you, killing folk. And this is my rating. Five star. I kill everyone every time. Guaranteed. Hitman stuff. You know, again, this is just a, an example. They need that in the game. So you, you go, right, well, this person has a fucking one star because they've done ten missions for people and they're shit every time. This dude has done two missions and they've got five stars. You know? That would be a kind of cool way to do it. But then it might piss off people because they're always one star rated or something, you know? Best murder in 12 systems. Yeah, how are you doing, Warclog? It would be cool. Grizzer, welcome in as well. So again, it just... CIG need to give us the tools before we can sort of get off the, the Hobbit line of always moaning about PvP and stuff like that. It just needs to be where let them build a video game because in EVE, you've got war decking. In Elite Dangerous, you've got other things that you can do. Star Citizen doesn't have any tools right now because it's not a fucking game. It is just a developing tech demo that CIG are working on for multiple years and will keep on working for multiple years until they dial it in. People need to stop fucking pretending it's a video game. Even if the company says it's a video game. Have a little bit of a brain. Pure PvP game. We would probably not have gimbals. Or something like that. There's a couple of things where we would need to be very careful how we how we lay out and the balance uh, and balance ships. For example, we have our our ships like light fighters. They have vastly different um, uh, uh, gun options, right? Some some have like I don't know, like three size three laser repeaters. Other have two size one, four size four, or, or four size one, or whatever, right? Like these the um, these uh, gun loadouts. They were not necessarily um, created from a balance point of view, but also from an artistic direction that we wanted this ship to achieve, right? But at the same time, this can be very hard to balance, right? But there's like there's often multiple requirements coming in why we need this or that ship, and not all of them are coined towards it needs to work perfectly for PvP. I mean, we're trying to do as best as we can uh, to make it to I think that's in a fair. way so that it feels Again, uh, I've never thought every um, ship needs to be able but, to do PvP. Uh, it's not the overall goal, uh, overarching goal to make a perfect PvP game. Like it's like Star Citizen is a PVE game that allows PvP. Not there we go. So. Mm -hmm. Star uh, Citizen is a PVE game that allows PvP. This is what a lot of people need to remember. It's not a PvP game that allows PvE. 
You better watch yourself. I'm a wanted man. I have the death sentence and 12 sisters. It'd be kind of cool if we, um, if we had 12 sisters. But I think we'll have five. Odin, Nyx. He didn't react. Uh, Pyro, Stanton, Terra. I think that's what we'll have in the next two years. If, if Squadron 42 is out. Did uh, Avenger 1 not like that? Wait, let's have a look. It's like, Star Citizen is a PvE game that allows PvP. Not vice versa. Mm -hmm. uh, can I just say something real quick? Uh, so, have you ever played a game called EVE Online, Yogi? Man. Mm. Oh, yeah. Game. Oh, yeah. Do, it's, it's, you... it's, just, it's a really <laughs> small independent title, right? <laughs> no, I, I did play EVE Online. I did not play it for long, though, because although I like the universe and all that, uh, it's not my type of game. Uh, I want to be in control of the spaceship. I don't want to. Uh, you are in control, control of the spaceship, I, Yogi. You're speaking my language because that's why I left Eve Online. It's because Star Citizen <laughs> let me control my ship, right? Okay. So, would you say that Eve Online is a PvP or PVE game? I okay. So that is. We are very lucky to have Yogi. Yeah, but as I've pointed out many times, Hawk, what Yogi wants isn't what the directive of the game is meant to be or the uppers above yogi want the game to be so we have to be very courteous around it where even though he's on our side the people above him say this is how we want the game to be and how it would be right you know oh they're massively understaffed i've never understood this dude when i found out like for years they had three people and then they managed to get five and stuff like that and Kay Winter and folk moved over. I don't, I, I, I generally don't understand how a flight team, and you've said that very well, flight, not combat, not racing, not low flying, but flight, the flight team is understaffed. I don't get that in a game like Star Citizen and Squadron 42. I just don't understand how you could have such a small team, but... Apparently that's the way it is, right? I don't want to reply to that specifically because I don't have enough hours, especially not PvP hours in the online to feel uh, safe enough to to answer that. But from my understanding, it is a big, like it just allows both at the same time. Like you have like big wars between factions going on. At the same time, uh, you can also enjoy a more. But. If you actually look at the stats on EVE Online, there's more PvE than PvP. Or curated content uh, when you play alone or so. So yeah, it, it allows so, both. But I think overall, with all the stuff that comes on, with the player-driven player economies and all that, I would mm. say it's more PvP. Well, yeah, for Squadron 42, I'll go, yeah, I would agree with you on that. But you know what I'm saying? Like, if you got... If you've got parts in the game where you're flying around and then you've got you're building a game like Star Citizen that's got a lot of flying as well, you would think that it would have a bigger team to sort of push things out faster, right? But yeah, they are spending all their time on the single player game just now. I would agree with you on that one, yeah. But if that sells really well, you know what I mean? That's a lot of cheddar going towards Star Citizen in the future. Yeah, so I agree. Um, EVE Online, in my hey, opinion... Jenna. It uh, there's a lot of Take lessons that Eve did really well that Star Citizen, in a certain kind of way, is starting to also do. I mean, we talked about when the um, player owned st uh, stations and bases, they were talking about the, the settlements, right? They're like, you can go into the really high risk area and have high reward, or you can have yeah. medium or low risk and it's not as much yield, that kind of stuff. I mean, that is directly ripped from Eve Online's security status system, which works really well. It's like you got players of the you know players in this area that are very safe but they don't really get a lot of money and players in the really 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 dangerous areas where you're going to find a lot of pvp over here right um the idea of it's either a pve game that does this or it's a pvp game that allows for this i know i have full confidence that you yogi have the skill set knowledge and temperament to actually get the game to the right place but i think in a weird kind of way the conceptualization of it's either this or that is wrong because if you have a PVE game that allows for PVP, the PVE con like the PVP balance and content will suffer in some way. And vice versa, if you do strictly PVP, the PVE content will suffer in some way. So the idea should be out the door and it should be much more based on if you have a game that's designed from the ground up that is making sense for PVP, PVE, 
You can take games like Star Wars Squadrons, which is strictly PvP, but yet the single player campaign is accessible to many people. I've only heard really positive reviews on people just playing the like the the campaign side of it and being like, this is great. But that entire met like the entire system was based around great PvP gameplay that also ends up being great PvE gameplay. So, you know, when we talk about master modes and the tuning and the ships, speeds, weapons, this, that, and the other. A great PvP experience, ironically enough, will also equate to a great PvE experience, in my opinion, because we've seen that happen time and time again, and we have real ex The only thing, I, I agree with Avenger 1 on this. I agree with Avenger 1, where if you actually, like, because CIG kind of want players and NPCs to be sort of, like, similar, that where, like, an, uh, a player can attack another player and board their ship, and do all fun things with them. And technically they could do that with an NPC, where you're boarding an NPC and doing that stuff. So I agree with Avenger on that. However, however, if you balance PvP and say took off ESP, which I would love, made it lag only pip, which I would love, uh, took away aim assist, which I would love, and that was your game to make the sort of like levels higher, most PvE players wouldn't be able to play the game, right? So, with what Avenger has said, I wonder if CIG could make it where you could have all the non-assist when you're PvPing. I don't know if they, they have a way of detecting where the... Like, you know what I mean? ESP would turn off when you're fighting a player. Um, stuff like that. And even if a player stole an NPC ship, it would just change over to where you... um can't get the assist. And I think that would be a really good system, which I think maybe Avenger 1 would enjoy. But then also when you're fighting NPCs, it turns back on, like behind the scene basically. Because you can have a lot of things like hidden where players can't see it. There is a lot of stuff in Star Citizen that's hidden away where players don't see the, the dev side of it and all the calculations and stuff. But it would be very interesting if you could have that. And then I think Avenger 1 would then get what he's asking. And also Yogi would get the PvE side and stuff, but it would all be down to, you know, is it possible to have it where when you attack a player, you don't get all the, the safety stuff and... What is ESP? It's an enhanced stick precision. It basically guides you in to help you out. So you've got like a, a, a hidden circle around your crosshair legion, right? And when you bring that crosshair over a pip, for example, or near a pip, it basically dampens your joysticks down or your aim down so you can do that, right? The aim assist, Melko, no, you've got it incorrect. Aim assist is basically when you have your crosshair near a pip, the guns do this in the game. Okay, that's what aim assist is. ESP just basically dampens you down so you're a lot slower so you can steady your aim to move around. But aim assist in Star Citizen is the guns are doing this. And bullet nudging and stuff like that, yeah. So what I'm saying is if you took away ESP, you took away the aim assist, you made it where you could only be lag pip only against players, but in the background, you when you fight an NPC, it gives you ESP and it gives you aim assist. I wonder if CIG could do that, because then, hear me out, this gives the placebo of, and you don't show it on the screen. You don't show ESP, for example. You don't have the ESP highlighted. You don't have a toggle for it. You don't have aim assist toggle or suppress, and you don't have the ability to change the pip, right? But it's hidden in the background where when you're versing a player, it's with all that stuff off. And when you fight an NPC, it still shows you the same screen but it has it in the background where you've got aim assist and all that stuff. And I think that would be the perfect way for CIG to balance this game around PvP and NPCs. You make it where you only have, e uh, like ESP is no, lo no longer on the, in the game. It's gone. Aim assist is gone on the screen, all that jazz. And you've only got the ability to have lag pip. You can't change it between lead and lag anymore. You just get rid of it. And when you are fighting a player, you have no assists. When you're fighting an NPC, you have assists, but it's in the background where you think you're getting better at it. And there's how you balance out the game for PvE and PvP. Around Avenger 1's idea of making the game 
more primary PvP, but giving the tools for the PvE. Would that not be a counterproductive for developing skills transfer from PvE to... Yeah, but you know what I mean, dude. If, you're, if you are a high-tier PvPer, no NPC is ever going to be a fucking threat to you, Hawk. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? No, no, but no NPC is a threat to you if you are a high-tier Avenger 1 player. Or yourself, or Virgil, and Gillian and stuff. No NPC in this game is ever going to be a challenge. Unless you're swarmed by hundreds of them. Vandals coming out of nowhere, right? What happens with gimbals? They're, they're going to be in 323. It's just a different system, and I don't want to go over it just now. Because we don't have the ability to access it. So, we'll wait for that. Hey Mojo, how you doing? Funny to say that, I wrote that down two years ago. Different between PvP, depending on what your target. Yeah, it would work. And the system can be done. It can. Yeah, because Yogi said many times there are things hidden from players that CIG adjust that we don't adjust because it's, you know what I mean? If, if everyone had the ability to adjust it, it would be crazy. Could you could just have the option to switch to PvP aim mode? Yeah, but it's to give a placebo effect, Hawk, right? Is that... If the speedometer, sa speedometer says you're going 500 meters a second, this is going back to what Avenger1 said in his other video, right? It's the placebo effect. If the speedometer says you're going 500 meters a second, but in the game code you're only doing 200 meters a second, how are you ever going to know that? Your eyes cannot calculate speed. Like where you've got a fucking dial that says, I'm going fucking 200 meters a second, right? You can only gauge it by what it feels like. But most of the time, a placebo effect kicks in is that you read it, and you think that's how fast you're actually going. Because there's no way to actually gauge it. That's why we have gauges in our aircraft that do everything for us. Because our brains ain't smart enough, right? So, I'm saying is you make the placebo effect where... NPC feels easy for people so that they can do their PvE and then the PvP has the high skill ceiling stuff because it just disables in the background when you move to a player. But there wouldn't be a difference in muscle memory. That's the thing. There's no difference. Because the moment that you, if you are trained with no ESP and no aim assist, the moment that it turns on for you behind the scenes, you're god tier killing NPCs. So why would a high tier PvP or care about that in the first place? If you're somebody that wants to be high tier PvP, you're going to be trained out of your mind to deal with no ESP, no aim assist, none of that stuff. And for the PvE players, they get that to help them out. And when they go to PvP, they go, Oh, right. It's a totally different ball game. But it's the placebo effect. Because you don't know it's there, you don't care. Unless it starts dragging or slowing you down, you're a jerk. But that would only be for PvE. And when we fight NPCs right now, Gillian, they're fucking cakewalk. You know what I'm saying? Because again, it doesn't need to be over-tuned like it is right now, you know? You don't fight NPCs. Well, there you go, then why would you care? You're going to be fighting players with no ESP, no aim assist, lag pip. You've got no assist. I'm saying is that it basically adds in a hidden system where when you're versing an NPC, it gives you the aim assist. And when you're versing a player, it doesn't. But you don't need to turn it off. It's the placebo effect of it being on and off in between. You have everything in front of you, so when you're versing the player, you've got the high skill ceiling of no aim assist, no ESP, nothing is helping you. And then when you go to NPCs, it gives you the aim assist on the, the pip. And it, I think it would work, because a lot of people are just flapping their gum. Not, I'm, I'm not saying Avenger 1 is flapping his gums. I'm saying that a lot of people flap their gums because they're only reading what's on the screen. They don't know what's going on behind. And if you say to somebody, I'm going 20 miles per hour, but in the game code, they're only doing 10 miles per hour, they can't tell you what 20 miles per hour looks like in their eyes. Nobody can. 
We do not have the brains that function that way. That's why you always read speedometers in your car. Because you can't tell how fast you're fucking going. It's like literally sitting in a car with no dash, no nothing, and you're driving along and you go, I'm doing five miles per hour, and you're actually doing seven. You can't fucking tell. You're not smart enough as a human. And that's fine. But that's where, again, if you made it the placebo effect, everyone wins then. You get the high tier scaling PvP, but you also get the assistance for PvE. NPCs are easy, yeah. Of games like anyway, Eve let's Online, continue. which are mostly PVE with tons of PvP. And, you know, to me, it's just, I feel like in a certain kind of way, like you've been hamstrung, I guess, in a weird kind of way, because they're like, we want the game to be PVE. I agree. We got. But the thing is, you don't know, though, Gillian. That's the point. You don't know because you can't change an ESP setting because you don't know where it is. You can't skip change a PIP system because you don't have that option anymore. That you only... Everyone's on a fair page at that point. You don't know because there is nothing, no information to give you. That's where I'm saying the placebo effect. You don't know, so you won't care. When people have the ability to change ESP... But again, who cares? Who cares if you're fighting a, a fucking casual as a top PvP or dude? The point being is CIG are trying to balance PvE first and not PvP, and I'm saying balance PvP first and make it where the people who do PvE have the aim assist, not the other way around. The casual cares. How are they going to care? You know what I mean? How are they going to care, dude? We're talking about people that do PvE. If they're doing PvP, that they'll go up a climb as it is. You're forgetting this is just a, 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 like how you look at the game, dude. You know? It's not how much you will get slaughtered. We still have to consider flying. We still have to uh, tune in gunning and all that stuff. It's the placebo of you don't know what system you're on. But when you've got aim assist, and you know you've got aim assist, and you know you've got ESP that's fucking things up, it starts working on your brain. That's why I'm saying if you don't have it, the placebo effect kicks in where you just get on with it. It's like if they took away shields, nobody would run away in a fight because you're always instantly taking damage. You can disagree all you want, that's fine. But again, most humans can't see this shit. You won't see this shit. You'll just be knowing that you're fighting a better pilot than you. So if you don't have a better aim, that's on you. If you don't have the, a better flight, that's on you. But there's no cheese around it. You know what I mean? There's no wonky ESP settings. There's no wonky aim assist. There's no wonky pip calculations and stuff like that. That's the placebo effect I'm going with. You wouldn't know. Without aim assist and ESP, the casual player will get up. Yeah, but that's where they have to train to get better, dude. If you're moving from PvE to PvP, like say you are spending 10 days out of, as a PvE player and a PvPer turns up on your 10th day, you're still going to get shat on, dude. You could be PvEing for six months, never fighting anyone, and you get into one fight and you're 100% shat on by a player that does PvP. It makes no difference, dude. But it allows people of high skill ceiling to have what they want. A hard game, a hard PvP game. If the casual player that never PvPs gets shat on, that's it. It's cannon fodder, dude. You know? There's a reason why we send fucking idiots into war first so that the guys behind pick up afterwards. Meat shields. There's a huge things, dude. But again, if you don't know what's on the screen and it's hidden away, 
it's the placebo effect. You don't know what's going on. So you don't care. You just go, oh, this player is better than me. You don't go, oh, I got shat on because I didn't have the right ESP settings or the right fucking uh, diagonal crossword in front of me to play, you know? Again, if they're wanting to PvP, dude, they're going to learn to PvP. You don't have any tricord weird stuff or anything like that, dude, you know? They, yeah, exactly, dude. Casuals will always get stomped no matter what, Skillion. You can never stop a casual- Dude, I can go in, in Arena Commander and fight a brand new fucking Arena Commander player and they don't even land a shot on me even with Mastermods. They just get one fucking pass, 360'd out of the fucking video game. You know? But Master Modes is not lowering the skill ceiling for PvP as much as people think. It's for PvE because a lot of people can't even PvE, Gillian. Dude, it's not. It's not just for PvPers. I hate to tell you that, dude. It's not. A lot of people can't fly for shit. It's for the general game. Master Modes is for the general game, not PvP. They're just bringing it down where, again, without Tricord, it naturally makes it. That's just because Aim Assist, Gillian. Take away Aim Assist and ESP. Do you think you would lose to fucking eight people? No. You would probably kill two or three of them. In the process. It's not removing the pip, Robert. See, that's where, no disrespect, but you're not even paying a fucking attention, dude. So go back and watch the VOD and catch the fuck up with us before you say something like that in this chat. We never said remove the pip. We said made it go to lag pip if you had been paying attention. Is absolutely lowering the ceiling for PvP? No, it's not. A pro player is always going to fucking school an, uh, another player. Easy. And again, I watched fights on Friday where top tier pilots were fighting decent pilots and they were getting fucking schooled. So I saw no fucking scaling, uh, ceiling being lowered. It just allows the fucking ground to be going in. Easier. Oh, we're not doing another eight hours. These space patrols. No way. But again, if you don't know that the system is changing, why would... You, you wouldn't care. If you're somebody who's PvEing, and you've got all the aim assist, you've got the ESP to help you out play the video game, and you go into PvP, there's the difference. You know that you have to start getting better at it because you don't have any assist to help you. This gives it more fun for the long-term PvPer, you know? That's not the argument, the difference between the top and lower, well, Firstly, there's no argument here. It's a debate, all right? An argument is one-sided. This is very open for discussion. The difference between the top and lower is much closer now. That is, I want to move. That is the ceiling being lowered, of course. But again, the ceiling being lowered doesn't make it, you know what I mean? Like if you, if this is where your average player needs to be and you bring this level down and this comes down naturally, right? It means they can hop on easier, right? But again, to get to this level, they still need to do a climb. And the climb can't just be what it is like now in live, where you have this as the entry and you have to go up a big fucking steep hill and then go along because you balance out a bit, then you have to go up. You want it to go up in a nice straight curve, right? And that's what CIG are trying to do with slowing everyone down, changing the way flighting is. 
but in my opinion, you don't need to have ESP and fucking uh, aim assist to do PvP. That is something that as progressing over time would give you those skills. You don't need them for PvE, as far as I'm concerned. Go and do PvE without aim assist and ESP. It's a shit ton more fun than just beaming down a drone that has no fucking idea what it's doing. And I'm not sure that it's safe to say that you wouldn't notice the aim assist and such in PvE. Yeah, because again, the NPCs are not exactly fucking crazy. You go in to do NPCs right now with Master Mode's aim assist and the ESP that's got right now, you put your crosshair just remotely around the pip and the NPC dies. That's fine. That allows people to have fun getting into combat, right? Because again, Master Mode's is not just focused on PvP, guys. I hate to tell you that. That's an element of it, but it's about flying and getting people into being able to do flying. Not just getting into high tier fucking PvP. That's something that gets worked on over time. So this would allow people to get in to do PvE and have fun because they've got the aim assist. And when they move into PvP, they're like, oh, this is a little bit more challenging. But I'm still able to fly around and understand it because I'm not getting tricorded Narnia, Gillian, by somebody that can orbit me who's been playing for fucking years. They're just dying because somebody has a better aim. That's completely fine, dude. Nobody should ever complain about dying to somebody that has a better aim. Or has a better way of flying. But if somebody has knowledge of doing a mechanic that you don't learn in the game, aka tricording, back strafing, corkscrewing that throws off all the fucking game completely, that's where it becomes a slaughter fest because you have to know that that's where the steep curve is. But if you make it where PvP goes up like this, and it's you progressing better flying and better aiming, there you go. If you need to tweak a mechanic of your game according to the situation, that means that mechanic is bad design and you're just patching it. Well, PV and PvP is a completely different story. Dude. An NPC will never move the same as a player. So, this literally allows, this is a placebo effect that we're talking about. Where I, with what I've suggested, allows PvPers to be PvPers and progress as PvPers, and it gives people who only want to do PvE the ability to have fun and kill their NPCs and stuff like that. I'm not, I'm not describing the skill floor being raised, dude. Where have I described the skill floor being raised? We are going down. When you have NPC combat, you're getting better assist and you're getting easier way to fly. Everything's slower so you understand it. That lets people hop on combat. Again, combat is not just PvP, guys. You need to let go of that idea. It's about the 99% of people that don't give a shit about PvP. They need to be able to get into PvE easier because they're struggling, apparently. Or it's designed for Squadron 42 so more people can have fun with it. Master mode is mostly for Squadron 42 and makes people look and stuff. Yeah, exactly, yeah. For casual players that enjoy PV only, I think Master mode will give them more ability to avoid PvP. Uh, well, this, this is not a topic about avoiding PvP. This is about literally making a placebo effect where you don't change settings depending on PvP. You just have it where if you attack a player, you don't have assist, and when you attack an NPC, you do have assist. So when you're fighting players, it's just a fucking balance line who is better wins. Simple as that. Not that they're doing any fucking weird shit. But that my system does make it equally important for everyone. Again, PvP... Doesn't you don't need to fucking like if you lower combat down for everyone where speeds and gunnery and all these things come into it and you make it where nobody has an advantage in PvP, you have a nice straight line of going up where the better aimer and the better flyer just wins. Simple as that. But because nobody has any assist from to begin with, you're climbing that ladder. PvE you wouldn't, because you would have the assist. And the problem is, 
is the people that would be moaning about PvP like that, is they're worried that they would get raffle stomped by a lot more people. That's just tough luck. That's like any fucking game that you play. Go and play a beat em up game, Tekken or something like that. You're always gonna fight somebody that will fucking beat you. Exactly, Red Snap. But we don't know if CIG wants such. Again, this is just a suggestion, guys. It's just a suggestion where Avenger 1 is saying PvP should be balanced more, and then PvE will become, you know, what I mean, it balances out to PvE. CIG are doing PvE first and PvP as a secondary, by the way. If you don't realize this, you're fucking not paying attention to the last, like, six months. CIG are balancing for PvE combat and everyone playing the game and PvPers are sort of, will find something for you to fucking deal with. If you don't understand that, you're missing out. I'm saying that you could make it where this side don't care about all these tweaks because you're just going to have it on a level field. No assist, no aim, no fucking this. If you're going to be playing controller, you're going to have to just be really good at a controller. You want to play as a mouse, you're just going to have to be really good as a mouse. You're going to play as a joystick, you're just going to have to be good at a joystick. And if you can't dial in those settings, that's on you as a human. Not a fucking game doing all the shit in the background for you. Oh yeah, Hawk, exactly. How to bring the skill level down in a sense so that people can access it, but without sacrificing that zone where it, it really matters because that's what's going to keep people. No, they don't in seem to be in that, that direction, Hawk, at all. Gameplay. But they're okay, hyper focused so on Squad the 42. There, but, and that's um, the realization that a lot of people have in the PvP it, community that's... is you are, no disrespect, are non give a shit right now. That they will give you PvP. And they will give you areas to PvP, but that's about as much of a bone you're getting right now. Yogi will try his best to dial in what he's allowed to dial in, but the upper up, the higher ups will literally always come back and be like, this is the goal we're going for, right? Oh yeah, of course, Hawk. Completely agree. Completely agree. We're very blessed in that situation. But then, I would say, if you didn't have somebody like Yogi, it would turn into a full PvE game at that point. But again, whoever's above Yogi has the say in this, guys. And that's something that everyone has to remember. We did in 3 2 one for example, right? This was all based around PvP. The reason... Um, so, because... I do agree, like, if you have a good PvP experience first, it is easier. Like, PvE is always easier than uh, PvP uh, in, in terms of balance, because yep. if there's something in PvE and, I don't know, you fight alone against them, some designers might say, okay, you're in a Gladius and you're fighting five Hammerheads. That's not a problem that's really hard to solve, right? Like, we can use damage modifiers, we can just make a... I don't know, accidentally, like, the ships running into each other to make it easier and so on. So I do agree, <laughs> right? That is, that is easier. Um, <clears throat> but when I when I said we're we're doing a PVE game that allows PVP, I don't like. There's still a couple of decisions in there that um, we would simply not do uh, otherwise. As I said, like gimbals is one thing, right? Because right now we have this thing that we that we have gimbals you, and we're not really using it anymore that. in in, in fights, Boy, for example, to automatically track the target and and, and 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 hit something. Where like when you you can manually gimbal them if you want to. True but, hawk, yeah. You have this. Uh, you have this um, slow. Uh, lower Unfortunately, fight. dude, going with what you just said there, I kind of feel like until Squadron Forty Two is done, we're always going to be in this sort of like under loop phase, right? Until that is out of the way and they can do more for Star Citizen, it just always feels like Star Citizen is the second idea right now. And to a certain degree, I would agree with that from marketing point of view, but yeah. I don't think it's a slight to say that it's a PvE game that allows PvP, it's both. No, it is. It's, it's, it is a PvE game that allows PvP. People need to understand that. It is, Star Citizen has always been a primary PvE video game with an element of PvP. 
where you can be attacked at any time, anywhere, by anyone. Does not mean you dedicate PvP for the, the narrative, right? They just allow you to have PvP at the PvE locations. No, it does make PvP less players less important. It does. It, it really does. Because the... I want to put this into percentages. 5 million backers, 1% of the community is 50,000 players. There is no more than 5,000 people that actually understand PvP in this game currently. There's no more. That's about a 0.35% of the community. No company, Lady Space Patrol, gives a shit about that number. You know? No company gives a shit about that number. So having Yogi actually give a shit and try and put some things in to help PvP, that's amazing. But you have to understand that this is a PvE game with elements of PvP. It is not a focus at all. The focus will be is that maybe when we have outposts versus outposts, orgs versus orgs, gameplay that's not coming anytime soon. So there is no focus in PvP. It's just an element. Alright. But that's the thing. You shouldn't make the PvPers feel better. They should have the fucking logical sense to understand this and stop pushing the narrative on, on folk that have no interest in PvP. That's the difference. I love PvP. I do PvP. But I also understand that the community is not PV, uh, PvP driven. So that's why I don't camp them at truck stops. I don't camp them at fucking jump gates or wherever that's going to be. I literally gank them whilst I'm fucking roaming around myself or at a location that I'm known to, to sit at. You know what I mean? But people need to, the PvP need to community, like Avenger 1, has to understand that they're not the main focus. And they never will be for the time being. And they have never been the focus for God knows how many years. Because again, everything that CIG does right now is for Squadron 42, and that's fine. Um, you can use a precision targeting mode, which is basically not very useful in dogfighting, because you'll never be so close and, and so stable on target that the auto gambling will actually make, make the enemies hit. Um, <clears throat> I forgot where I was going with this point. Hang on. Um, I'll find it in a sec. But overall, um, when I talked about we're doing PvE now and later PvP, this is don't understand this as a as a general. Oh, we're making this we're making a pure PvE game. No, no, the game itself, the mechanics, the combat dynamics, and so on. They need to they need to work in a systemic way, right? We know what the hammerhead should be good and bad at. We we know what a the medium and heavy fighter should be good or bad at. Or we're trying at least to. <laughs> I mean, some stuff just naturally evolves, right? But, yeah. but we roughly know what our goal times are. Um, <clears throat> but when I talk about um, putting focus on PV, P, PvP, on PvE, so specifically in this case, that means the one we want, for example, right? I, yeah. I simply currently... Because this is the thing. I'll, whenever you play squadron battles and stuff like that right now, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, sometimes you can get a really bad lobby and it just doesn't go well at all, but... You know what I mean? Like, CIG will try and balance around some sort of system to get the 1v1s back in and the small groups or something like that. But you have to understand, if a fucking seven people turn up in a hammerhead and you're by yourself in an aurora, you're kind of fucked, right? There's no way PvP can ever be balanced where that aurora win. It just gets absolutely shat on. So there's like an element that Yogi's saying is that, you know, the, this hammerhead is designed to go into battle against NPCs and, you know, fucking brrr, vandal and all that shit. And then it goes into PvP and it does the same thing. But, you know, if you don't have the sort of numbers, you can't really go, oh, I can 1v7, right? Yeah, exactly. Kidding, man. Yeah. So there's where you, you balance a lot for PvE with the element of, for PvP, you've just got to be a little bit more careful. I have time to invest a lot of... of in Because there's no way you can for... make that Aurora 
Kill the other yeah, players. Basically that, it's time that would just be like, so broke. My work time is basically is basically money, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have we cannot invest a lot currently in the one v ones. If I know that the majority of the uh, combat um, uh, combat players are not PvP players at the moment, so the see, we cannot invest time into the one v one if most of the players are not PVE or PvP players. You know? Money as well, yeah. So that's where PvPers just need to take a side state, right? Or side set? Um, side seat. You know what I mean? The, the center stage is not yours yet. They're focusing on Squadron 42, getting this game out where more people can play PvE and with the element of PvP, and eventually down the line when we've got these other solar systems like get fucked solar system, you go in there and it's PvP, maybe some of the rules of the ships change, whatever the fuck, right? The training wheels are taken off at that point. Yeah, well, I, like, again, this is not to put words into Avenger 1's mouth, but I kind of feel like he bought into the wrong game. He bought into a game where he wanted to do his, his thing like he did in EVE Online, but you're getting the fucking... Uh, what's it called? Uh, Chris Roberts experience. You're getting the, um, what's the fucking game called that everyone jacks off about? I've never played it. Uh, Wing Commander. You're getting the modern day multiplayer Wing Commander sort of experience with elements of PvP thrown into it, you know? No, I, I think... I think you'll find that it won't be the type of game that he's wanting, kidding man. I'm pretty sure of that. Grizzo, I would agree with that, yeah. This is why we're focusing on other things. If if we had a Freelancer? I never played Freelancer either. Uh, Looks good, goal though. To make PvP good right now, we would invest in Jerk, we would invest in, uh, you know, in, in a creating different or trying out different different models. I mean, you, you, you yourself, you had the, uh, your big propo uh, uh, proponent of like, make it faster, right? I don't necessarily agree with this because, um, but it doesn't mean that the overall thing you want to achieve, meaning hope probably something like, I want to be evasive. Isn't right? there like in, mods in you can fighter. do this to can do be, PVP? can be achieved in other ways. But currently we don't have the time to actually deep dive into these problems. Will it happen? I'm pretty sure it will. Like, um, just on my on my schedule, there's a lot of time scheduled out for IFCS where we, we just will try to see like get behind that. The way Yogi's network. trying to say this is like, sit down for two years, because this sounds very much like the hyper focus is getting Squadron done, and then it will be, you know, Star Citizen and stuff like that. Because Pyro and the whole solar system and creating the solar system, Hawk, is a different department, dude, right? And they do want PvP. They just don't want it to be a primary thing, right? Because then everyone would be playing a, a different game at that point. And they will end up doing the security status like EVE Online. But that's going to take time. So whilst you're focused on something else, PvP does have to sit on the side. Remember, we did have, for like, literally two years, always Arena Commander, and that was the only thing that we had. PvPers have had their time. They just need to sit down and let the rest of the game be built now. The same with pirates moaning about no QED in 323. Just sit down and play another game until it's done. You don't have to play Star Citizen like it's a full-time fucking job. You can just enjoy the elements of it and wait for it to be finished. Nobody forces you to play this. Oh, of course, Hawk. Of course, dude. But you've got to remember the whole vision of Star Citizen was always going to be a 90% PvE game with 10% PvP depending on how you meet players and how they go with it, right? That was how it was sold. 
Nine NPCs for one player. That might change. They might do different things, but that's what people bought into. They did not buy into 100% PvP get fucked video game. But Chris has his fingers gun pointed at me every day and tells me to play SE every command. Well, that's, that's up to you, dude. Is 90% of it, yeah. Again, CIG are not saying no PvP, but the PvPers do need to sit down and just keep calm for a bit. You can't... If the focus is PvE and Squadron 42, which could be out in the next couple of years, then you have to sit down for like three years and just wait. Did you see Yogi clarify PvP, PvE focus on Spectrum? No, I have not. I'm literally watching this paper plan. We can get to that at the end. You also have to be a subscriber before you post that down. Du -du 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 -du. Rules of the channel, dude. You accept it. Du -du 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 -du. Please come out to emphasize Star Citizen is not purely a PvP focused game. And that there was a design decision to have balance to consider how the best to support PvE scenario and combat simulation. Yeah, exactly. Just to be clear, Star Citizen prioritizes both PvP and PvP aspects equally. I disagree. And it is a crucial that the development of experience that caters for both things. Again, dude. You can write stuff on a spectrum, right? That's when your boss tells you you have to do something to shut people up. All right? People need to, you know what I mean? I can tell you that I'm a hot beautiful Brazilian woman and you can either accept it or you can fucking walk away, right? Can you share Lincoln? Yeah, give me two seconds. There you go, guys. Again, I wouldn't look into this too, too much, personally. And the reason for that is... No, naughty yogi! Shouldn't have said it this way on a podcast. This will be the last time you get to go on somebody's podcast. Bad yogi! Yogi, write something to shut them the fuck up on, on, uh, Spectrum. Yes sir, free sir, full bags full sir. Don't always look into what somebody writes until it's actually in the game, right? Don't be gullible, guys. It is a company after all. That is run by Amazon. <laughs> and fake name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Again, I know what Yogi's going on about, but the, the people above Yogi have a different say in this game. And a lot of the time. A developer or a CEO will say something and then they start going, We're sorry. We're sorry. Hi, I'm Dark Law at BP Oil. We had an oil spill that killed millions of seals. We're sorry. I hope you can accept our apology. We're sorry. You know what I mean? You ever seen that South Park shit? It's like Star Citizen, so Yogi's like, Oh, I say this and. Hi, I was on Space Tomatoes stream the other day there. I said something that I shouldn't have said, and I'm sorry. The way we're looking at it is this way. But in two years' time, we might change our ruling completely. But we're sorry. You know what I mean? Stop being so fucking gullible. Jesus. But, um, <clears throat> overall, it's just me. Like for three to three, hey, we will not have. Ended. Like we'll probably ship with what we have right now in master modes. It, fights and one v ones will still be locked in. Squadron battles will still be a lot better than they were before. Yeah, I, um, look, I, it was a long winded answer. I'm pretty sure you'll get some crazy fucking PvP in Star Citizen down the line. It just ain't going to be just now because we need to milk the tits of the fucking PvE players a lot more. That will be CIG's primary objective right now. Get them all juiced up, ready for fucking Squadron 42, boys. We're gonna make billions of fucking dollars in the first weekend. 
You're gonna have fucking Albatross and Co Carnage and what the fuck is Albatross? Uh, fucking Asmund Gold, right? And then they get the money and then they go, right, all you fuckers in Star Says you get fucked. It's now 99% PvP and 1% PvE. Get fucking wrecked. We've got billions. <laughs> you know what I mean? They could do that. You have no idea what CIG can do. Because the best thing about it is motherfuckers have signed up and back for this game with the big words that say subject to fucking change. Not in those words exactly, but it constantly says in anything subject to change. This is a subject to change. This is just a demo. A test demo. We're testing an environmental stage. <laughs> you know what I mean? And people fucking lap it up like little fucking milk cows. They're like, hmm, hmm, hmm. Love it. Love it. I love it. CIG is on the 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 back of the player and all that stuff. Where do I find Albatross? I don't know, dude. I don't even know why I said Albatross. You know? But again, we don't know yet. So every company person, including Yogi, has to be politically correct and make sure that there's not a fucking pitchfork outside Chris Roberts' mansion with PVP, PVE, PVP. You know what I mean? They've got to sort of just make it, nip it in the bud now, you know? This is why there shouldn't be any CIG on any non CIG Discord. There should be no fucking DMs from the developers to anyone apart from it. They should be going and keeping stump and just going, this is the fucking game you're getting. If you don't like it, walk on over to fucking something else to play, right? But there's a lot of flappy fucking gums. And again, I'm not saying that it's bad that Yogi's on this podcast, but if I was fucking CEO, my developers would be ended out of the fuck to shut the fuck up and just get on with the game. Answer for a short question, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate it. I, I like you going long way, man. It's Because it's you can say one thing right? and people will take um, it differently. I will say that... In again, I am a hot Brazilian woman with long dreadlock hair. You just have to believe it or you can walk away and not believe it. My own defense. Um, personally for me, obviously I'm like, I, I'd like to see higher SCM speeds, not higher boost speeds. Um, you know, yeah. cause I feel yeah. like the ship natively by default. I would, I would agree with that. Yeah. It's going on right now, but not too um, much though. Avenger, not 500, like pressing a lot 300 to begin with. Let's see what 300 would be like. Your SCM bubble is only so big. You can't create they can go over to Microsoft Flight Simulator for PvP. Yeah. Speeds and spreads are yeah. so high that you just can't. Do it's it. a so crowdfunded it game, dude. Or... That doesn't mean shit. You're not an investor, right? You know what I mean. You're not an investor. You don't have any say when you buy into Star Citizen. No, you don't get a say. You don't get a say, dude. You're not an investor. You don't get a percentage when this game fucking makes money. Wait, how, are you, how are you an investor? What are you getting out of this at the end? When CIG make billions, what are you getting out of it? Pledge donation, yeah. You're not an investor to this game. You have a fucking zero say in this whatsoever. You don't get 0.001%. Dude, you're not going to make any money from this game. Right? Mike said he was told devs weren't allowed to talk about SE on podcast gets that changed. Well, we don't we don't know, man. I'm not going to I'm not getting into that ins and outs, right? It's cool that Yogi's done it, but also you got to be very careful what you say. A digital mug? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry, Glowing Finger. I hate to tell you, bud. You're not an investor. You have no say. You don't get any money at the end of the day. You have pledged, which is a donation. You're a consumer as a customer. And that's it. Sorry, bud. I w I, dude, I would love it if we're an investor and we get 0.01%. You know, if they made a billion, I'd probably make like 10K or something like that. You know, it'd be fucking amazing. But that's not gonna happen. So unfortunately, bud, day to break it to you, 
you have zero say in this game. Zero stakes. Whoever fucking, you know what I mean? Only the person that actually invested that 15 million in the game gets anything out of this. And I'm pretty sure they've already made like a little cheeky 30 million back by now. I can create more deflections and move around that space. Um, which to me felt feels really good because I know the live model, if you brought it down to 500, we all kind of in the PvP. This is the same like, video from great. yesterday? Yeah, I'm, I'm still here. Still here, guys. Like with the settings and tunings and stuff. We're an hour, but guys, we're an hour and 50 minutes in and we've only done 26 minutes out of a 147. Fuck you. I swear to God, it's you guys that make it so much painfully longer than it needs to be because you constantly made me stop to read your questions and shit. It's all your fault. Yeah, you know, the more thought I've given it, the more time I've been sitting with it, the more I play master modes, <laughs> it's the, board. the more I've spoken to other members. Uh, what I find is it's the ratio, not really the speed. So if you want 220, right? It's Let's say all your kind of target zone. It's the speed you want to keep the fights in the general area. Yada yada. yada. Then it's the ratio between weapon speeds and and ships, right? You remember the tachyon guns we had back in the day when the banner defender? Oh came yeah, out? oh yeah. The what were the tachyon? Yeah. What were the tachyon guns? God, he just asked this salty mic show the other day there. Like, fucking hell, man. <laughs> it's like a one-track pony. It's a one-track pony! It was like the, um, oh, you mean the, um... Hey, what were they? The Banu. Those were hit scan, right? They were hit scan. Yeah, right? they were, well, what? yeah these, were, these were big balance. Fuck me, it's like he's talking, like, Avenger, dude, you can't talk to people like this. You can't talk to them like they're fucking two years old. That's offenders for us, because when you're, <laughs> that when, you're when you're out from a target, if you have a, <laughs> no, no, seriously, like, these guns are, uh, are, are a problem for us, because the, uh, the majority of the, of the combat gameplay results around maneuvering around each other. Now, if you're further away, mm -hmm. you'd have less uh, rotational, oh, what the, my horn is a stealth horn. Hang on. <laughs> it's the okay, ghost. Right? Oh, there we go. <laughs> so because I'm a professional Scotsman, Mordor's. That's why. The further you're away, the more. Oh, nice! He's got models. The smaller your your angular uh, rotation requirements become, right? And the uh, the the cinch weapon. Cinch yeah, is, fingerless right? gloves weapons, high. Were, uh, Again, he needs a boombox high. Raise it up. You ever guys ever seen the Lonely Island song? Boombox. Such a good. Fingerless gloves. And they were high damage, high speed, and the <laughs> and the uh, they were bad at uh, the fire rate, which made absolutely. Which but I think they're so um, suppre it, it makes no not difference. suppression no. gloves. What's it? It makes uh, no difference because for hands, when you when you want to be on target, to it's like about, make better like, blood flow. It's about how you can maneuver to actually keep uh, your, compression. Your thank you. Your, yeah, I think they're compression pitch, gloves. Right? But this is. Like this is actually an internal. Because um, I know a lot of joystick like users official, use compression this is a gloves. Value for us, like how much work do I need to put in to actually bring my gun on target? And snap hit scan weapons basically have no work because you just need to be on target for. Wow, well, the video three, stuff is the video small stuff. Small amount right? of a second. He types right? all day. Click and you get the kill. That's true. So they're yeah. much easier to use than than. It would still be compression, okay, right? I, the I mean, they look okay, kind of going. thick for Sorry, compression, but. <laughs> I don't know how cold Germany is so, right now. Context is key. So uh, the they're break back dancing the gloves <laughs> because no matter what you did, it didn't meaningfully avoid damage, right? Yeah. And you know, regardless of the distance you're engaging at, it only depended on what your maximum range is, right? And these two yeah. things in tandem were balance breakers in the sense that it made the gameplay feel bad because mm -hmm. no matter what you did, as long as they were within pole dancing like, gloves, well, I guess I'm getting hit now, right? And so then, it, it, then the game changed from being a flight combat game like what we're trying to design to being, well, I have these singes and this they can shield, be thick, can so they? It's now All right. online kind of thing, right? And my argument's kind of been right now with the current tuning of three twenty three is it, it kind of feels the same. In I know a lot of people that have compression a lot gloves. Of the has been They're very good so for like dealing with uh, the no, tension and no stuff like that. Surfaces, so we're kind of I should really wear the stuff you know, as well. But if the gunnery has become so oppressive to the movement of the I've got ships. big fucking mole yeah, hands. I, bank left, I, mean, I like, never find any gloves that sort of like, I want to have choices. Whether I'm in a medium fighter, a heavy fighter, light fighter, snub, doesn't Carpal matter. Carpal tunnel. If yeah. I'm engaging a target and I'm looking at him, I'm looking at his relative movement, I'm like, okay, I should be able to move here to avoid fire. I should be able to move here. Here are my options. If I go left, right, up, down, it doesn't matter because he's just going to nose on and track me, right? And so, you know, a lot of guys in the PvP community, including myself, have kind of been like, hmm. I should wear them in bed sinkhole my bed is very hands-on as well 
Grand, thank you very much for the tier free fucking yes. One moment, one moment. Let me quickly go to here. Sorry, guys. We're just going to do a quick pause. Because I don't know if actually you're on my fucking list. Here. Thank you so much for that, dude. Lots of love and chat. Let me just quickly get this up because let me make sure. No, you're not, dude. <gasps> Grand. You're added to the list. What a fucking champ. Thank you so much, dude. Massively appreciate that. Let me just get that unwritten. Added to the wonderful hall at the end. Fucking legend, boys. Yeah, we're working on t uh, second month of Partner Plus. So that is fucking huge. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Like, there's small things that we could adjust now, like, you know, weapon ranges and, and you know, cone sizes, that kind of stuff. And, you know, um, velocity. Lotion helps. I've heard and that. You know, the more I gave it thought, the more I thought to myself. I recommend this stuff or deep heat. Deep heat can be a lot of fun in bed. Tiger Bam as well. You know it's working when the pain kicks in. I think the problem is the gunnery system in Star Citizen. Thank you, Grant. Massively appreciate it, dude. Like the gunnery system in Star Citizen is in a good spot, and if you could change it, would you? Uh, no pain, no gain. My okay. safe word is um, more. <clears throat> What I don't like, right, I think the problem back a little bit here. is the gunnery system in Star Citizen entirely. Do you feel like the gunnery system in Star I love how Avenger 1 says entirely and Yugli goes, What? Star <laughs> Citizen is in a good spot, and if you could change it, would you? It, and before Yogi designed all the gunnery. Uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> What I don't like about the gunnery system in general is that we have an absolute free form of how many guns actually attach to a ship. Like we're yes! trying to, to balance this out, for yes! example, with the capacitors. Ooh, right? I like this idea. Um, the alpha damage of if 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 you if your ship has even if it has lower lower sized guns but have many has many of them, it means like your initial alpha that you get to push out is hurting more than a ship that basically has bigger sized guns but only has two of them, right? Mm -hmm. So that is that is a mathematical problem that's hard to. It's mm -hmm. not in the mathematical. It's, it's 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 just a problem that's hard to, hard to fix. What we're gonna do for that kind of stuff is though that we're, like the different shields that we have. They they're gonna be they're gonna have like values which make them more or less resistance against certain, and uh, against the the alpha damage that comes. Through. Chat. I fucking said this like, two years ago. I said don't do armor in Star Citizen. Make it where the shields resist damage from other ships right so if you're in like an idris a light fighter shooting at you is going to take ages to fucking disperse that shield compared to like say a size nine fucking hitting you and stuff like that don't bother doing armor just hp value everything up and make it where shields super fucking tanky and stuff like that. so when the shield goes down you know that's it right that would be awesome man but I think they're going to try and do armor, maelstrom, and shields as well, which is going to make battles really long, if that's the case. For example, the typical problem that is often quoted to me, oh, wait, I'm sitting in my, in my Avenger, in my Gladius. Yogi's amazing. I have laser yeah. repeaters. Now I have a range of four kilometers. Like, they have no damage fall off and so on. So mm -hmm. I can pepper a, a constellation from, eight, from miles away and keep the shield in regen. That specifically won't happen in the future, right? If you, if you, if you pepper a constellation or, or, or any, any other size... Uh, uh, shield with uh, sorry, a ship with si size sh three shield generators. Nice. Then the shield generators will basically not necessarily shrug it off, but they will not go and go into this uh, high region delay. So the nice. amount of um, that's delay fucking, that you get that's a really on, good uh, thing impacting shields and so on will be dependent on the alpha damage that comes in. That's a really good a idea, actually. Around that, right? Because this has nothing to, so to do with. It means that we'll still have long range weapons. So CIG are not gonna change the weapon ranges if I'm if I'm following Yogi, but they're going to make it where the shields will shrug like say for example you're you're flying away and you're getting peppered by somebody, the shields will start to regen faster than the peppering. Which we don't have right now. The moment that you take any form of damage, your shield stops regening, but it looks like 
if you hit a certain threshold, the shield will just go fucking regen mode activated, which means this is this fucking changes so much, right? And that that's really fucking cool if CIG does that. That's a really good idea. Yes, it is. So the moment that you take any form of damage, Kitty Man, even distortion, it stops your shields from regening in combat. If you put all power to shields, you get like a 25% resistance in certain areas and stuff like that. Um, well, technically, the Hammerhead used to have it where it regens so fast that it didn't care about low tier damage, Glowing Finger. This is a completely different thing. This means that if you're close range to the Hammerhead, the shields will start to go down. But because of bullet spread at far ranges, it means that the hammerhead will go, this is too low of a damage for me to go into no regen mode. I'm gonna, I don't give a shit, I'm starting to regen, which means that you can't stop it from going up because you do such minimalistic damage. So now we're talking about where when a hammerhead is at distance, you've got a fucking eye on it and get that ion closer and closer. So when the hammerhead starts to run away, you're like, guys, I need you on that hammer now. I need you to dive in on it and keep that fucking damage down. But if you let it get away because of bad team play and stuff like that, it gets its shields up and it comes back in. It doesn't need to go into nav mode. It just needs to move away from you like two or three kilometers and come back in, which is huge. This stops a lot of hyper kiting because people can just go to 2K, get their shields up and dive back in. Which means that you don't always have to go to nav mode to escape. This is fucking win if it happens. But obviously it's not going to be in 323. It's just an initial idea that he has. Which is so cool. The gunnery system. but it kind Because it works on all ships with, then. Uh, with uh, with damage, uh, damage application. Um, so, so, but still. Sorry? So, just real quick. Just so I can understand okay. that. So how is that problem going to get fixed? Because that's sometimes what I sit around and think about. It's like, okay, so... Did you see the hammerhead video I put out? I know we talked about it in How could you not pick that up? DM chat and I remember again That's such CIG a good devs system. Of, CIG devs have commented on the saying, well, this will be fixed because the armor system will come in. And and my whole thing has always been like like it's a geometric problem rather than like an armor problem, right? So yeah, you can put shield regen to a million. It it that it just the limiting factor. Oh right, chat. All right. Before we carry on here, because no joke, Avenger uses this word all the time. I'm gonna just make sure I understand it, right? Because he uses geometric all the time, which is relating to geometry. Let me get this fucking. Shape, size, relative position, figures. Right, okay. For me is now I just need to bring a few more fighters because if I can hit you and you can't hit me, then it's a moot point whether you have a million points of armor or not. So in regards to that situation, how are we going to fix that? Like, how are you going to approach that problem? That's with the new turret system. Like, I swear, does he not fucking watch the videos? Before he made his Hammerhead video, three days beforehand, CIG released an Inside Star Season that tells you how they fix it. They're adding gimbals to the turrets so that when you are doing shenanigans, it's fucking doing this shit to track you easier. I don't understand why he keeps bringing this up, man. The question. I just, I just explained it. Like the thing is, like, <laughs> like the <laughs> you okay? oh the God. thing that I want to achieve in the gunnery system is mostly that I want the choice of weapons that you bring with you to matter. Like the proper way exactly, to bring down the camera. Exactly, because you're talking to somebody who is designing this, to somebody who is playing it but doesn't understand it. That's. That's the, the hardest thing for any developer, right? Now, I can give my opinion. I can criticize CIG. I can say, you know, Yogi has beautiful long hair, and I maybe not believe it, right? Um, it's very difficult for me to lie in this situation, right? But you know what I mean. 
at the end of the day, I can harp and rant and cry boo-hoo and stuff like that, but at the e end of the day, I have to trust Yogi because he knows more than me. I can play the game maybe better than Yogi. This is just an example. But he knows more about the game and all the hidden stuff than I will ever comprehend because I don't have those skills. So you have if a developer says this is how we're going to adjust it, and you turn around and go, How are we gonna do how is it gonna solve this? And the developer goes, I already explained it. You know what I mean? Yogi can't go into layman terms. Yo uh, A1 does not believe Yogi knows more than he. <sighs> I don't know. I know it's Spit, I know dude, spiders. but that's, that's um, if you people spiders, on podcasts for some them, fucking reason, this right? Will not be, like... Heaven forbid you just had it where you just have Yogi and Tomato, right? The way where I would like this to be is that the numbers actually matter, right? Like at the moment, if you go with one constellation or one hammerhead against a single fighter, and the single fighter actually gets it a does not, of the hammerhead, yeah. I want that fight. It sounds like I'm not getting my way. I'm going to keep so crying about it until I get my target. way. And I like think the developers like, are just tired of that. Like That's that. how it comes across to me. An area that is bespoke created for killing, uh, for, for killing fighters. Well, 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 kicks. The problem is then the developer loses their job. And we don't want to lose Yogi. Okay? So let's hope, let's respect Yogi in his choices and how he's designing the game. It might not be what we all like, but we have to respect it. Let's believe in him to get the job done and believe in the company to get the job done. And if you don't like it, walk away, right? But we don't want to lose Yogi because he loses his cool. Let's not put Yogi in that position to begin with. Fighters should suffer. And this is also the direction I got Because that's above, not fair. Way, right? Like we want chips like last chips and capital chips. We want yeah. these things to be to be actual problems that players have to solve. But if it was There's a Scottish like a one, one -one developer there, that was right? allowed to be if Scottish, you want to bring then yeah, he would say, shut the, the fuck up. The choices that I would like to see is like, let's let's ignore the current balance and uh, mm -hmm. even the current 3 2 to one state, right? You need to overwhelm the defenses, not necessarily by, um, by uh, firing it. I do like how Yogi always has a pen in his hand. He had this on... Inside Star Citizen and the live show just recently on Friday. He's always he's always writing notes down chat. He's a fucking but chad, just to man. Give turrets a harder target and allowing your other fighters to get close enough so that they can use anti-material cannons, which is basically our version of like low velocity, high punch, um, in ballistics, so that you can actually punch through the through the hull and actually damage those those turrets. So um, I mean this But we don't know that though, Hawk. That's the thing. That's the thing that I'm pointing out, is that you don't know. You go, oh, it just fixes by gimbals, but you don't know what it's like until you get precision mode, the gimbal system, the whole new turret system. You can't complain about the balance of multi-crew because the balance of multi-crew is not in yet. That's what I'm getting at. You can't make Avenger 1's video on the hammerhead is obsolete information. Because if CIG are building something that changes the whole structure of a turret and the game, you have to wait for that to come out before you can go, it's not going to work in master mode. That's the biggest thing. There is a huge yeah, overhaul when it comes to it. Engineering, Maelstrom, precision targeting, gimbal turrets on the turrets, you know? Backers only can give feedback on what they have and no. But then you also have to understand him, dude. He made the video three days after CIG explained it. Like, I don't want to put bad words out there, but that's moronic. If a developer tells you we are building something for free 23 and you make a test in master modes, it's irrelevant. Go and watch the video of Inside Star Citizen with Yogi explaining what precision mode and targeting and the gimbals will do, dude. It, li dude. it literally explains. And once they put that in, then you do a video with Avenger 1 showcasing ships still doing it, and they can dial it in. But until then, 
You have to wait for the new system to come out before you give bad information, irrelevant information. We know it's shit. You can go into live and never hit anyone in a hammerhead. You have to give CIG the time to implement the new design. You can't just go, oh, it doesn't work in this current master modes. They fucking know. Why we also showed that case on the CitizenCon demo, right? Like, because it's, it's, a, it's the use case which we're trying to go for. But that's why then you would make the video after that, Hawk. And that helps CIG. If CIG are building something and you make a video that is completely irrelevant information because they're building something that they announced three days before this video, they already know that this is garbage. So you wait till this gets put into the game, then you build a video so CIG can go, right, okay, cool. We now see what issues are at. But until you have precision mode and you have the new gimbal system on turrets and other pilots don't have systems and stuff like that, it's irrelevant feedback. It's like me buying a white car and midway going through, going, hmm, should, you know, Maybe I should have gone with black and then literally like 10 seconds before it wheels out it goes, no, I would like a black car, you know? You've got to wait until it arrives. You can't just hum and haw. You don't know that it's irrelevant because live, dude. Turrets don't work in live right now. So they don't work in master modes because none of the new stuff for turrets has been implemented. So making a video of showcasing it not working when they know it's not working is irrelevant feedback. It doesn't matter. And when they announce something three days before you make the video, you have to just fucking give up until they add the new system in and then you go gimbals don't work the precision mode doesn't work and cig can then change it but if the company says we are completely overhauling turrets for free 23 anything before free 23 is irrelevant you have to understand that Because then it becomes relevant, the video becomes relevant once you've tested the new system. Because they've updated it, now we do a video showcasing how it's bad, there is relevant feedback. But when the company tells you they are replacing the system with a new system, anything before time, all the way back to 2012, is now classed as irrelevant information. Nobody gives a shit. But it's still being harped on for some reason. Um, so that you CIG are aware that multi crew is shit. Lots of ships. They're doing something about it. Let them do something about it. Fire range of a, of and if it doesn't work, then damage. give them the information. See, there it is. Get into yeah. the effective fire range of the turrets, yeah. right? Because how it's always been um, is this issue where even if my guns are smaller, you know, again, it's the whole if I can hit you, you can't hit me. So yeah. basically you're going to get it to a place, hopefully, or tune it so that, you know, I mean, I think the answer is for fighters is to just reduce the weapon range so that they have to get within effective range of a hammerhead to engage. Yeah, and I feel like that would make gameplay for fighters feel a lot better. Cause uh, uh, I still think you could keep the gun range, just make it where you can only get the gun range in precision mode. Right. On the, right. Uh, Correct. Okay. So, yeah. um, just to be, just to be clear on, on that, but we never, but, we never said it anywhere. Right. But the, the current weapon tuning we have in 3221 is not necessarily the one that you see later. In fact, we only added the hammerhead in there and the constellation and the P50, P52, I think. P52, yeah. Sorry, guys. Just to, just to, basically, it was a try. Let's throw it in and see what happens. I <laughs> absolutely expected that the pepper. See, there we go. Now, confirmed, Hawk, everything that you're testing is irrelevant. Because they just threw it in there for shits and giggles. For example, will not go away, right? Because the, a couple of other changes are missing. Um, so a couple of changes are missing. It won't go away. Again, that video now is irrelevant. In the weapon ranges. So the reason why, why I 
am a little bit resistant to, to decrease them. So right now, I will agree, the weapon range is a little bit too high, especially on some ballistics, right, to fire them. And you see the, the trail just goes on forever, and you're like, okay, that was seven seconds, what the hell, it's still there, right? <laughs> so I do agree, like, we can bring them down. We can also, we also have the option to add... Um, well, it's not just um, let Yogi add, uh, let weapon CIG up so that we can encourage fighters to get closer. Very right? difficult to replace everything that we know about Star Citizen with better stuff not if people are not willing not to let in, go of the um, old stuff. It's, again, as I explained, it's like having a Mickey Mouse plaster on and it's going stale and moldy, but you keep it on your wound because you like the Mickey Mouse fucking logo on it. Rip it off, get a clean one on, you can still have your fucking Mickey Mouse shit, but it's healthier for the game, or healthier for you. Reach you to one. We can actually. Problem is nobody wants to rip off the bandaid. Just apparently. because a weapon is mounted on a turret, um, make the weapon stronger. It's actually based on the on the gimbal mode itself. So when you um, because the new gimbal mode system is like internally it has uh, so the things like fixed and auto and manual and all that. These are all internal gimbal modes. But we now have like separate gimbal modes for remote turrets as well and for. See, there we go. So there's a different gimbal system for turrets. This is what they said in that inside video. That was three days before Avenger One made the Hammerhead video. Again, that makes everything until we get that system irrelevant feedback because there's new stuff being added in that helps out the stuff that we've already known for years of how shit it is. For man turrets. Then so we, we test it, then we can make up-to-date, relevant just, just bigger. We can feedback just up to, to help CIG. We can make their projectiles faster. Do so we have that, lore for that? that? All and so again, this was in the Inside Star Citizen, they said all this. I said, do we have lore right. for that? <laughs> So the, the, the thing with right. lore is <laughs> the thing the thing with lore is if we Ooh, I, 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 who cares about lore? I would say Astropub cares about lore. That man is like a fucking lore bible. Knows everything. We, if we change something and we need lore to uh, to explain that, they will find a way. They'll figure it out. Um, yeah. Even knows right uh, now, Helldivers right now lore, not, which is crazy. Game, that man is like an encyclopedia. I mean, sometimes maybe yes, but but it, it, it needs to like it, it needs to fit in the whole system. Actually, I know exactly. So this goes completely off topic. Dune. I, I don't know what they're called in Dune, but the guy that rolls his eyes back, that's like the computer person. I, I don't know. I've only seen a clip of this. That's Paul. Astro Pub. Paul is one of them. Like fucking rolls his eyes back and he goes, the lore of Star Citizen in this year. Goes down fucking like that. It's crazy stuff. How much? Yeah, exactly. He is a teacher in real life. Yeah, but he's one of those guys. He literally has like fucking humongous amount of lore knowledge. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's then crazy it's stuff, man. Yeah. I would actually wouldn't right. mind so, um, saying in one of those classes. Explain it. You could say, hey, even though I'm not that, that have a, a big history really fan, cool but I would imagine it's really good. High a pressure capacitor. capacitors, just that yeah. flop, flop the thing out faster. So I mean, like, like we can, we can. We can make it up. We can make it up whatever we want. We can also good just old. create variations of these weapons, which we can attach to turrets if we want to, right? So um, some good old nanotechnology. Space miles. Yeah, so I don't know if it's his yeah. wedding ring, but it looks so it fucking like, sick, man. It looks so like it it's sounds like to me, and, something and like a dark and brass uh, or something. Know, a lot of us in the PvP space have kind of felt the same way. It's like you need to force the, the nature of trade combat in the sense that if I'm in a turret. I'm going to have range control issues on you because if you're in a fight or moving around me, right? Yeah. So we need to bring it to a place where each each party is now at risk of engaging each other, right? I, so, I would say yeah. actually the turret should almost always outrange any yep. kind of like fighters that are coming. Completely in. agree. Right. They should outrange it. So the only way to get away from the turret is to either get right up on it and make it harder for the turret to track you at close range because you're creating too many deflection angles. Yeah, or because be it's really close, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, very close, which is good. I mean, you want that yeah. kind of you want it up in your face, right? You see their eyes. Yeah. So now I agree <laughs> with this, and I've been arguing for this. It's like hammerheads should have higher velocity projectiles. Uh, I think some of the SIG guys tried it out on the on the Idris, and you guys are doing the event, and they increased the projectile. The Idris has custom, the, the Idris has just custom weaponry. It's uh, I think the weapons mm -hmm. are a little bit faster, but these are at the moment it uses custom weapon records. That fucking size 10 is definitely custom. There's no other gun in the game that can fire 40 kilometers and nearly one-shot everything apart from an 890. Actually, I think it can one-shot an 890. Have you guys ever seen... You know Space Cutlet? Space Cutlet had a, a fucking clip 
of Space Cullet when we first were able to steal the Idris. And he's in Daymar, and this fucking Gladius is coming in at him, right? Saying, oh my god, it's an Idris, and I'm a bounty hunter. And Cullet, like, no joke, from like 10 kilometers away, just lines up the shot and the Idris and goes, and the person just disappears. <laughs> Instantly fucking deleted. And shit like that. And I really hope CIG keep that weapon for like Idris M users. I would like to go into uh, be in a situation where that is not necessary. We actually have the proper weapons on there and not just like buffed weapons. Uh, mm. But um, I mean, yeah, that's the different. Yeah, because uh, you can tie it in the really. power plant, right? You have a bigger ship, bigger power plant. Hard yeah, nerfed sure Idris three months after well, release. Right? Yeah. But the idea is the ratio mm. is what's the question here. So I don't know, man. It's it. very so difficult to nerf a size I'm a ten. And I'm engaging, and I'm hitting you then you can also hit me, right? Because we got to get away from yeah. this idea of I can hit you indefinitely forever and you can never hey, hit Fox, me. Hey, Fox, you can just make it where you can't fire it as much because maybe it's too expensive to fire the rail, yeah, but, right? But the other you things know. which I mentioned before, they are One million a shot. Right? Like mm -hmm. if you just have a couple of fighters, especially with anti-fighter weapons, the Amarad will say... Oh. I swear I haven't seen a game where a player gets so much attention as A1 for no reason. I, I know I did. I know Glitch. I don't know why either. I, I, I can't answer it, dude. There's way more people in the community that you could be having. Like, no, no offense to Avenger One, I would prefer Yogi and fucking Virgil, to be honest, or Yogi and Golo. Golo, probably one of the smartest motherfuckers in the Star Citizen community when it comes to flying and flight and combat and stuff like that. Like, you can read Golo's stuff on like Shadow Moses Discord and it's just like it's just so fucking it's it's the craziest shit, right? But he knows what he's talking about. That's the kind of conversations I would prefer to listen to, right? You know, you got a smart developer like Yogi and then you got a very, very smart player like Golo. Oh yeah. I mean it's like similar if you if you <laughs> If you have, I don't People know, need a boogie man. Yeah. You go to a fall guy, you know? Shoot at it. The Abrams is like, <laughs> what are you doing? Okay. It's like, bro. Right? I know, I know. This was like Mike the other day there, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, oh, it's similar. Like a good case, and like, like from Flag Sims, like uh, uh, DCS, you can, you can, you can attack. I wouldn't actually mind the real gun or the Idris' size 10 not be connected no, to the right? pilot weapon, it. Lady Space Patrol. I, mean, I would actually like it where you've got to have somebody have on like a console going, kind of left, 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 hold fire, you know, that would be so uh, sick. Unequal <laughs> set of where you're working with the pilot it. and the gunner to fire that size 10. Down periscope? Yeah, something like that. Bombardier? The ratio has to be adjusted and then obviously fighters that are uh, in a, Maybe the bombardier takes over for a small amount of movement of the ship, and then the pilot has to blah, take control blah, blah. back. It's uh, I've been always fighting for this. You know, what I mean, I agree with this. Like you have an ecosystem, right? Ships engage each other. Like if I'm going to take down a hammerhead, I should genuinely, without memeing around, right, be like, okay, we need two Ares, we need some ships designed to cool. kill bigger. We stuff. do know the the Idris K the point, has you know? a giant laser beam, you know? so, so maybe that's like that. Like I Death know Star. for me. I don't want to live in a future where I can take out four buccaneers and run around and kill basically everything in the game. And it's just variations on how long it takes me to kill them. Um, yeah. You know, I, I want there to be a place where fighters have a role. It's like, you know, but I also think if you knock the shields down, you know, on these bigger ships and you're going in for runs, I still want to contribute to the fight, you know, and I know you're talking about precision mode and whatnot, um, you know, Going in and picking the turrets off manually. Cap right? so ship ranges should be like I'm five not gonna do a lot of hull damage, but I Yeah, but we're talking about the size ten, 10 gun whatever, glowing right? finger like, that just your is not gimbaled and it's not, right? if you, you know, yeah, got any assist. It's just a fucking rail shot to attack, uh, that fires from like the belly of the ship. Sensible way to overwhelm. You know, that can be but ten kilometers, right? That so we fix. Fix the problem. I'll fix right? weapon. So yeah, variations, it's, ratios, it's a very whatnot, different weapon. Rolls. I agree with this. That's why I've I would agree with to like a, a normal size nine weapons. on a turret. Five the kilometers. Itself, that would be though, fine, right? How much skill is it going to be necessary to execute on the actual using of the turret, on the actual right. using of the equipment, right? Why, if why are you using the turret? Don't try that Naruto shit, dude. I'm Turrets, just flexing my weapons, fingers, okay. whatever, right? And so I'm not doing any fucking hand seals, which basically tells you exactly where to shoot all the time. Um, and a lot of times pe people do these things called pip chasing, right? Where they're not looking at the ships. They're not really actually gunning. Yeah. They're just, they're just, you know, there's a box. Pull, point knows that box, pull trigger, yeah. right? It's me. 
have we can is there like is this the gunnery system that we're staying i'm talking about the hud elements and how it's functioning rather than the balance of the weapon tuning i'm talking about what's being visually given to me as a gunner or as a pilot lag lead pip systems that kind of stuff is that sticking around or have we considered a different gunnery system to achieve the do i have a fancy monitor no i'm on a 4k g8 that kind of stuff from samson i actually have right so pausing this just here I've got an ultra wide here, ultra wide here, ultra wide here. And I used to have, like, I, for 10 years, I went ultra wide. Um, and recently, I went back to 16 by 9 on this 4K G8. And I personally think it's better than ultra wide for gaming. Because it, it offers a lot, like, again, when you look at uh, an ultra wide monitor, and uh, there's not many way i can do this without sort of like going to this scene and maybe we do this right so let me just fucking move this down here so that's the old ultra wide monitor but funnily enough it actually just cuts off like here so you're only getting a tiny tiny amount of extra space right on the actual screen and stuff like that so yeah, for me, I would always say, like, the, the G8 is a much better monitor than ultra wide. For me, anyway, you know? That's the way I look at it. Let's go back to the scene, sorry. Plus, more games uh, work okay, better yeah, with uh, 16 um, by 9. In general, the guns that are Setup's firing, awesome, yeah. Right? I have to be they, thanked for... Uh, always a shout-out to... Um, uh verpal for providing the joysticks monster tech for providing the the mounts uh msi for the monitor or some of the monitors uh halberd desk for the desk um the community for a lot of the audio stuff without you guys i would never have what i have in front of me and it's an absolute pleasure to be sat here all the time and stuff like that there's generally not much that i've actually spent my own money on which is just down to community and fantastic companies helping me out uh apart from like the the herman miller chair and stuff like that but even the background all this stuff is you guys which is yeah it's just insane man let's have a velocity i would be in a fucking box if more. it wasn't for you guys right which means so super if grateful if you don't have infinite speed or close to infinite speed let's say i don't know i mean three thousand meters per second is not infinite but you know what i mean right like it's basically hit scan yeah. man um, then you need to you need to <laughs> aim ahead of where you want to be, right? I this wish I like could get like one of products the most to fun points that guys. we have in our space combat system. I Maybe do agree with you. I don't think. One day. Well, in some regards, that this is not really optimal. The problem that that I have um, with the current lay layout of the ships is like sometimes you have a ship with six hard points. If you're not an experienced players and you want the full, you know, control over it, you can put six different weapons on it. In, in the life model at the moment, because you only have two weapon velocities, that's fine. In the new gunnery system, you have six different pips then, right? Ooh. Because if, you're, if your ship is pointing somewhere, you need to aim and shoot in the section of the space. Where now, you if CRG went back the to the old to style, with pips back in the day, we had it where there was triangle, diamond, circle, box, and stuff like that. I hope they do that. I just got your, uh, just got here. Sorry, are you able to do chair mounts on the Herman Miller? I do believe Monster Tech can do it. I do believe, but I would check with them on their Discord just in case, because the Herman Miller is well. If you've got one, is a little complicated underneath. But I do believe there is a way to do chair mounts, but I'm not 100 sure on it. You know, you would have to check with them just to to make sure. I see the thing is though you have to remember right and if you you do have you got a um a brand new buy of Herman Miller Devil because just remember for me I've got a 12 year warranty on my Herman Miller which means that if anything breaks oh right okay well I I'll go through it with you then just in case anybody knows so with Herman Miller I don't know if it's 12 years or 15 years now but if anything breaks on my Herman Miller I have the ability to send it back and get a brand new one if I wish. That's how fucking cool their company is. Or if it's just something to fix quickly, they'll send it free of charge, right? That's how fucking crazy their 12-year warranty is. 
or when I got it, it was 12 year. The problem is if I add mounts to it, you would void the warranty, right? So personally, if you're going to be buying a secondhand one, then cool beans. But if you're going to be buying a brand new one, I wouldn't fucking do anything to that, that chair. Because it means that you constantly get Herman Miller for, the, for 12 years, or 15 or whatever it is. So that would be my advice to you if you're doing it that way. LTI Herman Miller, I'd buy instantly. So would I. I would buy a brand new one if I was getting LTI on it. But I have to also remember, right? I've had this for five years now, guys. It's not worn anywhere near. I've not replaced the cushions, the armrests, up and down, left and right, no problem. Watch as it fucking breaks. Wheels have changed over to add brakes in. Everything works. In five years, I've not had to replace it. But I still have, you know, another seven years of warranty on it. So I might just fucking fall backwards for, for no reason and snap and get a new one. Obviously, you don't get new warranty, but you know what I mean? When it's on its last legs, I might just accidentally <laughs> fall over. You know what I mean? Ah, my Herman Miller, it broke. Oh, no. And I was so close to buying a new one. Ah, oh, what a shame, you know? <laughs> but you you couldn't do that if you had a, a second hand because they don't come with the same warranty, you know. <laughs> I got very fat. I was oh no, <laughs> shit! I had too much KFC, you know. Being considering, dude. Right, so oh god, I I, I love. Don't worry about sidetracking this because again, it's it's not getting uploaded to YouTube or anything apart from the VODs channel. We're just reviewing itself. I love talking about Herman Miller. I used to have really bad lower coccyx issues, guys. Six months after this, my posture is corrected beautifully, and I, I have no back pains. I can sit on this motherfucker for 24 hours, and we've done this in the stream before, and no back problems whatsoever. If I was in, like, the old racing chairs and stuff like that that you get, I would have had issues. This was a thousand pounds for 12 years of warranty as well, and it's the best thousand pounds I've ever sat my ass in. It's fixed my back problems, it's fixed my posture problems. How much would that be with a chiropractor? I don't know. Or how much would it be at doctors or anything like that, right? So that's how I always go. The recommendation I got when I was asking somebody that had a Herman Miller, they said, can you put a price on your back? There you go. So when people are, I'm seeing people are like, oh, I spend 80 bucks on this chair and then two years I'm buying an 80 bucks chair. Oh, my back's hurting. You know what I mean? They are. Are they good for 12? You get them custom made to, to uh, with on how bad your ass is. And you can actually, for me, I can um, obviously like lower it down quite a bit, but you have the ability to pull the thing out and make the chair actually bigger going forward to raise your legs a bit up. I don't use it because I like my legs just dropping down because I'm Fred Flintstone kind of style running on the floor, right? But check out the Herman Miller. If you got a thousand bucks and you're looking for a really good chair, highly recommend you look over it and customize it and stuff because I got full Batman black as well. I went for black everything. So when I'm fucking going down the street on my Herman Miller and I'm wearing the Batman outfit, justice is coming, you know? It's great. Highly recommend it. But obviously, people have to understand it is very, very fucking expensive. But you also have to remember, it's 12 years warranty of they will replace any part or even replace the whole system if it breaks. That's insane, you know? Oh yeah, don't get their gaming chair. Just get like an ebony or something like that. That's what I've got. I've got the ebony here. Hey, Onda, how you doing? Yeah, we're watching this one, yeah, but right now we're talking. 100 per year, yeah. And again, I, the biggest thing I hype up about is it fixed, fixed my lower coccyx back issue. Where I used to, when I sat down, I used to get really sore pains right on the coccyx, just underneath the sort of, like, your hips. And it was unbearable where I had to stand up and just stretch my spine. I don't have that anymore. Six months of this thing, it just completely corrected it. And I used to slouch over when I'm walking. Now I'm walking like that. Because it actually holds you in position while you're saying. The weird thing is, it doesn't have like a headrest, right? The, the other one comes with a headrest. But I've sat here for 24 hours doing a stream and I've never been like, 
Oh, my neck is sore. It just keeps your posture completely correct. No, I don't. I got the, I got my, or sorry, you're speaking to Danny. Mine is the normal ebony, which only cost me a thousand pounds. And that was even with the customization and stuff like that. How much it is just now, I don't know. But go to the website, measure your fucking ass, you know, your legs, all these things and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly, Makimus. But that's, again, it's a thousand dollars, a thousand pounds. It's a very expensive chair, but I look at it as you get 12 years warranty. That's a hundred dollars a month for something that can help your, your, your back out and stuff like that. It's probably about the same, yeah. You can get them secondhand, so if you wanted to try it out, try and find a secondhand place. Some of them, I know Detox got his for like 300 pounds. Obviously, you don't get the warranty, but you get Herman Miller in very good quality. A lot of these places will do them up and stuff like that. But again, touching wood, touching an idiot. Five years, I've, it's in perfect condition. And I, guys, how often, how long have I sat here in five years? I've probably got like 8,000 plus fucking hours streaming. You know what I mean? So that's, that's my, I'm not sponsored by Herman Miller, but Herman Miller, hook me up, please. It'd be great. <laughs> got mine from a real estate of office closing, yeah. I, I can't, like, uh, again, you can get a lot of really good office chairs, but I, I can only go with the experience I've got. Five years of just bliss sitting down. Whilst gaming. Yeah, I've never never heard a bad thing about Herman Miller. But maybe there's some like defects and stuff like that. So anyway, let's get back on it. I'm gonna go back 30 seconds. With the current so layout back of in. the ships, like sometimes you have a ship with six hard points. If you're not an experienced player and you want the full, you know, control over it, you can put six different weapons on it. In, in the life model at the moment, because you only have two weapon velocities, that's fine. In the new gunnery system, you have six different pips then, right? Because if, you're, if your ship is pointing somewhere, you need to aim and shoot in the section of the space where hey, you predict you the enemy to eventually catch up with this thing. So that is going to stay. For me, as a... As a it's as not... A, as a, as a, it's really, really good. From a design perspective and so on... It's just I the initial cost not up very front, good. right? I think we should use leg pips. But just really only because Hallelujah. you should. Someone yeah, yeah, wait, that. Wait. No, no, no. <laughs> but the reason is simple because. But the thing is, I agree with that as well. Pips, I think they should whole, remove lead pips your whole from the game. Visual, visual attention is on a point in space, and you just overlay this. The it, problem is not everyone wants it. it though. If you if you unlock pips, you're actually painting the target. You're looking at what the target does, which is much better. Now, we can talk about weapon tuning and so on. But the problem with like having slow weapon velocities is that due to our cockpit design and certain what's the warranty on it though like check because i do believe that they've gone up to like 15 years now or something Vinny, depending on it because then you look at it that you'd be just be spending like what 105 bucks or something no more than that something like that 120 a month, uh, 120 a year, depending on what the the warranty is. 12 years, yeah. In, in certain areas, you will not see Again, where, it's, where the ship it's is. It's a lot of right? money up front, guys. You have a small I wouldn't, and so on, and you I wouldn't bullshit you to get, because again, I, I make nothing from it, right? I get no kickback from Ebony, uh, sorry, from Herman Miller. I'm not sponsored by them. All I know is, for five years I've been sat on this, there's no wear and tear, I have fucking seven years worth of, uh, um, warranty left, and it's fixed my lower coccyx problem, which I don't know how much that would have cost me if I went to a chiropractor. So, that's, that's the only way I can give feedback on it. Again, it's a very expensive purchase for just a chair, but it's... Turn my life around massively. Well, leg pips, like sometimes the leg <laughs> the <Merlin. pip> is. <laughs> it's the ebony. Honestly. And I and got it full in uh, Batman black and everything. I have customized the wheels. So the wheels are different because they're universal slotted. 
So I've actually put them where they've got brakes on them because they didn't come with brakes at the time. But um, yeah, I again, if you treat this chair with respect and you don't throw it around, you don't punch it like Salty Mike does with his chairs, it'll last you a lifetime. Again, the I, I can't lift it up because the chair is so fucking heavy, but the fabric that I sit on has not worn away in 12 years, uh, sorry, in five years. And that's me using like a, a combing system as well to take off the hair from the dogs. It's yet to thread or anything like that. It's, it's insane. I can't recommend a Herman Miller chair enough. But obviously, what my experience might not be your experience. So just keep that in mind. 50 so, as well, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same thing. It's like, hey, let's make a Formula One cockpit, but let's just ignore that the player or the pilot actually needs to look outside. So this, <laughs> this sometimes happens, right? But I mean, like uh, in terms of um, VET back then, we also made recommendations how the, sh how the design of uh, ships should be and future future ships are going to have at least an 8, you know, 16. But if you need more, again, we're going completely excited. If you need any more recommendation, ask Aurelia, ask Detox, Ask, um, I think Cutlet's got one. Uh, who else has one? Red Lear has them. He's got two kinds, actually, but that's Red Lear. He has, like, nine joysticks, but he's got two fucking Herman Miller chairs. For what fucking reason, I don't know. <laughs> Degree white cone. Where there's, there's a lot of people that can recommend it in the Star Citizen community. You can actually see a more of the world outside, right? But something like the M50, I mean, I mean the M50 is not a combat ship. It doesn't matter that much. But in the M50, I cannot look outside. Even in the in the old Hornets, I cannot look outside because the, the seat is really, really close in, right? But <clears throat> that aside, um, I do agree that, like, lag pips are more suitable. So now I think what you're, what you're going up to is um, I want to... I said this yesterday. I think CIG should make it where pilots have lag pip and gunners have lead pip. So that you have to learn to fly your ship to get on target, which makes it more cinematic and better for balancing and stuff like that, and make it where the gunners then have something to chase after so they know where to land the shots. Be really cool. Are you aiming towards, towards, towards aim assist mechanics or something like that? Is that what you want to go Or for? give gunners hold on, hold on. So, both versions, right? So Mike, I, I want to understand, like I say, but you kind of answered it, like we are staying with the lag pip lead pit system, right? It's just, I under, as far as I understand, it, from your perspective, tell me if I'm wrong here, you want higher velocity weapons so it reduces wiggle, right? Because higher velocity weapons are easier to track. Mm -hmm. So you want high points. velocity weapons re relative yep. to the speeds of the ships. So you want close range, mm -hmm. you want high velocity weapons, and you want low overall ship speeds. Now, yep. you can achieve all three of these things, but... The problem is with the lag lead pip system, it just becomes, how do I say it this way? Like oh God, a it's game not of chasing the little, the little dot, right? Is he going to bring out a fucking etch a sketch again? Yeah. Um, let me show you an example here, which you've probably seen before. Tell me if this comes through. It does. Did this come through? Okay. So yes. this is a gunnery system example. I'm not saying we go make Star Wars squadrons, right? But yeah. my speed's at 158. <laughs> Somebody fucking shoot me if I ever do this on somebody's podcast. I have no podcast. lag lead pip. I have a bore sight, like a typical gun system you'd see in typical World War yeah. II. I have high velocity projectiles and I have low relative mm -hmm. ship speeds. But yeah. the reason why the gunnery feels good in this game is because I don't have a lag pip lead pip. I you know the funny thing is that... Tomato puts this podcast on Spotify. How the fuck is anyone on Spotify going to keep up in this segment? I actually have to get visual on my target before I even want to yes. do anything with it. And, and what happens you know, if you're on target? Well, so there's a little bit of fixed assist. You know, you have high velocity. It's hit scan. Yeah. Say it, Yogi. Yeah, Say it. it. So Say it. That, you yeah, know, but, you but you have you have aim assist in there, and they will and they will fire at the lead pips. Of that, they will that exactly, but yeah. you don't have to visually show that to the pilot, is what yeah. I'm saying, right? And yeah. you know, so this achieves this is an example, but, but, but it doesn't change anything. You know? of something that achieves. you're still chasing after a box, all right? You're still chasing after a pip. The pip might be invisible in squadrons, but the fucking 
oh keeps my all God, the man. goals that it seems uh, like Sig wants for the more cinematic <laughs> you can, Dude, I feel sorry for Tomato. All right? Tomato's not said anything in like fucking 10, 15 minutes, man. Like, and this is what it was like with Mike. Yeah, the, why not the want the day. choice of seeing the pips, though? Well, the I mean, problem is with, if you see the pips, here's the thing. If you see the pips, you're going to start engaging from dramatically longer distances because you're not looking at the target. You're just looking at the pip. But that's, and again, most people just look at the little dot, pull onto it, and fire, regardless of what's going on in front of them because they don't care. Like, they just. But that's what happens in this game. You're chasing after a box. You're not looking at the TIE fighter. You're looking at that giant you white box. Dot. You put your pull fucking it, crosshair on the box the and, and the gun's auto aim. What fucking. What's different in this to Star Citizen? I let the game figure it out. But to me, that sounds a bit like Star Citizen. This idea of the player skill and knowledge still has to be there to help them be the most effective in combat. You still have to know what your combat ranges are. To some degree, but with, with dramatic, like I mean, okay. So let me let me give you this example then, right? So we talked about the singes and and yeah, yeah. This is where you. I'm trying to not to be disrespectful to Avenger One, but you if you're gonna be on podcasts, you need to be way more professional than you're being. And that is you have a developer to talk to, like Yogi, and you have no way of explaining what you're wanting to achieve without bringing up some shitty video game that nobody cares about and actually doesn't exist anymore because I'm pretty sure they closed the fucking servers down because the game is fucking garbage. And I'm sorry, but this is where, again, with the Mike's thing, Mike's podcast is, you have Yogi here, stop fucking wasting your time. S Star Wars Squadron Battle. Yogi even said, like, yeah, it wasn't really good. I mean, everyone who played back in the day when the weapons were basically hit scan, it was, we all kind of laughed because no matter what you did, you're just getting hit no matter what. We're still and watching my the argument, Dogfighter, by the way. I don't know if you know. Sorry, I, I, I apologize. <laughs> I want to see your pretty face. Come back. <laughs> Hey man. Let's <laughs> go fucking Yogi's face, though. Oh, there's hey, it's Yogi of again. Me. What the oh, hell? No, you said pretty face. <laughs> <laughs> Just change the name over there real quick. <laughs> so, you know, um, uh, I'm sorry. What was the question? My... Pretty face got. Oh, it we was were about, talking uh, about the pips, pips. And pips and whether or not we're yes. using pips or not. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So, yes, you still have to know your ranges, right? But my argument is the ratio that we currently have. Again, the ratio is changing, right? But this is an example of of why yeah. I think there's been so much uproar, especially in the PvP side of things for for the current tuning, and why a lot of newer players are like, "This is great," you know. Um, is the disparity between weapon velocity and range compared to ship speed. And because we have a lead pip, you just it, it just tells you, aim there, fire. Right? Exactly. Whereas if you don't it have it, you have so to look. Hard. Like, first of all, you have to see your target, like visually, which means you're going to get closer anyway. Uh, you know, and Jack's then fellow, you have to actually aim onto run, yourself. And run for your, the hills. Like, fall a shot, which <laughs> run for the hills. What you'd expect in a World War II I'll, I'll deal with it for you guys. A lot of times, run. Like, <laughs> I want my World War II in space and this and that. And, yeah, people are gonna complain. Oh, where's my leap hips? It's twenty nine forty five. Look, okay, I mean, just to watched... just just to stop you there. It's uh, I'm not I'm not married to the idea of having a pip system. I'm fine if we go without. In fact, like a lot of the UI changes that we did recently was to reduce pips. But at the moment, we do have still a lot of different weapon velocities. Um, mm -hmm. and there's also things like, um, you know, if you are sitting in a ship that's being used to take down large ships. Let's say let's say the the Ares iron, right? So currently what we see internally is that you you would lose you would use the Ares Inferno for example to do run ins with the Gatling because it basically Brr. has a pretty widespread and you want to have it concentrated on subsystem, right? You would go in with that fire. You would use the iron actually from a bigger distance. Completely sidetracked on this. How many people have an ion or sorry an inferno? And here's the question I would put towards those Infernal Pilots. Would you prefer it to go like a fucking A-10 where you've got to, you pull the trigger and you get so many rounds to spray? 
or do you like holding it down and where it just sprays the rounds? So an A10 in real life fires a burst because if you were to hold the trigger down, it fucking destroy the plane, right? You like holding it down, do you? See, for me, I think it just goes and you've got a, then it reloads the rounds, right? Put a fire on nylon. Feel bloody great holding it down. All right, so you like holding it down. All right, fair dues. That's right. But I kind of wish that maybe they could do like a, an A10 burst mode and then you can have the whole trigger down as well. That'd be kind of cool, right? Maybe get like better DPS if you have the burst mode, but the longevity of like shooting with holding it down kind of thing. That's, you need to be able to predict where you, where you have to shoot in order to hit the target from a, from a long range because that, that gun, for, uh, in terms of projectile velocity, won't be won't be very um, won't be very uh, accurate, right? But yeah. we can easily tie that to something else. I do agree with you. For example, I agree that, with that, glowing uh, finger. Maybe if you have like I agree with that, a, dude. A, a, a where like system. you could, as you hold it, it slots all the shots into one thing, and if you hold it all down, you waste like a, a twenty shot magazine, right? So as you hold it, it goes in, right? So you could hold it to like five shots or ten shots, but then you're like timing it right and then you fire it and it does a 15 shot but if you miss you've got 15 shots to reload that would be so sick where, really fucking where cool you want to make sure that you cannot just like spoo like at, at, at the targets from miles away we can easily like like do that like in, in my well again give our, people um, the, the choice talk, kitty man so I, like with the inferno you have a mode where it preloads like 50 rounds but it goes ridiculously fast, and then it has maybe like a few second cooldown before you can start firing again, or you just hold it and you've got the fucking mode. Ion could be where you hold it and it goes, or you could fucking like preset it to charge the rounds and then fire it. So both ships would have the same mechanic, just it looks a little bit different, right? It'd be cool. this pretty cool. Thing with the cone, right? And the size of the target and when it matches the cone of the other thing. Mm -hmm. We could, for example, show pips or actually calculate any kind of like pips or show visually the pips only when we're inside that range. That is no problem because then we have a relationship between what the spread of the gun is, how big the target is, right? I completely agree, um, Maximus. So I'm not, I'm not opposed agree, to dude. that at all. It's just like from but what that's, we have right now. That's the problem the with uh, to support the, current the very small, high PvP or community if we think we don't that a lot of them to do the visual aiming thing don't that's, see that's it from the 99.9 right? like percent fucking community's point of view we could also maybe just i generally the feel the only org that i'm seeing this from like these that. days is shadow moses everyone else seems Aries. to be fucking um like loopy doesn't doopy. have a big, yeah doesn't have like a big, yeah yeah doesn't have a gimbal to yeah yeah so that that would be so that is perfectly fine that 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 works for me um but this is also something I, I, I like the idea, right? We can also like ramp up the aim assist or something like that based on distance. It's also all not, not a big problem. It's just like we can't get there cool. yet, right? Yeah, it sounds yeah, like so there's I'm... still it sounds like there's still a lot more work going oh, yeah, into yeah. the, the gunnery it's and like that's six, six nine months to yeah. wait, man. People I mean, are just the impatient. main thing for gunnery for three two three is that we're replacing the current um the current system that we have in the game right now. Like the thing that always annoyed me is Legacy. Again, the Ares, right? You you put your target or you put your um your crosshair on the pip and at the target in front of you, and all the shots are passing it from the right uh, uh, <laughs> uh to the right side because the pips in the legacy system they don't show you where you need to aim. They show you just where the where, where the perfect pip is, but the new gunnery system shows the pips in relation to where the See, weapon. See, with this needs thing that has a problem with the, so the ion, I never the understood why they so just didn't move the crosshair an and you have a target to match you it. You because you had to aim to the, the right a little bit, a little bit on the ion. Move to the left of a so they could have just moved the crosshair off the center. The crosshair, you get a direct hit on on your target. And the old gunnery system. Oh, of course they needed the this in before Squadron 42. Uh, Dude, if Squadron 42 like released on Legacy, it would be a fucking shit um, show. Because without gimbals on target, and this is what a lot of people just target, won't right? understand with what CIG are trying to do in the next gimbals, year so and a bit. They're trying to get rid of the shit show that we've had. But for some reason, people think the shit show is good. Like you need to, all you need to do is you paint the target, but the gunnery system will take the exact point where you're aiming at and then gimbal. Or lead the shots itself. So yeah, exactly. basically, if uh, 
if they want some flying in a, I don't know, in an, in an oh, arrow. Oh, I, I <laughs> struggle with online right shopping. On Lady Space and Pro. I, and I follow him with my crosshair. My gimbals will... I was on TikTok the other day there, and I saw these protein white chocolate bars that I'm probably not going to enjoy. And for some reason, I bought them. <laughs> turn, like, point to the left. Or <laughs> I don't even the, need uh, them. To the left. And when they fire, they're trying to intercept I the target. I hope they're tasty, though. Right? But in order to, to do that, you need, you need gimbals. And turrets don't didn't have gimbals so far. So anyway, so that is like what the new aiming system is really about. This just gives a lot, lot more flexibility and also exactly a lot of more, Mathemus, yeah. um, more descriptive values for networking. Because there were, we had some really odd, uh, odd cases where you would sit in a turret and the network, like on your client, you were in like, you know, your fixed turret mode on the network client on another machine. It would say, oh, it's a fixed mode. And then you suddenly have different aiming solutions and so on so new aiming system streamlines at all but it doesn't mean that Quite the aiming up. system is done like we can absolutely go through through variations with like different white chocolate protein that we're showing. Actually, i always <laughs> like doing running tests where i just hide elements that players rely on it's really really fun yeah. i want to turn back to uh master modes to talk a little bit about how it was brought into the game um it was boiled originally eggs. developed for Squadron 42. That was kind of, I do you like guys kind of introduced it and has been brought over to other ships for Star Citizen. Honestly, faster than I thought it would be. I, I thought we were going to be waiting quite a while for all the ships to change over. But what kind of tweaks and changes in either the functionality or the design of Master Modes did you have to make when considering the difference between Soft. Squadron and, and Star Citizen? Like to dunk toast. Or bread. Okay, so the, the very X. first prototype of Master Modes was actually not the squadrons. It was uh, it was. But a full hard boil. Like if you're going to put in the sandwich or something. Uh, because we were sure we wanted to reduce the speeds. But after that, the production for Squadron Forty Two really ramped up, and they needed help with the flight system, which is why we did the rest of the development uh, in in Squadron. Um, when so at some point we had the tuning in there, and the tuning was actually quite close to what we had in Three Twenty, um, but. Completely going off subject. Zersty, have you ever had something, what we call up here, a chopped egg in a cup? So you basically get like five soft boiled eggs and you just mash them up and you put, you get bread on um, butter or bread and you rip it up and you just mix all the chunky egg the with like salad cream, put it into a fucking hot cup in the microwave and just spoon it out. Fucking lush, man. It's so lush. So it's like soldiers, yeah, but you get the soldiers, you break it up, and you mix all the eggs together in a bag, put salad cream in and just shake it. Put it into like a cup or a bowl. You don't need we call it a cup because you hold the cup, right? But you've got it in a bowl and it's just soldiers, egg, salad cream, spices, whatever you want it, and you just fucking spoon it, man. Or you could put it into into like a uh uh a wrap or something like that, but it's so good, really fucking good. When we like such uh, wholesome like, food, if you've got like a sore on stomach. Citizen conduct, removing all that stuff or that uh, master modes and all these other features are not gated by the squadron release anymore. We then started moving this over, but at the same time, we were aware about the worries. Oh, this is a single player tech tech thing. It will never work a multiplayer, right? So, of course, we had the same worries, right? But this is also why we, why we then started to push out Chinook. like the test environments in three twenty, three twenty one, or three twenty two. And specifically in 3.22. For um, me, sweet chili sometimes. a lot sometimes. of smaller tweaks. I mean, I don't know, like A1. How Again, many of sweet chili. Not the flakes, just the sauce on eggs. Scrambled eggs, sweet chili, bit of chives on top. <sighs> Whole grain mustard. Yeah, I mean, if you want to go that way. But sweet chili on scrambled eggs, like fluffy scrambled eggs with some chives on top. Maybe a little bit of fucking sour cream if you want to go that way. So fucking lush. These different uh, about three or four. releases did, did you play, right? Like there was like, like yeah, we did a lot of, of smaller smaller changes, right? Mm -hmm. And like some of these changes which we did in there, we were pretty sure, yeah, they're not I really work. need Let's to start doing cooking streams the data for says, you guys. Right? Some of the shit that um, I do. So oh, it's amazing. In this regard, the current iteration of master modes is uh, is more PvP focused and is a little Red bit ahead beef, of what we have mash, yeah. Spam. Um, Spam and eggs. But the tuning so process good. is actually quite um, is quite intense. So 
when we changed the flight tunings for, um, for 3221, like we, we basically said like the, the way how the squadron model had I always had use become, mozzarella because really it's just a really good melting cheese because, and you got a nice I mean, pool from it, like, you know? I would agree with you, uh, A1, like the, uh, for example, the, the over-reliance on boost for certain maneuvers we found too <sighs> high. The, uh, the squadron model, the initial one had like, on the Gladys, for example, had five cheese left and right. And you boost, you get 15, right? So it was enough to jump out of the way and be evasive, but it was always like, maybe, maybe it's a bit much, right? So that's <laughs> why, we, why, we, why we cut down the numbers. And the tests we did in 3221 were basically just based on modifiers. So the, the, um, because it, it needed to be fast and we wanted to iterate faster with it. So we created a custom record for, uh, for that ship, then brought up our, um, our like we have a so-called vehicle inspector, uh, which we can bring up, which actually also like uh, PET can bring up in live builds. And it reads out the current tuning of the ship. So we know exactly from what ships, uh, from what ship, how many Gs uh, it can pull, because this is not data we actually set in the game data. This is a, a outcome of the potential of the thrusters against the mass of the ship, right? Um, and then we basically took these numbers and we're like, okay, let's just start from scratch. Gladius, let's say, I don't know, what is it, 13 Gs forward or something like that, 20 under boost. It's, 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 it's quite a yeah. lot. But one of the things we wanted to achieve there is that when you fly forward and then you turn around and go, go the other way, we wanted to have a faster reaction and not just drift forever backwards before we go forwards, right? That was like one of the, one of the yeah. decisions we made in this tuning. And um, from basically there, we, we, just, we just iterated and went on. So the Gladius, we at some point when we tested internally, we were oh, reasonably bright happy. Spam. Bright spam and then and adapted the tuning so good. or basically moved the other ships in relation to that, but we used I a non-proper tuning methodology there, which is more like, let's just change the modifiers of the existing ships, but it didn't change the tuning. The ships that are now getting tuned in for 323, they actually have proper tunings because nice. proper tuning means we're not changing modifiers, nice. we're actually changing the thrusters. Nice. So, um, and this is also like why the process for- See, again, I'm gonna, I don't know how many times I'm gonna have to fucking say this, but, you have to let CIG cook to get all of this to fucking work. You can't nitpick at it until all the systems are out because it's what they have planned as like what they want for the system just literally takes away all the jank from legacy, all the jank from fucking live. And it starts to allow them to do more tuning and stuff like that, you know? And I'm not 100% sure based on that, but it felt better than the current Gladius. Might be biased because it was the Andro Arrow. Could also be, Ondo, that you're starting to adapt to the new system. And now that you're in your favorite ship, it feels good. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Well, don't type that shit in my, my channel then. But it felt better than the current Gladius. That's a form of I'm accepting and liking stuff. You should have said, I still hate Mastermos. <laughs> but you're like, <laughs> I know. Uh, I said starting to like. Didn't suggest good, hate, negative, positive. I said starting to like. It's like coffee. Tastes better than poison. Oh, there we go. Or three, two, but three it's nice to quite, hear from Yogi that deep, we are so deep, far um, away from things and people really need to, to relax be, almost more everything is thrusters and just let them cook on. Um, you know? If you, for example, look at the layout of, uh, of a Gladius, has almost the same thrusters on, on like bottom and top and in the, in, in the sides. So these they, they have different uh, thrust um, capacities compared to uh, the three two two one uh, implementation. So, anyways, nice. so how does that compare? Well, at the moment. The 3221 or three, uh, SC, uh, PU model is more ahead of, uh, of what we have in squadrons, but we will, like nice. whatever we end up in, in Star System, we will likely port back to um, the squadrons, at least for the ships that you can fly in squadron. Cool. Okay. Yeah, that's honestly the, the bit about the thrusters, all of that was kind of what I was imagining when you guys talked about moving all of it over to the Star Citizen ships. And when it was finally revealed you were wanting to get a first pass in for 323, I was like, whoa, that was, that was fast. Yeah, well, it's um, it was bound to happen. The problem is if we um, if we don't enable the system, we just keep dragging legacy around. See, thank you, Yogi. Thank you, 
for saying it if we don't rip out the cancer, the tumor that is this fucking game, and add in the healing properties, we will never get anywhere. It will always go round in a fucking circle of shit and puke and piss, and we might as well be watching fucking Team America, right? Yeah, exactly, spinning around. I can't do that in this chair just now, but I wish I could. And people just need to accept it. That until they get everything dialed in, it's always going to be up in shit. Sure. Yeah. We hate we hate that because it means like yeah. we need to it means we need to support two two different tuning systems at the same time. God. This is why in three two three we're we're having the weapons in there, we're having a first pass of master modes in there. I guarantee you it's not the last one. Um, I don't think you'd ever actually. make Avenger um, happy, to be honest. Back so across. there's always like opportunity to change a couple of You'll things. You'll just have to accept it. Like a lot Whenever of I hear Legacy and Star Citizen, all I can think of is the use button. That thing was, oh my gosh. The use button? So, you don't like interaction mode or what? No, just <laughs> the, everything was use. <laughs> I didn't know what that meant, 3.0. Everything was use. Um, use thruster, yeah. All right, so... You're 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 getting all these ships over, like you said. The thrusters are specific for also. For don't say that in sort of application stream? in the what game. One of the biggest don't places where we're getting a lot of like questions and concern from are people who are flying industrial ships, larger ships, your Caterpillar, C two, uh, whatever it might yeah. be. They have a lot of concerns that they're not being as considered when it comes to master mode. Do you have? I think you talked about this on Star Citizen Live, actually. But do hey, you have? Bro, thank you very much for the comforting months. words for them that you guys have put a lot of thought and, and tested their situations as well. Don't worry. <laughs> lose my shit. I mean, which squadron? Squadron forty two or Star is, um, Wars squadron? So we have this uh, little. Um, <laughs> Okay, so everybody who listens to me, don't misquote me here now. Right? I, I, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't Star think Wars Avenger will a, ever be happy. No, no, we had a Unless disagreement. Unless it's a game created by industrial. himself. You know? From my point of view, right, because I'm focusing on space combat, there's no such thing as a combat I, ship. I actually like the new uh, system. As, as I've always said that. Ship, right? when, um, all ships can be remember when they brought out the automat? Like, anybody ever been on a, a Starfare? And you leave the pilot seat area and you go to go down the way and you cross that past that fucking ladder, 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 and you automatically grab it. That shit pisses me off so much. I hate automatic ladder gameplay in any game format. And beforehand, Blue Manx, we used to have the use. And I loved it. You never, you could run past that ladder and never has any fucking issues and stuff like that. But when they made it where you auto grab snap to ladders, it is so shit. And I am so grateful to CIG for bringing back the U system for certain things like that. So no, no more running past a ladder and go. Hoo! And you're like, shit, I'm getting shot! And then you've got to go up, and then you've got to go fucking down to get off the damn thing. Because for some reason, when you grab it, it makes you go up a little bit automatically. Because you're already pressing W to run past it. And then you've got to press fucking down to go back down. Because you can't just jump off a fucking ladder. And you're getting riddled. And you've got to get out because the ship's about to explode or whatever the fuck. All because of automatic fucking ladder grabbing. It's like automatic flying, gimbal assist, landing assist, fucking, you know, auto ejection assist, every assist out of the mind. And then they threw in automatic ladder grabbing. Like, oh God, you know, so bad. So I can't wait for the new system, guys. Can't wait. Combat. So we need to be, mm -hmm. we need to treat them. But fair, also the new ladder right? system, it's, it's, the future stuff like, where you can jump on like halfway hey, uh, and then turn around and shoot and looks I really fucking arrows, cool. I do two, sh uh, two shots and you're blowing up or something like that. Of course mm -hmm. not, right? Like we need to make sure that the turrets and the defenses of these, these ships actually do enough ejection. to work with. Um, remember earlier when I said that these, these size 3 shield generators, they will be very resistant to like fire from anti-fighter anti weaponry, right? Nice. That is part of the Because we get the anti-material right? stuff, um, right? Very excited to so find out I what that's going to be like. I wouldn't worry about that. The, the current flight tuning that we did, and although we use like combat specific Blue names, they are, dude, yeah. we're not specifically tuning ships for combat or non-combat. Sure, they are combat ships. The Gladius is a combat ship, right? It's a light fighter. 
but we're also using um, archetypes that. for non-combat <laughs> ships. Um, or no, no, we're using our combat named archetypes for for non-combat ships. An archetype for us is not a role description, like when we're giving a ship a light fighter tuning. It doesn't mean it's every ship that gets this tuning is a light fighter. Um, for example, the M50, it currently has an interceptor tuning. Is the M50 interceptor? Cool. No, it's a freaking racing ship, right? But the properties are similar. We could have called these arch uh, archetypes yeah, also. Yeah, please take off the like weapons of the M50. Light CIG. fighter would be something. A take the weapons of racing ship ships that can quickly change its velocity vector. Has a certain ring to it, or we could just call, call it light fighter. The Aurora, for example, internally like has a light fight light fighter bomber archetype. It doesn't mean the Aurora is a bomber. It just means the Aurora has a tuning that trades agility for durability. Got to make the Aurora a bomber. So why couldn't you have called it light fighter tank, Yogi, instead of bomber, right? And then you just have it where you have the the bombers as fighter tank or whatever, or fighter bomber, because it drops bombs and stuff. Like, I don't understand why you would call it light fighter bomber for an Aurora. Why not just... Call it light fighter tank because you're increasing the the tank of it instead. Armored light fighter, yeah, you know what I mean. Like whenever you use the word bomb, er, it, you're releasing a explosive type. You know, where is the punching up arch type? Yeah, it just seems very weird for them to go with light fighter bore. -er, yeah. Light fighter bomber instead of light fighter tank or light fighter rogue, light fighter mage. You know what I mean? We've had all these fucking names in games for all this time. So if you're trying to make a role or a class for a certain archetype, I just don't get why you would call a bomber a tankier light fighter. Um, for at least one update. Hey, okay, I'm sure. Question, really sure. <laughs> just just put course. some armor every, on top and then <laughs> yeah. it's fine. <laughs> Weld it on there. Just... Yeah. Um, so, archetypes. Uh, yes. Can I? <laughs> it feels like Avenger 1's about to lose is cool. I, for my own mental sanity, get a little clarification. Burn support this. bore, yeah. So, sure. when we're talking archetypes here, obviously the interceptor archetype right now is doing very, very well. Obviously, it's going to change. We're going to tune some stuff around. In your opinion. Is that a meat mug? Yogi has? I need to... There was a guy who replied um, to my tweet about wanting to get a beehive showcasing honey mead, which is something on my list to try, but obviously if you've got your own bees, you can make your own honey mead and stuff like that. I kind of feel like I need to start drinking mead, chat. I don't know why. So I think I'm going to get some honey mead, but I think I need to get a mead cup? Mead... a what do you call something you put mead in, by the way? Like anyone? Horn? A mead horn? Yeah, that would actually be cool. Yeah, I like that. A mead horn? A tankard, thank you. Is that what they're called? So is that what Yogi's got? He's got like a, a mead tankard kind of thing. I need this chat. Because, unfortunately, my cup is uh, just slightly too small for me these days where I need more space in my cup, you know? So when I'm drinking, I need more space. So I think we need to start getting a mead, a mead tanker for our mead drinking, you know? Definitely. Maybe beer, beer stein, beer stein. That's what we need. Honey mead is awesome. Used to drink it and used to LARP. Were you a magic missile user? Cause I love, I, w I love watching, like LARPing is not my kind of thing, but I love the magic missile where you throw a fucking blue or purple bean bag at somebody. Like magic missile, magic missile, magic missile. Fucking looks, <laughs> man, I, I would hit people too hard though. I would get kicked out of LARPing. I wouldn't be allowed to play. How much does the role and archetype of the ship affect whether or not it's a win loss? So for example, Right now, any bigger than that, you are again, using a bucket. Hey, that's change, that sounds good. For example, right now, the light fighter tuning. All right, one day know, chat, we're gonna look for like light fighter, tankards. Buccaneer, you know, and if anybody has any honey money, honey money, 
current balance. What the but fuck am I thinking? If I'm in a light fighter, Honey Mead suggestions, I would love to know. He's in a medium fighter, and I'm a light fighter. Yeah, let's go back know, on this. The Buccaneer, even as the interceptor, is winning because of its current balance. But if I'm in a light fighter, and he's in an interceptor, or he's in a medium fighter, and I'm a light fighter, if the advantage goes, like if I'm in a Gladius fighting a Hornet, the advantage goes towards the, in a duel the Gladius. Is that going to make up a larger percentage of whether or not I'm going to win or lose compared to the flight player? I'm going to let this run while I get a drink. So if you have 100% points to win a fight, 50%, like in live, 90% of that calculation is based on whether or not you are a good pilot. 10% is based on your ship weapons type, all that stuff. I agree. That's that's too okay, that's I, too high. I would rather say it also has to do with the ship size and the profile and so on, right? Because I'll also the say... Model, there is no space for medium and heavy fighters. Except I'm for also going to say in live, uh, in, server in live, stability, yeah. anybody? In live, the meta is Hornets, which are mediums. Yeah, but the Hornet is currently <laughs> buggy. Right, the Hornet well, I mean, has a lot, the, bugs, a lot of bugs. <laughs> no, 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 no. But, 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 but seriously, like what happened to the Hornet is when the, <laughs> Holy we, shit. we had to Did update they just the. Um, fucking... The way Did they just ignore fucking the tomato, the, the host? In live, it's too high. I, I would rather say it also has to do with the ship size and the profile and so on, right? Because I'll also the say... Model, there is no space for medium and heavy fire. <laughs> for fuck's sake! Props to my... Props to tomato. For like, holy yes. shit, man. Except I'm for also the gonna one, say... In live? <laughs> the fucking host is putting his hand up in his own fucking show. Holy shit, man. Oh my god, it's like Salty Mike all over again. Poor Salty Mike was not saying shit in his fucking free hours. And now they've ignored the host. Uh, in, server in stability? Yeah. Anybody? In live, the meta is Hornets, which are mediums. Yeah, but the Hornet is currently... Oh my god, they've got, they've got to stop fucking bringing PvPers on, alright? The buggy, right? The Hornet well, I mean, has... A lot, of the, a lot of buggy stuff. No, 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 but, 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 but seriously, like, what happened to the Hornet yeah. is when the, we, we had hell. to update the, Props um, the, for the way how thrust cool. capacities are ca calculated because of the Fury, because the Fury has this, this the Fury has this gigantic, like, uh, what's it called, this uh, thrust vectoring thing? Yeah. Ale horn, that sounds and good. And it broke yeah. the hornet, and we and we didn't know. Yogi is a developer. Like, ah, yeah, we devil. should fix it, and then we forgot to fix it. So the hornet is part is of not the, uh, the flight the experience team. The hornet is not representative of what it was supposed to be, right? It's supposed to be, but so, it is winning based on its current it is, tuning. It is exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. It has too we, many we brought that up earlier on. When uh, developers for, for using their time, their free uh, time to talk about the game. But the point is, yeah, How much of that calculation do you envision? is based on your skill as a pilot rather than the choice of ship. Because right now, Master Mode, it seems like the dominant calculation is based much more on the ship choice rather than, which is representative of like, you want ships to be in roles. But if I'm in an Aurora, right? And I'm up against a... <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tomato is just saying like that fucking fire and going up. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'm not laughing at Tomato. If this comes across, I'm, I'm not laughing at Tomato, but I could have fucking told him this would have happened. But the moment that you have, like, two fucking bulls rotting at each other, you know what I mean? You're going to be sitting on the sideline and stuff like that. He's, he's a really good host. Yeah, yeah. I, again, pro massive respect for Tomato and Salty Mike for keeping cool heads and stuff like that. But also... If you are on somebody's show, not your own channel, you have to be more professional. Which means, let the host ask questions. If you're on a podcast, let the host ask the question and reply to those questions. Stop having a fucking banter match with each other. You have to. Average pilot, am I going to be able to defend myself against a hornet? Because... This you came know, out like, after Mike's. You just pointed to pretty much the hardest problem we, we have to solve, right? Um, mm -hmm. So the archetype tuning is, such, uh, is essentially no. The archetype tuning is just a, it's just a starting point where we, where we envision how the ship and they is don't supposed like to fly other, yeah. and feel. Well, not even feel, right? But how the general properties, where the general properties oh, where, of we, course, where we're Chris, starting. Of course, dude. Let's talk the tuning A lot of people the, have Gladius, that. Right? So the Gladius has like... Has like the G's we just <laughs> set them up, like, right? We said, oh, you know what? We started at like I, A to the sides, but and eventually we now have like a more spheric or circular things for the strafe and pretty 
pretty decent. Uh, <laughs> the darkness, forward, uh, my old friend. Yeah. Um, and the well, fucking the rain. The, is, is the rain effect a, comes down. Uh, very oh, different pitch Hello, darkness, so my old friend. Pitch and 45 on your. That's a huge well, that, I, right? That's a good meme, so yeah, yeah. That is not the archetype tuning for that ship, right? The archetype tuning is rather... Um, so if you take 70 plus... like We have like a, an overall um, attitude change degree, a freedom thing. So let's say 122 degrees. And then some fighters might, might make it like, oh, let's split that, so this that is, thing. This 60, is the thing, 60, right? The Again, I will give massive props to Tomato for hosting something like this. This is where we have a, a big issue within the PvP community, and especially for hosting these sort of conversations and stuff like that. Because the title chat is Future of Combat in Star Citizen, not Future of pvp right and i think a lot of these times they're getting derailed because people are high strung up about pvp in certain ways which is completely fine right but i don't think salty and i don't think tomato and again i say this with the strongest respect they're not strong enough hosts to deal with this kind of stuff there is only one person that I've ever watched a podcast that can assemble the PvPers together, and that's Virgil, for the deep dive. Okay? These are definitely situations where I think people like Tomato and stuff like that need to enhance their knowledge over the game, especially to do with PvP and combat before having such a hosting system. Because you need to be strong and you need to keep these guys in check or they will just do this for hours and hours and hours and hours. They'll just keep doing this and you'll never get your questions in, right? That just does it with uh, 7045, right? It means the Gladius is harder to control because you need to roll to get the advantage of actually using the complete pitch rate, right? Mm -hmm. So, But that is just specific to that ship. Other ships that also like God, fighters do. might do it differently. So there's like, and some, some so these properties are are a value of the ship. Also, there are things which are really hard to control with tuning. For example, the the um, the overall shape, the, the Gladius or the uh, the M50, right? If it looks at you, it's kind of like very small, and you cannot really <laughs> hit it, right? God, yeah. Um, what's what's the name of the uh, of the alien ship that basically from the front just looks like a big you know, the car to wall, right? It is so easy to hit, right? Right. So, yeah. and of course. And of course, the Carter World has, a, has an archetype, and there's another ship with a similar archetype, but of course, these it ships, is. They're they're not are completely different. To each so, other, right? obviously, so I, would... I would imagine Yogi has full permission to, but a few years back, CIG said we're no longer having developers on uh, our podcasts because when they say something, everyone takes it out of context, right? And you go into the spiral of, this person said this grape was purple. This person said this grape was green. And you know what I mean? It starts fucking going off and off and off and off and off. And it causes so many issues. So I'm guessing Yogi had permission and he's handling it very well. Not going too much, but we've already had where there's threads and stuff created where when Yogi said something and he didn't truly mean it because he wasn't thinking at the time because he's in a relaxed state. But Yogi said, yeah, exactly. And this is where I say this within the biggest respect for people who have got developers on their discords, but no CIG employees should be on anyone's discord apart from official. And there should be no talking unless it's on spectrum from official posting. And there should be no podcast unless it's on official fucking podcast from CIG. And the biggest thing is the Discord stuff. I know that the developers use a lot of Discords, and it's really cool that they do. But with this type of shit, it's this person says this, but didn't mean it this way, taken into translation and goes out the fucking door, right? It's very dangerous to do that kind of stuff, you know? I know uh, of some who are talking more from Discord DMs with Yogi, etc. Again, this is where... If I was CEO, I wouldn't be allowing it. It would be a full NDA that you're not doing it. Not because I don't trust people like Yogi. It's because if Yogi says something that isn't officially correct or it's just a, an idea, is that 
everyone takes it and blows out of proportion. And it's not fair on Yogi, but also this is where a lot of companies keep their doors shut. Where you, if you want stuff answered, you go to the official Discord and you go to the official forums. And you will never see the developers in any other area apart from these. That's what a lot of game companies do these days because, again, it's the community that fuck it up. Where they spin things around because they're not paying attention. Or they didn't get their way and stuff like that, you know? Exactly, Spit. You know what I mean? And sometimes people just need to relax and just listen and be like, Cool beans, thank you, Yogi, right? But they spin the narrative and cause issues. But not necessarily put the, um, the archetype... So it's not the developers a, at fault, it's a thing the that people tells that they you talk to is at how fault. How successful are you going to be with it? What I would like to reach in the future at they some do point, too, yeah. Yet, but what I'm saying is, if I was in charge of CIG, you its, wouldn't see any of them in its, anywhere. Like, properties, apart from, and I would have an official CIG Star Citizen Discord with moderators set up, which I don't understand why they don't, for a start, because that's where all the developers could be answering questions and stuff like that, with proper moderation and not biased towards different orgs and stuff like that, and then on Spectrum and stuff. That's how I would have it, like other game companies have. But yeah, CIG give them a lot more, uh, a lot more leeway. But I'm saying this is what causes knock-on effect issues. Not that Yogi is causing an issue, not that Space Tomato is causing an issue, or Avenger 1. It's the people that don't listen, and then they type something on the internet, and then that spirals out of control, and the grapevine just... Instead of the grapevine traveling information, it's corrupted information. If you want and you to have fly issues that you have to, to clear up. Somebody goes to Reddit, right? You have to learn the ship itself. You have to learn about the flight dynamics. You have to look, learn later about how how the jerk reacts and so on, right? You have oh, of to, course, it's difficult. You have to learn how the rotation rates can be uh, can be taken. Maybe you maybe there's a thing how, how fast boost boost spools up or so. This, but there's a couple of things which we would like to add at some point that make sure that that we get. Oh, to was it for of, the like, inside star system post? So that you just don't that's like, a different like, story so then that, so that you have to learn more about the ship so when you ask me now should the archetype to be defined but again or, or defined if you are successful see how i don't know it's because of the inside star season right see what i mean i've literally just shown you what happens somebody comes into chat tells me that yogi's posted something because of space tomato show and it's it's fucking crazy this is where Again, not taking away from this show. Fantastic show, and I massively appreciate it. But when a developer says something, it's taken out of context. It could be done on Discord. It can be do all these things. For a professional level like CIG, they should be getting all the developers off random Discords and having a CIG official Discord where everyone who can go and answer questions, not people who are banned from certain Discords. You know what I mean? That ship, I would say... That's how I would be doing it. Um, of course, there's a couple of like. I'm lucky say, that uh, I don't have any of the things. developers on my Discord. I would like to be in a situation again. If you fight against a heavy fighter and you f uh, fly a very light fighter, it's wonderful. He's uh, a good chance. He's right? At the moment, you don't because the heavy fighters will just. I don't go have any CIG apparently. And um, decrease then the angular, the angular requirements to get the nose on you, and then you're. Basically, <laughs> yeah, it's, the it's very hold difficult. Hold on, hold on, hold on, of these massive hold on, hold on. guns, right? So, then well, the angular, go back a bit. the angular requirements to get the nose on you, and then you're basically <laughs> are on the receiving oh, end hold on, hold on, hold on, of these hold on, massive hold on. guns, right? So that's not true, though. That's not true because. I love Yogi's reaction. <laughs> what? What? Watch Yogi's reaction. Watch the fucking eyes. Well, hold on, hold on. Of hold on, these hold on, massive hold on. guns, right? So that's not true, though. That's not true because <laughs> it's just like, what? <laughs> you fucking what, mate? I fucking wrote the code. That might be what your data is showing, but that's not what's happening. You take any great pilot and they're going to 1v1 a hammer, like a Vanguard, not in mass remotes, not a chance. Not a chance. Like, not a single person AVS is going to win a duel against me if I'm in a Gladius and they're in a Vanguard. So okay. the stats you're getting, I don't... Then maybe AVS is shit. Has Avenger 1 not considered that? Maybe AVS has shit Vanguard pilots. 
I bores rising. I don't think are <laughs> accurate because what's happening is like, especially in atmosphere. In atmosphere, you could you could make that argument because everything is even more condensed down to lower yeah. speeds, right? Um, you know, it, the, Yogi does have nerves of steel. Yeah, <laughs> the Vanguard, regardless of backstrafing or not, like it, it, it's not winning that fight. It, like the Gladius is going to get behind it. It's going to just sit on. I mean, I've, I've done it on stream so many times. I mean, it's, I'm never really afraid of Vanguard pilots. So the stats you're getting are Vanguard is getting kills on people who are either not paying attention two still learning the system, obviously for, for obvious reasons, or three getting in a group together in atmosphere and just primary one guy at a time and just shooting them. Right. So okay. if you're going to make an, like, if you're going to make an archetype and, and change the tuning, it's like this is sometimes what what makes me worried is I know you know, you know, but if you're going just based on the stats, you're not going to get the result you're looking for. Like the Vanguard will still lose. The stats are everything. Every game company who builds a video game looks at their internal stats and makes a decision on those stats. You can't say it's not true. Just because you experience a game and your AVS experience a game differently than others, that's a small percentage of what's absolutely happening in the game. If CIG have the numbers that says differently, you have to accept it. Right? Conclusions from the stats are not always true. A1 is, A1 is fighting the feeling Yogi coming with stats and facts. Uh, again. If the stats are there that CIG pulls, they have to go off that information. You can't say it's a lie. Because again, they're not... Unless they're changing the, the numbers of the stats, right? Then that would be the lie. Just because you experience something differently than what's happening in the total picture of the game doesn't make it a lie. And once, once the game starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and guys like me go out and teach people like, oh, by the way, guys, this is how you do it. That small 1% of people that are doing it a certain way is going to grow, 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 grow. Because everyone's going to know, oh, how to beat a Vanguard as you do this. So then everyone knows how to beat a Vanguard. Who cares? Then get somebody to protect the Vanguard. This, this, and this. Get behind him and you're good to go. Who fucking okay. cares if, every, if everyone becomes a fucking master at this game? Who fucking cares? It's only people that have serious ego problems that have a fucking care. They don't want to be the shiny pound coin in the fucking mixture of pennies. You know? But the pennies are going to rise up eventually. You know? So that's... So um, I, I'm not I trying saying, to be an asshole, but it's I, just... Are you saying... No, no, no. Are you saying... Well, not trying to be an asshole, but are being an asshole. I think that is actually working at the moment, that you actually have a higher chance on the light fighter against the heavy yes, fighter. Yes, absolutely. Okay. That's 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 good then. I mean, it's not necessarily what what is reported to me, right? But mm -hmm. but still. But the decision exactly. The Vanguard pilot doesn't have a clue. He said nobody in Avenger Squadron can beat me in a Vanguard when I'm in a Gladius. Well, that just shows you that Avenger Squadron is full of shit Vanguard pilots, does it not? Is not being done by the Octave we're using. In fact, what we won't be doing in the future probably is we will not make public which ship is into which archetype because the archetype is just a base tuning. Good. It doesn't Let's mean go that the CIG specific do that. tuning of a ship is respecting that archetype. There's a couple of ships which don't fit in fit into these categories. The Catalyst doesn't fit in there, for example. <laughs> the um, CIG has all date. The uh, the Zaber does not re really fit into there. Um, there's other ships as well. Uh, some ships, for example, has, have very low weight. You think that's the only option for why a van Well, again, let's get the turret system working on the Vanguard. So it's two versus one, right? Because this whole one versus one mentality has to go away, right? So imagine if the Vanguard turret actually worked, right? And you can't stay beside it in a Gladius. How is Avenger 1 ever going to deal with that, right? Again, you are looking at the experimental version of Master Mode, not the full thing, as Yogi has already said in this fucking thing, that 
everything that was thrown in is just for fucking shits and giggles right now. It's the not final decision, and Avenger 1 is constantly nitpicking on the current system, which will be completely different in nine months' time. Weapons, so the races, for example, right? Um, so the tuning is. But you can't tell a developer that it's a lie. They have the stats, they have the team that are looking through all the numbers. You know, if, the van if they see everyone losing in a Vanguard, they change it around. But if it's a small percentage group beating Vanguards, then lucky for that small percentage. Wouldn't a Gladius versus a Vanguard be the same as a P-51 fighting a B-17? Blue with fighter escort? Yeah, I mean, you could look at it that way. I See, I always look at the Retaliator as the B-17 of Star Citizen. I don't know why, it just always reminds me of that, personally. But yeah, like, again, but the Vanguard um, just doesn't have a working turret right now. It's absolutely shit. Now, once the turrets are maintained and brought back in line, who's to say a Gladius can stay even remotely if you're the best Gladius pilot, if you can avoid that? Nobody knows yet. Again, this is where you can't ask questions to the developer and call them liars, which he did, when... Everything is being changed. You have to wait for the change before you can go, this doesn't work. I can do this. Okay, that's cool. But our stats show that 99% of people can't do it. So who fucking cares? Then Avenger 1 goes, well, I'll go and train 1%. Well, 1% of 5 million people is only 50,000 people. So he's training 50,000 people. The fucking, you know, the, the other... Four, uh, four million nine hundred thousand, you know, whatever fucking number, don't give a shit. Can't say the sky is falling, we don't know, even know when the sky will be, yeah. It's it's just crazy shit, man. It's just starting, uh, sorry, the- It's just nitpicking for no reason. It does not define what the thing eventually is going to be. If Look, we if we feel- You just said it! Um, so, the tuning is just a starting, uh, sorry, sorry the, the archetype is just a starting point. It it's just a starting point. Does not define what the thing eventually is. Does not define what the thing will eventually be. Going to be if we if we feel we want to make the error differently, then we just we just do it differently. See, we'll just do it differently. Um, the the problem is then you will never really truly know how these ships perform unless you actually have actually players playing it for a while. Yeah. So, whoopee do, you can kill a Vanguard pilot in your Gladius. Awesome. 99% of the community, which is 4,500,000, or 4,950,000, can't do it. Well, right? Like, and, and, and even like, I'm not talking like one week, I'm talking four weeks, I'm talking By six ten weeks, or, a core, or one or two <laughs> releases even, because some, some, you got ten ults, that though? was the interesting part of the 3221 tuning. There were so many things we didn't predict. Like some we absolutely we absolutely pre uh, uh, predicted absolutely, but but some stuff. Avenger like flight skill for Star Citizen we like to know more. Nav mode and all that, and uh, to get in and out Fuck of combat. Crazy, like, like some of these things we just didn't didn't foresee correctly. <laughs> yeah, the nav. So this is why. <laughs> all right. Yeah. <laughs> nav sniping. Yeah. <laughs> there's so there's so many nice uh, term terminologies coming out of that as well, right? But but this is just the process, right? Like you you throw it out, you see what happens. If you're not Six. Yeah, so again, Yogi is saying, we are cooking a fucking cake. We have no idea how this cake's going to turn out because we're trying out a new recipe. You have to let us get through the fucking first batch until we perfect it. Or if you, if you don't succeed... Now sit the fuck down, the results, you greedy little goblets, and wait. It. And that's like, we're not, we're not locking ourselves in anyways, right? If something needs to be tweaked, then we're, we're tweaking it. Whether... Um, whether it's based on recommendations of a streamer or... A well, that's only if you're opening or, or you're making like a that. souffle like, like, one to tiger. That's uh, why we're here. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, everything's, like, up for... Uh, exactly, change, Snowy. We, go it's there, crazy, so. man. But that's fine. I just don't understand how Avenger 1 doesn't get this. And especially as he was talking about cake making on Salty Mike stream that we watched yesterday. It's like... You can be a master baker... And you can know how to make a thousand cakes with one recipe. And it works every single time. But if you change the recipe, which is what CIG are doing, 
You have to then learn to make a thousand cakes again to make it back to where your master baker status. Now you might know a little bit faster because you're a master baker, right? And you're faster at baking, right? Because you've had that experience before, but it doesn't mean that it comes out perfect every time. So to be the master baker again, they have to give let CIG bake to master it. Master Baker, man, I don't want to be sure I for purpose if she's not trying to read it. <laughs> master Boar Baker, yeah, yeah. He's definitely a master debater, yeah, yeah, yeah. A master debater. <laughs> That's a good one, I like that one. So yeah, again, I'm going to say this to Avenger 1. Sit down and just let CIG cook and then nitpick at it. Fucking crazy. The biggest, thing with this, really <laughs> the biggest thing with this update, I think, that you guys said on Star Citizen Live was that there you're not tied to anything per particular. There are things that are harder to move on, but this is a first iteration on a system that's yeah, going to be so tier zero. quite a bit over the next time, I assume a few years. And we even had posited in, in some of the discussion notes that this might be something that's balancing for the next decade or two, you know, based on the health of the game. There's there's not a single MMO out there that doesn't keep balancing. Um, oh yeah, this is the this is the same for us. And like honestly, this is like really really hard. But you can't balance like, something you've not well, created. Just said, hey, I'll defeat all heavy fighters. So fine. This is like this is not the the feat the guy got so far. Or maybe I didn't listen properly. It could also happen. Um, <laughs> but the um, but the overall uh, data or. Actually, understanding what's I going on. I don't know, on. Spit. I, mean, like, I don't know, dude. I'm, I'm not doing that. That's that's. Uh, that's up to the, the host of like, these podcasts to fucking feel that, 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 that stuff from me. And you use this guy as the on, fucking right? central but, like, sometimes information bank. Understanding it doesn't the data. Seem that I mean, sometimes we just have simple conflicts, all. right? Like we say, we see something the KDRs, but people say the buccaneers are very overpowering. Then we're looking at the KDRs for the buccaneer, and okay, people don't die a lot in this in, in this ship, but they're also not getting a lot of kills in this ship, right? So there's sometimes the question of what do we do with this information? And that stuff is not very easy to decide what to do sometimes with that. So um, sometimes, sometimes honestly, I don't want to sound like an asshole either. Sometimes no, we're trying to make fucking, educated guesses who cares on how to if you sound like an this. asshole? But, Everyone uh, has I mean, one. This is just part of the process. We will keep or do they? continuing. I feel like common sense went out the like window with a lot of people. For, for, dude, their logical the sense uh, and thinking is fucking ridiculous. I'm surprised they can even make it to the shower sometimes. That's what people are expecting. A sure. fucking gerbil got, upstairs running um, the fucking show. I, I do want to start wrapping things up here, but I, I think it's going to be important for us to talk about where this is all leading. Um, obviously, you said that the point of Master Modes is sort of to slow down combat. That's something that you attempted before, but had to do be a little more heavy-handed with it. Um, but there's also the very big elephant in the room, I think everyone notices, is that capital ship gameplay is coming along. And this feels like a big turn towards preparing us for that kind of stuff yeah nice um, questions based upon was that a big was that a big part of of this a big um in not influence but like uh what's the word i'm thinking of goal yeah like did that did, did capital ship gameplay coming in affect how master modes was developed a lot mm, not really the no. sin I stuff mean, like, changes in development more to most 11? ships we have in the verse are small ships right the, the vast majority is yeah. Um, and getting like the small, the small ship gameplay in a good state is basically then because most player have small ships, is then more important than really the Yogi. Big, big ships I don't know. Space. Like, but there's a lot of legatus out like, there. There is like certain expectations what ship big ships are supposed to be doing. Um, so um, they will Mike fit into, into that. Scheme I can't wait to see Kraken. Uh, we can talk about details. Like, for example, the hammerhead is it maybe a little bit too fast for the ship of the size? Maybe, but maybe it's also not. Not a problem that it is that that fast, but it's, it's yeah. So CIG can we'll tweak it any time. Like, awesome. There's a lot of stuff coming with like capital ships. I mean, if you talk about true capital ships, these things are supposed to be really big challenges for players, and um, we actually need to work on these. I haven't um, been that long in the game, and I have huge ships but already. It also has to do with like resources. What's your biggest ship on though? If you don't mind disclosing, while our small ship combat is mostly about I'm, I'm the same to be about maneuvering. The, the Kraken the just feels like it provides more for more, like enable more people thing, like industrials to, to carry things and, uh, and do stuff like focusing that focusing on know? weak points and and all that stuff uh, giving a them the Borken. right side of your uh, of your 
presenting the right cheek, so yeah, to speak. Kraken is, is to definitely something I'm very like excited to see. I've maybe, got a Kraken. Maybe higher up and there's more stuff I've got a Javelin as well, and I've got Idris's on buyback. Really I've got lots of Krakens because, um, and Idris on buyback, but because due to the way how only the, the Kraken is the one that, I really like. The, so the, will, uh, the one I've got for be, there's more stuff to that way. The um, the Javelin is just actually a joke. It was a dare, basically. So back when the Javelin came out, I'm one of the first 50 owners of a Javelin in 2014. And I had credit over, right? Which I didn't know what to do with. So the joke with the group was, let's get a Javelin, even though we have no interest in the fucking Javelin. And I got one of the first 50 that were ever sold in the game. It's got like a model and everything and stuff like that. And I've kept it this long, even though I don't want it. It's even got like a fucking discount and stuff like that. But it's kind of like... If I melt it, I've got so much credit from that ship that I don't want loads of little ships. So I hold on to the Javelin to maybe sell it in the future and stuff. Yeah, Liberator is another good one that will help with more teams and stuff like that. So yeah, for me, I'll probably just keep the Javelin and rent it out in the future. Because I don't want to have like $3,000 or whatever it was, $2,400 of credit. I don't know what to fucking do with that, so I'll end up just buying uh, skins with her or something, so yeah. Liberator the shovel. Liberator and Kraken are definitely big ships. Let's uh, just spin back you're 20 seconds. To getting damage because like the, the back shield is maybe maybe higher up and there's more stuff to be to be done, for example. I don't think the current shield system is really suitable for capital ship combat because um I would agree. Because due to the way how, how we're moving shield phases around and all that, so that will uh, that will all need to be. There's more stuff to that, way more than just like the thing we're currently. Four hundred eight. Can I? The, Holy um, shit, that's a lot. Light fighter, light fighter combat. It seems like. Oh, light small ship combat. Sorry, don't don't yeah. misquote me, please. <laughs> <laughs> The light fighter, the dreaded light Yo, fighter. Yogi light fighter, Matt. You gotta hear first. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it seems like targeting. Um, you know the way that flight works, turrets thrusters all these things are kind of showing that players should expect a, a pretty different combat experience in a year or two because they're going to have light yeah. we're going to have small ships big ships turrets that are much more effective um even you know we i can't wait for control the flowers to come and stuff out, like yeah. that, but it, it seems like a lot is about to change for people I've recently rebought yeah, my Polaris uh, exactly knowing that, that all, it was uh, I don't know, of course, going to be right? getting bigger because I got one of the cheap uh, 4.0 Polaris um, with the models and stuff. Get, all my good, ships like, are the ones that where they came uh, with models. Has, like, so I even have the Javelin the model, so, Kraken um, model. As long as uh, we're successful or we have players... You don't get them the now when you buy these ships. It. Wonderful. You mentioned armor earlier. Could we talk a little bit about how armor is supposed to factor into this sort of equation um, of players getting away or, or or maybe being in nav mode and not dying will immediately. Will Yogi answer? Players don't really... Oh, well, whatever. I let uh, A1 <laughs> reply whether or not they die, die immediately, but um, <laughs> in general, <laughs> maybe it's whether or not they, they die against you, right? But, um, or the but bomber uh, I cannot talk really about armor, so there's like this whole thing with yeah. Maelstrom which is being developed, and uh, the new armor system will build on top of Maelstrom, but from, cool. at the moment, we don't we don't have this yet. There's also a couple Maelstrom of things Maelstrom is going to be a long time away, um, I feel. For example, um, uh, if parts of your sh uh, ship are being shot off, right, but they don't carry any critical parts, we still need to have ways to um, to slow down the the flight the flight maneuvering that you can do, right? Because just because you're cutting off some spoilers on your uh, M50 or so, it should ne not necessarily mean that they kind of need to like where right? we can target the engines um, or the quantum drive. So there's a couple cool. of things we need to we need to do this. Um, there are plans how the whole gameplay interacts between. Between energy weapons and ballistics and and so on, um, but it's a little bit too early to talk about this. Um, we we had some plan because the moving these ships to the new um, armor system will basically offset a lot of the balance again. Uh, so we were thinking about adding actually a, a in between like like a simplified armor system. Um, actually, we actually have an armor system on the ships, but. It is just a static damage modifier right now, which really, really annoys me. Um, like I, I had it in my backlog for ages, so I would just just prototype that, and then it's going to be fine. But um, the thing is, I'm 
usually overwhelmed with work, so it's like there's not a lot of time for these funny side projects. Yeah, this is another point um, where they really need moment, more people. For example, people like fifty percent of your ballistic damage is just being detracted from you, and if we mm -hmm. If we remove this right now, it would mean that everybody would want uh, ballistics, which is well. also a little bit besides the point at the moment. So, um, yeah. 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 Do you think it's going to dramatically affect the time to kill when the armor system is completed? Or think relatively the time to kill is kind of where it should be-ish? I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. This is something we have to, to figure out with gameplay. Um, right now, I would say the uh, time to kill is a little bit too high in places, but then again... I, I would think that, so we have, for example, damage modifiers. We can do something like that, um, like when you're in AC competitive mode or something like that, we could just up, up the damage by, by three or so. Actually, <laughs> at, some point I, at some point, I ran an internal test, and it was basically damage times 10. That was insanely fun, like really fun, because you had this high, high, high investment, high reward thing. However, that is absolutely not suitable for a for a game where you... Wake up, right? You get out of your bed. You're getting dressed. You run to the subway. You go to your <laughs> to your uh, thing. Then yeah, you see something honest. which you want to buy in the store. This is usually happening in our gameplay test. Like, I cannot fly like that. I need new shoes, right? And then we're basically <laughs> first trying and equipping ourselves with some new, new armor and so on. And then you go to your ship and the first 35 minutes have passed, right? I mean, that, that kind of flow, right? You, you understand me. You don't want to then get up and... Just getting insta killed, right? So yeah. we need to be very but careful the thing how is, we. How the way we I look at this, right? If CIG are worried about what Yogi has described and you're getting insta killed, what happens when you're still that person that doesn't die in 30 seconds, but you die in the first five minutes you take off, right? What's the difference in dying in 30 seconds or dying in five minutes? I kind of feel like it's better to do the, the 30 seconds so you can start your gameplay loop all over again instead of being locked in and you're not, you're going to die. Like again, we're talking about like Mantis and a fighter on you, so it's a 2v1, right? You can't warp away, you can't dock, you can't escape, you know what I mean? Which is better, just to get dead in 30 seconds or dead in 5 minutes, you know? means you have longer to run away, but that's what I mean, it's like, if you can't get away, for example, which would you prefer, to painfully be killed for five minutes, or it's over in 30 seconds? It's like a weird way to balance, or like a hard way to balance up, you know? Balance there. But as I said, personally, I think like in, in competitive modes, we can we can get away with a, with a, with a, uh, a lower time to kill. But in the PU, we need to be very, very careful. Or That's at not least what worried about. I suppose, have enough yeah. uh, dynamics in the game system so that, that you have a lot of options yourself. when you're when you're under attack, so that you can escape or so. Uh, maybe we also need to educate players just to not go alone or I something like that. A question mm -hmm. here regarding time to <laughs> get an escort. So, yeah, yeah, get an escort. Really? Don't get me, don't get me started. Ask somebody. <laughs> Ask somebody. Get I've been literally twenty credits. And then... <laughs> I'm like, guys, just just hire a scout. Like, just a hey, scout. I need Wait, a beacon um, for it. Come on. So I agree. Lower time to kills are definitely a lot of fun. Do you think lower time to kills Mead. are easier for rookie players or harder for them? Because what I find from my experience is rookies have trouble getting on target, and when they finally do get on target with high time to kills, it, it's basically meaningless. Um, because a good pause could be like, why is someone shoot? Oh, okay. Turn around. <laughs> right. Um, whereas if a rookie has a lower time, I suppose pain. Yeah. That's a good way of actually looking at it. Against a I, I'm more looking they like, from the, the idea that um, you're by yourself, too right? Low, then, you know, when you're going buying your shoes, I like the long TK ship, time to kill. I think drag. what I would you know, like but, to see more alpha is that if you're able to get behind somebody that. I would prefer if the back of the shield was, like, weak, right? So, instead of having to fire, like, mag, 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 and then somebody dies, maybe have it where if you're able to get behind somebody, you can inflict more damage in certain areas, like, the engines at the back of the ship are weaker to ballistics than at the front. Maybe Maelstrom can do something like that. But that would be that would be kind of cool. Like if you're shooting face on, it's going to be a long time to kill. But if you're somebody who can get behind somebody, you can inflict damage here, and maybe it's easier to kill somebody from the back end, or you know what I mean. Like because I don't want it to be too long. Obviously, have it where people have the time to kill and stuff. But 
I would like it where if Maelstrom could make it where you have like armor on the front and maybe it's weaker on the back kind of thing. Just like tanks were. You, if you got behind a tank and you shot from behind, it didn't have armor at all. But, you know, for me... Distress Beacon on a hotkey, that would actually be pretty good. Yeah, that, I, I would like, like the that. The time to kill around 2, 2.5 seconds for like the lightest of the ships, to me, is like if you're getting damage on target, it feels really good. You know, okay. um, obviously it's going to be higher for the heavier ships, but that's always going to be you know, the case. Also, if a bigger too, ship like, hits you, it would be more fun for turrets. Right? I find too, because uh, again, it if that's it's on you to getting get on target, hit by that you do stuff. Get on target, you're rewarded for it. I feel like is a way better place to put the game. Instead, I'm of, talking about like same you know weapon sizes kind of versus same weapon then, sizes because then it becomes much more based on like numbers and it's much more of an MMO kind of feel, which maybe what CIG wants to do no, with I, the game. I, but, no, 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 no. I, I, I do get. I, no? I. One thing I can say with sure, I hate it. Like hate it when I fire <laughs> at something and the freaking number pops up. I hate this so much. Right? This is why I, I love even you, hate. Buddy. So, so, but, 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 but this is just me because for me that just breaks immersion, right? Yeah. Um, it does. I like, I like the feeling of having, of not knowing what is actually happening. You know, there were some, some, some first-person shooters, right, with no hit markers, and you fired at somebody, and the, and the enemy would knock, would be knocked over, and they're falling behind the desk, right? And it's like, is he dead? Is he not dead? Yeah, so you like, go there, and the guy, <laughs> and the guy is gone, right? I like that, right? I like that that you don't that you actually actually have to work with that kind of like imperfect knowledge what's going to happen because it also makes for a dis uh, interesting decision making. You cannot overdo it, of course, right? You need to have valid cues everywhere in the world so that yeah, you but make, kind so of that be you can actually make nice to know the HP making, of your ship. The glowing finger, you know what I mean? Well. Like if you see your your hull red, how red is it? You know how badly damaged is it? The problem with the MFD. I don't want to know my opposition's HP, but I wish I knew my HP. So I could be like, oh, my hull is red, but it's only 70% damaged. I've still got another 20% left. But when you see it red, you're like, oh, I'm about to fucking die. And then you killed the other person. You're like, oh, I wasn't about to die. You know what I mean? But where was I going with this? Oh, yeah. So it was about kill times, right? Time to kill. Repeat yeah. the question, man. Sorry. So time to kill for me was good around the two, two and a half right. second mark, right? And that Yo, for rookie having newer meat. players is he's it better fired for them? Because that's the thing is I want the game to be accessible and yeah. fun for rookies. Like if a rookie <laughs> gets a shot on me, he should kill me, right? Because with yeah. higher time to kill as we get into these issues. I don't think Avenger 1 would be able to handle that. I just don't. I can't see it. A rookie lands a shot on Avenger 1 and Avenger 1 dies, right? I kind of feel like there would be a lot of rage, right? A lot of rage would happen if that was the case. Sounds like he wants squadrons. Well, he's been campaigning for the game to be like squadrons in two podcasts, so I would have to go with that one, yeah. Low time to kill, I would not play. Depending on the situation, though, Grizzle, right? Like I said, if you have two Gladius, size three guns, and they're shooting at each other, time to kill should be high like this. But if one person gets behind, the time to kill should be shorter because you're hitting more valuable parts than in the front, right? I would prefer a system like that. If you're able to get around somebody, you can weaken them off because you're doing like a strafing run on, you know, sensitive areas and stuff like that. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, they definitely need to change it where it's like green, amber, red, black is destroyed. Yeah, like I think Tarkov does that, right? That would be cool. For them. That would be really the thing cool. Is I want the game to be accessible and yeah. fun for rookies. Like if a rookie <laughs> gets a shot on me, if like World of Tanks, me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Because just going red is so difficult to understand. Where, Am I know, about to die? Kind of thing, you know. The, the good, the good pilots, and it kind of feels bad. It does you get flood, behind yeah. Because like, that's a big oh, thing that CIG has just, to like, balance around. Hello? Is that around. we don't want everyone so, yeah, but dying? Just like, you know, all the time. So I, my answer to that is: if you have a rookie, or if you are, if you have, that's why you are a rookie. You should always go into soft death, and you should always be downed. 
and then all the time the in this game and, and soft death and so darren's requires way more shots than previously better, to like, kill you like getting, so that there's a choice the to be like all right okay be, i've done them i really didn't want to kill them somewhat prepare you i'm going to drag them and heal them up kind of situation or i didn't really want to kill them i destroyed their ship but i don't really want to kill them you know i went too far will do You've got to do or double the, damage. I mean, it should always be this situation, right now, but CIG really, don't have really it. Boring. And you when need you, that for you, permanent death or like death of a spaceman. If you soft death a ship, it should be always soft death, and it's double the damage to take out the soft death state. You're always downed in FPS, and to be fully downed dead, you have to do double the damage that you did to get somebody to be in that down state. This allows you to weigh up the odds. Do I want to finish the job? Do I want to board? Do I want to murder? Right? And it would solve a lot of fucking issues. We need this to survive crash landings as well. I don't understand why CIG don't get this. That in a game that you're going to have death of a spaceman, having that 30 extra seconds of going, no guys, stop shooting. Let's not kill this person. There's, there's no need. We've, we've succeeded. Let's not fucking... We're, we're not assholes, right? And then maybe you want to be an asshole, but then you've got to make that decision and actually go through with it. It would be so much more healthier for the game. But you should always be soft deaf, always be downed. Not where you just explode randomly and you always die PvP randomly. Combat. For example, one of our... Uh... First iteration. So, so one of the interventions. Oh yeah, I think uh, murder should definitely AI be a much harder about, criminal. Like, and I, I do a lot of murdering in the game. I completely a, agree. It should be where if I murder somebody, it's instantly crime five. This is used, which means full rotation rate and so on. Uh, this was the thing that basically destroyed me because the an AI is always better at you. I'd than, see full uh, ship destructions rare right? and, and meaningful. Same. I had no. I had no. Because it also allows like rebuilding and fixing ships and salvaging and stuff like that. And it got, got into this or most, most DPS beacons race. beacons and everything, right? Sucker started backstrafing. <laughs> I, I hate that too so much, right? So I do definitely like like I hate that so much, and I couldn't and and I couldn't like typical thing. I couldn't push. I couldn't get close, right? I couldn't couldn't encourage him to to do something else, right? And that is, for example, behavior I would not would like to see in in PV, PVE combat because it just doesn't make for a good experience. Yeah. Of course, that is a problem with the current flight model, right? And this is like right. one of the things which you know is. So again, when I complain about backstrafing in master modes, as much as I hate it, I also understand that it's going to be gone in the future. That's why I keep saying to people, if you are somebody who depends on backstrafing to win your fights. Because you're going to lose it once we get off the legacy fucking system. And you won't be able to go backwards and do all these things. It's just unfortunately, it's still very frustrating right now. But it's it will change. See if we can change it in some ways by using different, different velocity shapes or so, right? Um, but... I would still say that that like there are some strategies that PvP but players explosions will, look great. Well, will it use, again, and then depends if you start on scenario, playing right? PvP, then you probably gonna gonna learn these strategies anyways. Now, in terms of time to kill, there's um, no before Yogi goes on the next thing. There's no story after you've killed somebody, right? If a ship just explodes, there's no story. If somebody just dies and not be down, there's no story afterwards. There's no choice of do I heal them? Do I fucking help them? go back to port and stuff like that with their ship. There's just, it closes the door. And when we've got salvaging, when we've got rescue beacons, when we've got medical gameplay, when we've got crucibles and um, uh, Vulcans going to do repairing and stuff like that, and other ships like reclaimers with drones and stuff, there needs to be the ability to keep the book open. But CIG right now, when you kill somebody, sometimes they go into soft death, most of the time, they just go into downed. Or completely dead, sorry. So it's the book and the story of your engagement is completely over. And it's the same in FPS. There are times where people, you're shooting at them and the story is starting to unfold and then they're just instantly dead, right? It would be amazing for me to down somebody and go, Yo, dude, that was a great fight, man. What's your fucking name? My name's Darklaw. We were just streaming that right now. All my community are fucking jacking off at to how good I was at the video game. How does that make you feel? You know? And the dude's like, oh, you fucking suck, motherfucking Darklaw. You're such a cunt. And I'd be like, oh, dude, I know, but it's such a good feeling. 
Would you like to have a sign an autograph? You know what I mean? I can't be more of an asshole if the storybook just closes. Like it does. And it'd just be so good. Streamers need that so bad. SC will never be viable streaming game. Well, again, it loons is the role playing. But I kind of like the idea. And then maybe I do the same scenario that I've said. And I'm like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm live right now. And they're like, oh, yeah, Dark Lord, I'm a big fan. And I'll be like, all right, cool, dude. I'm going to take your guns. I'm going to take your boots. And I'm going to revive you. I'm going to put, I'm, I'll take you back to Grim Hex, dude. All right. How does that sound? Yeah, yeah. Come and kill me again in like half an hour, you know? That's what you get if people don't just die and their ships don't just go and they die. If you have a story and obviously VoIP working in game at the time, it allows us to have these fucking stories. And then these jump town stories that don't just suddenly stop can start having multiple pages where you have it right. Oh, the first battle was this. Now these guys have a new story page on stuff like that. It would be amazing if CIG would just allow us. And all it has to be is if you kill a ship, it goes into down state and it has double the HP for you to kill it than it did previously. This means that when it's falling in an atmosphere, it doesn't instantly die because it's got double the HP. And when you're shot in FPS, you are downed and somebody, instead of firing one bullet to your head, has to fire two just to make it where you can prolong the story. There's no instant dead unless like you, you're, I don't know, you take your helmet off in space or you know what I mean, or you get hit by a missile or something like that, something daft, right? But I would love more story pages where instead of just having one fight, it escalates into another story where it can either be a love interest, it's a fucking Twilight romance story, or it gets to even seedier, crazy Saw, Jaws, you know, horror, you know, would you like to play a little game? Dragging them back to an area where they've got to fight through a death trap against aliens and you have you only give them a pair of shoes to do it with. You know what I mean? Like, it could get very sinister, but it would be great. Zero does that when he can. VoIP his bounty targets, offer them to clear the stack. Yeah, exactly, but you, you can't get that if you just instantly kill somebody, right? Brig gameplay, exactly. CIG need to offer more pages to individual things, right? And I think this is, would be a good thing, especially for if they're going to do Death of a Spaceman gameplay, is to allow more people to have that story. So it's not just dead. You're respawning. Good luck, right? It's also Honestly, a good way to recruit for orcs. I don't have a clear, clear answer on that. If you say 2.5 seconds are fine, then that's... And even line, we used to kill people in EVE and they would send us an email saying, you guys were amazing at killing me. I was not prepared for it. Is there any chance I could hook up and play with you? Now you'd be like, oh, they're going to fucking maybe backstab us or stuff. But most of the time, after like five days, they're fucking solid people and you're playing games with them. Sometimes they could be spies and shit like that. But it's a great recruiting tool when you kill somebody. They're like, whoa, how did you do that? Can I join up with you? And it's legit joining reasons. Sometimes it can be sinister. You don't okay, get I'll, that in Star Citizen anymore. Go with that. Everyone um, just dies. It depends, of course. On or the range, I die. I don't, I don't have strong opinions on this anyways, because the time to kill in the future is also going to be a little bit harder to, uh, to, calculate, or to, to calculate. We can make up like ideal numbers, but... Um, oh, has Avenger 1 got that new ninja later, it, blitzer where thing? You basically, <laughs> where every part of the ship is its own entity. Um, you're just gonna, gonna... I want to get one of those. It's like, like a little ninja thing that you can carry with you and you basically put your like, water and fruit in uh, and you just fucking whoosh, whilst on the fly yeah, and just then just drink out of it. It looks fucking these, solid. I can't remember what it's called though. Debris flying around. I'm not talking about like the bullet or anything like that. It's like literally a that will actually Pocket one. probably change. Um, so I don't have a definitive answer to that. If 2.5 seconds feel fine, that's okay, cool. I'm fine if we have one second in, 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 in AC PvP environments. That's cool. So it's um, not really down to you on that then again, choice. It's you, just to see how it goes. If you die, because you will yeah, you can change not, it not looking for 2.5 seconds cool. somewhere. Um, <laughs> yeah, is that 2.5 seconds might be, to get through the shield too? Much, too? So... Or is that just after the shield's popped? Do, do you think... So, I'm sorry, Tomato. Sorry, ask a question. <laughs> well, is the 2.5 seconds total? You shoot your first bullet in 2.5 seconds, they're done? Or are you saying you get rid of the shield? If every and then... shot lands, if I'm at optimal range, I'm at the most optimal spot to kill the guy, the fastest I can kill this person from full health is 2.5 seconds. Hmm. With right? shields. 
with shields, right? Let's so with all weapons. A glad, with all weapons firing, right? Okay. So to me, that feels great, you know, because that's obviously going to dramatically change to into the 30 seconds plus if I'm avoiding fire, if I'm doing it right. Yeah, minute, on two him, minutes, depending him, on you know, extras. It just the, the variables time. start going through to the roof. That, you know, you're fighting for yeah. that spot to get the two second time. You know? But honestly, it's going to be like that. That is something I cannot really, really answer right now. So th this is something where we need player testing because we cannot just like take a look at like, you know, high skilled PVP players. We have to take a look how it feels for the rest of exactly. the game. Exactly. Thank God Yogi said if, it, man. If having a low TTK means that less people venture into, let's say, less regulated. I'll get more in people PvP. in this shit. So let's assume into we don't the have trenches, any into Arena that. Commander. I mean, we I hold my hand up from that, right? But but I'm trying honestly, my best like, to fucking we'll get in there as much time like, as possible and learn it. Basically, just need say, more hey, people if you want to get this cooked or up. If you are a player and the other guy you're shooting at is a player, damage times three. We can do that, right? But but I cannot give you a definitive answer on this at the moment. We'll we'll have to see with testing. Yeah, yeah. a lot of stuff to okay. go. Again, as I say, six All to right. nine months. Um, can I, can just to even dial in the basics I'm, of this. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm still the show here. <laughs> I'm going to get yelled at after this, but I, it's a burn. I got to ask. Because uh, we were talking about this when we were hanging out at the Citizen Con, right? Um, where do you see snub fighters? What's the role that you. Whoa. <laughs> 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 Why? Why did I fucking knew that this was going to come up at one point? What's the obsession? with fucking snubs why does everyone want a fucking snub to be like as useful as a main fighter and stuff like that it should be swarm mentality with snubs like free snubs to one gladius like that should be what the equation is the untouchable snub man like it, it... Oh, I don't know, man. I feel like they should fill. Where do you see them in the grand scheme of things? And they should be cannon the fodder. That's do you it. You feel like snub fighters are one of those types of systems that rookies shouldn't get into right off the bat, and eventually, as you start to get much better, you kind of gravitate to these ships. Is that and I'm gonna, you're looking at? I'm going to tack onto that one. Also, can snub ships use nav mode? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Bye. <laughs> so, bye. <laughs> okay. So. Um, but that's fine if it's like 40 Furies, okay, right? So in general, when we look at the archetypes, right? We have basically the same archetypes in all ship sizes. But, basically but if you make one snub the power of like, like half the damage of a Gladius, then everyone just flies snubs. You know what I mean? It's getting smaller and larger. And then trying to fill a role in there, right? I don't think this was better. Snub fighters, personally. I would say, are like... For me, a snub fighter. It's good to hear it from Yogi, but I enjoyed with, a lot of in what terms Virgil of combat was effectiveness with with like an equally and Mike as with, well. with a with an archetype of a higher category. Like, I don't think a snub fighter like the Fury should have the same combat effectiveness as a Gladius, for example. Right? Thank you. Thanks for fucking God. Thank you, Yogi. Thank you. Thank you for being the voice of reason. You can't have a Fury being as effective as a gladius. So how do you stop that? You make it where the fury can't go into nav mode. There you go. And they are naturally lim limited anyways, because snub fighters, for example, have a smaller weapon capacitor, so they cannot... So why even like the, the fury has like four size twos on gimbal? I'm oh, is sure it going to get a nerf? Yeah. So yeah. Probably, probably, gonna get, yeah, probably going to get gimbals anyways, right? But that ship... Nice. Will not be able to put out the same. So DPS Fury is their, pretty their much like a like fucking mini turret. Hit, then they're 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 down pretty much. So the question of what kind of role they fill is, I mean, they're the parasite ships mostly. There we go. So a parasite ship, just like a parasite fish is to a shark. The shark is swimming in nav mode. The parasite fish has to fucking connect to it to be in that weird bubble wake thing. I can't remember what it's called when a fish stays beside another fish. Let's just call it wake, right? And that's it. People seem to want the fucking Furies to nav around and do stuff like that when they shouldn't be doing that. They should be literally hooking up with their mothership. Slipstream. Is it Slipstream that a fish does that? Anyway, you know what I mean. The little parasite fish that cleans the shark. Literally fucking... When the shark is going full fucking speed, you see these little bastards just like... Wee! Fucking being pulled around. So that's how I see a snub fighter. It has to have a mothership 
to do the stuff. It can't keep up with the mothership because these little parasite fish, if they detach from the shark, can't keep up with the shark. It's just natural fucking life, you know? Not fight. Well, no, that's not what I'm talking about, Alpha. I'm saying it shouldn't be as powerful as a fighter, for example. That they should have swarm mentality to be... You need, like, three snubs to be as effective as one gladius. That's how I look at it. Because they're small, cheap, easy to be launched from one ship. Stuff like that, right? But I'm worried that the conversation is going to slip to where they want the snubs to be more powerful. Right, they're not nav modding be, around not and meant stuff. To be, like very, very durable and like, I'm not sure if that answers the question, but I don't know. Like, yeah, the, kicks, I mean, but lot less damage, stuff like that. I'm worried that people fighter, need this nav mode for small fucking racing, racing right? snubs. Um, so Sh stop it. I um, the only actual snub fighter we have is technically the Fury. Yes, because the Merlin. I mean, we've talked about the Merlin, the poor thing. I mean, we need to yeah. get it nose redesigned and we need to get a weapon upgrade because the poor thing is just you know but, yeah, but, but then <laughs> right like like i would see, i would see them as like like similar to but why like maybe similar to a scenario where you have like why you, you know what i mean just because avenger one uses the merlin all the time doesn't mean that we redesign a ship that's been like this for fucking 10 plus years and that it fits already in the fucking consolation slot and that was the whole idea of it. It's meant to just do a little bit of damage to help assist the consolation. It's not meant to be having fucking 20 of them flying in going da -da 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 Fuck that, man. And one, uh, Snubs should have a chance in a 1v1 with a Gladius or something because it's still one player. No, no, it should not. Not at all. No, it should not be. No. When you look at the price of the Gladius, and I'm not talking about money, real money, I'm looking at the price that you buy it. A snub is like 100k, and you've got to spend 1.1 million for a Gladius. No snub should ever be able to 1v1 a Gladius. Sorry, no. You should be a high-skilled player in a snub that can do something like that. But you do not design it where they're equal. Just because it doesn't have nav mode. It should be if the Gladius looks at you, you fucking die. You are a snub. You are a parasite. You are not meant to go toe to toe with a shark. You know? That's why these fish are friendly towards sharks because they clean the sharks. They don't go, I'm gonna fucking hook you, shark, you know? It's F, yeah. But to be honest, I feel with like uh, the M50, it should just remove its weapons anyway. It's a racing ship, right? That's fair enough, Dredge, but again, it's Tomato's podcast, I, I, I can't change anything about that, right? We're watching a video. A Gladius isn't a shark, though, it's a tuna. What? <laughs> How is it a fucking tuna? Do you know that when a tuna stops swimming, it dies, right? How is the Gladius that? Just go with it. Like, where, you, where I said you have to overwhelm the defensive. The, <laughs> the Fury or, or, or the P-52 or something, like that, they are ships, so you can use them for something. Um, I don't necessarily expect a Fury on its own to, to take down a turret or something like that, yep. right? Um, but, I, but in the numbers, it will still help, right? I also don't expect the Fury to necessarily win a... Uh, uh, a oh, I suppose if you're going with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would if pretty sure, like, in case, case the, yeah, true. the free would actually die. But maybe not a tuna. Like, <laughs> fucking tuna just fl keeps moving in a straight line. It's not exactly, like, a predator, right? Or is it a predator? What, what does a fucking tuna eat? All I know is that tuna just keep fucking moving, and if they don't move, they die. Oh, does it actually eat fish? All right, okay. Different. All right, all right, all right, all right. We'll, we'll use tuna then. Sardines, okay, so it's a, it's a predator then. Right, fair enough. Okay, I apologize. We'll go with a gladius as a tuna. <laughs> but still, like, kind of feels weird, because a gladius is not very fast, and those fuckers are super fast. Unless, like, the pilot is so good that it's really, like, really not getting any hits on it. Yeah, so on, there right? we go. But 
Yeah, it's um, snubs ain't gaining like, any love. In terms A- of A1, you're just gonna have to accept it. I don't think Start the snubs should outperform ships of a of a. Of We're a gonna get Krakens just, and like, Idris soon, they're, anyway. The parasite fighters or parasite ships. So then, ships. why would I ever use a Fury? Like, it's, it's an honest question. I mean, it is if, it is if, it, if it, it is another ship. It is another ship, right? Why would I use another Fury? Uh, you're on an outpost and you want to defend it quickly, so you grab into your Fury. Cheap, easy to do. Get off my fucking land. This is my land. Land your fury. That's it. That's for rapid. Yeah, rapid deployment. There you go. Cheap and fast. Yeah, cheap and fast. But it shouldn't be like where it's. Yeah, yeah. If you make a fury like a gladius, then it turns around and you go, why do I use a, a gladius when I can use a fury? Because it can quantum. Oh, wow. That's a great reason to spend 100k in game. Or 1.1 million, right? It's just cheap, effective, deals damage, gets the job done, but it's not a 1v1 fucking Avenger 1 spinning ship anymore. Congratulations. Right? Like, if, mm-hmm. if, if you're in a situation, let's say you're, you, you're manning the, um, the uh, let's say, a Fury or a P52 or something like that, like, there is one target, there's one target well, more in this currently, that Robert, other, right now. other players have but to worry about. They're testing the so address. That is, that is where you can get a shit ton of fucking arrows in that address, by the way. A shit ton of arrows. And on a Kraken, for example, whoo wee! I think you can get 50 on the top deck alone. Where, where I see that. Uh, and like, we just um, don't have these like, ships that do the mothership fine, roll, right? Do some, do some damage if they that's why I never understood why the 890 came out, not the address first, but that's just me. Right? But yeah. uh, you, you understand what I mean, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Power numbers. I mean, it, in a certain... Th- there we go! Tomato just said it! Power in numbers. Snubs need to be in wave format, not 1v1 in your fucking ass. Kind of way, it's kind of like that now in live, where, you know, a really good Gladius pilot versus a really good Fury. It's, it's a pretty even match right now. You know, uh, I'd say I'd almost give it. To I think the, the eight ninety definitely needs uh, a okay. rework inside. You know, especially in atmosphere, the fury is dominant, super dominant. Oh uh, yeah, the the atmosphere tunings is is, is hard to. It's like saying why to, would I um, use a C two if I can't now. The thing is like we have very this true, um, awful, older yeah. atmosphere tuning, uh, this old aerodynamic system which works. Disposable destruction, um, yeah. But due to the master mode, good that you guys get it because how good they fly is actually begin with a bartender. <laughs> Um, so I'm pretty sure that like, oh, some no, of the data... No, back to the uh, bartender AI because stuff. Because we have just like so many ship records. We have like over mm-hmm. a thousand ship records. It doesn't mean that we need to tune separately uh, for, for, for each of them, but just the amount of flight controllers. You know what? I'll just check how many flight controllers we have because it's <laughs> a lot. Probably quite so a few. The, um, yeah, but it means like all of these... Yeah. That's what Yogi be, said. Um, have so? to be, uh, Which is how I look at it. And it's just like a lot of stuff that's um, you can't going on. Like A one will have to accept this that the way he plays live is soon going to be gone, where he can't just fucking one v or go in his snub fighter and verse five people. He's going to fucking lose. That's just it, right? You gotta accept this that the whole fucking I'm um, Top Gun Mavericking out of my mind. Doing this shit is soon coming to an end. Where a group of five dads will kill a fucking pro. Unless the pro is really fucking pro level. And there's no cheesy little ship you're going to be able to climb into to fucking do that. Unless you are god tier. That squadrons, ah, oh, it's just so fun. That's they use the snubs path. to stall on half when the Empire was... The yeah, exactly. That's 337 at yeah. the moment. Thanks. That's a lot of ships to tune. So, so it is very, So this, for example, also the reason why we. Um, wh- Again, he he asks, he he says something and then just doesn't follow up. Kick. Okay? You know what I mean? Like it's either he wants the reply that he has in his head, and if he doesn't get it, he loses loses his attention and starts yawning and fucking stretching and doing all these things. That's what I've seen throughout this whole podcast. If it doesn't go his way, it's it. That's it. Where we basically just forgot the Hornet <laughs> at some point. Yeah, it's like Thanks for the you tuning because there's just so much data to deal with. Um, yeah. So yeah, again, so that's why the, I'm surprised. That's how it comes across, very... Kicks. It might not necessarily be true, so, but no, that's how it comes say, across to me. I was me. so surprised that you guys. If I don't get my way, so I have a tantrum. I'll make a video saying that the game is going to fail if we don't do it the Avenger one way. 
maybe that's not how he wants it to come across, blah, 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 blah. Then I'll fucking say to the developer that their data is a lie. It's very difficult to try and get on Avenger 1's side. Very difficult. I don't hate the guy, but it's very difficult when you just don't listen. Yeah, well, it's still better for the game. Yeah. yeah like even if like even even if like, if the one we want and so on suffer for the overall health of the game, I think that is a that is a better change. Yeah, the active yeah, testing I mean, seems to help a lot. Patches go up and down. The flight's been good, bad, good, bad. I mean, we've had all kinds. Of, I've been I've been through every patch, right? So I mean, I've, there's times where it's really great for PvP and times where it's not. We're about to go into a time where it's That's fine, be really bad for totally pirates. Cool, dude. They can't QVD stuff, right? So it's goes again. Up, I'm not down, here to goes, to uh, uh, right? um, yeah, make like people like Avenger One or Yogi or Tomato. I'm just every, here to watch and react game, right? to how yeah. I would do game where if I was on, sitting here in my pants. Really, 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 really 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 experienced and know exactly what you're doing i mean i'm not going to say that <laughs> i don't know what i'm doing right but uh i gotta be honest like some of the things are just hard to decide on and some yeah. some stuff is just like i, I would be um, if, like if you do the same game again i wouldn't again expect you, anything else then, with then that yogi it's it's easy but like uh, this nobody oh, created the game kicks, of that scale. i fully allow it dude. so there's just again like when we have, have these discussions we're not having them as in an argumentative state it's a debate it's an opinion my opinion means nothing in this world. The same as everyone else's opinions mean nothing in this world. The difference is a lot of people can't take that information. They're like, oh, my opinion must mean there's something. I hate to tell you it doesn't. In the time and space, we are irrelevant specks of dust floating in the wind. Nobody gives a shit at the end of the day. The difference is I will say it that way because I don't want to bother people going around in a fucking circle of trying to make it where you're, you're mentally fucking kept at ease right but we can also have a discussion about these things see how it goes give our own feedback again nobody needs to listen to it so again if you want to voice your opinion that's completely fine just long as it's respectful and you're not like saying things about avenger one you know it's fine if you're like he's a toddler and an adult body that's completely fine right just nothing below the belt guys because i will remove that and time people out if it starts to go behind the belt. Hey Legion, take care. Thank you for being here, you know. I know, Robert, but that's like Salty Mike and the other one that we watched yesterday did. It's I think it's very difficult. And I again I've got a lot of respect for Salty Mike and Space Tomato to have these podcasts with these guys. But I think it's very difficult for a host like Tomato or Mike to have a conversation with people when you have no idea what they're fucking talking about. Because that's how it comes across with Tomato is just, just like that. What the fuck are they talking about? It's like another language, right? And I kind of feel like if you're going to have a podcast about PvP or combat, you need to have a host that knows combat ins and out, or there's no point. It's just like the hosts are like, I, I don't know what to do. What do I say? <laughs> you know what I mean? To Answer. Ain't gonna have a one again. I don't know. Sides, right? Again, you that's have, like, the uh, tomato, not requirements. Me. You have the aesthetic requirements and so on. So it's uh, sometimes hard to 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 get the right path through it. So it's just you it's, know, it's just hard. It's, again, it's very difficult. We have to give respect to Tomato and what he's managed to achieve so far. Is that sorry, Tomato as well for the face. Let me just let me just move this <laughs> quickly because there we go. There's your very smile. Um. It's very difficult to understand the jargon, understand all the ins and outs. You can ask questions, but the moment that question is answered, it's why I would never do a podcast. Like, I've got no time for it and stuff. These guys I've got way more respect for for actually doing it. Yeah, I know, I've got you. I, I can't make everyone's face look good whilst we're paused, all right? It's impossible. So Yogi's going to be crying. Avenger looks like he's about to kill somebody. And... And Tomato has had some seriously good shrooms, all right? I can't make everyone's face good whilst we have it paused. <laughs> Again, it's very difficult for a host without the understanding of what these guys are talking about to remain in control. And if you don't have a host that can remain in control in a podcast, it derails. And I'm not saying this is massively derailed, 
But it has been pretty much the whole thing, Avenger 1 and Yogi just talking back at each other, asking them questions, and I feel very sorry for Tomato, who wants to get involved, but can't get involved. And it's the same when we watched Salty Mike's show, it felt very much just like Virgil and Avenger talking, Salty asking questions, and then sort of just like, you know what I mean. So, props to them, but yeah, when it comes, at, when people are starting to get passionate at this level, you need a very, very strong host to hold the fucking line, you know? Oh, it's, funny so you, hard. it's funny you said that you just make the same game over and over again and maybe you get better at it because that's like a lot of people's problems with games is they, can, they get the same kind of iteration on a game and they're like, why isn't this changing enough to... to <laughs> I mean, just said something so mean. It's, Yogi, it's an interesting sad, situation you guys laughing. have where yeah, you're fair enough. working that's on this open with a bunch of people playing it in public who also are kind of Virgil sharing next? their... I to be fair, after Mike's as their own stream, in changes, I would like to hear a lot more from Virgil. He was very level-headed, yeah. based, funny. And, uh, right. Shame he didn't do the list like voice, of, but it was really good. Are also very quite, impressed quite with quite Virgil on that. Compared to other, Normally I'll call him a games, dick and but it's, fucking it cringe lord, you know? Things get changed, right? Or edge lord, um, sorry. There's a lot of stuff happening outside, right? No, a lot of respect for Virgil on that one, really good. there's lots of stuff that's coming from Squadron over. Let's go back to... Yeah. And, um... Let's be honest. Like some of the some of the things in Starsons are also quite quite old and outdated compared to other other games. But it's it doesn't mean that these things get changed, right? Um, there's a lot of stuff happening outside flight, and there's lots mm -hmm. of stuff that's coming from Squadron over. So um, the which game is will exciting times get, when that happens, guys. That's a lot of now. assets over the years that will get. That. I want to finish off with a couple of rapid questions here. Just a few things that I'm, no. I'm curious about. Yeah, oh, we're going to try rapid, rapid questions. questions. <laughs> <laughs> it's like only hey, five minute answers. All right. So um, this is a little bit out of left field. Might not be able to talk too much about this, but control surfaces, atmospheric flight. Ooh. Is there any information you My can man, get on how no. hovering is going to be oh. more difficult for Good players? Good question. It won't be more difficult. The, I mean, uh, is that based on the on the it's stuff based, you showed at CitizenCon? Yeah. So the idea that there's a heat system, the thrusters take over, and oh, you might that start to, uh, that is yeah. that is that is not implemented yet. So I cannot talk to that. Um, but the um, the overall pl plan with that is that if you're if you're hovering in a ship that's not made for hovering long, uh, meaning like if it doesn't have VTOLs or any kind of like nice. Uh, Additional engines like nice. the, um, like the uh, Conic, man, drop ships then, are going to be um, so good with that. It will be limited in terms of uh, heat or something. Very like nice. That. As I said, like details are still still pending on that at the moment. Mm -hmm. The focus is not on the control surface system. Uh, yeah, I don't even know so if we'll get control on. surfaces um, this year. Later to be down fair. the line, ships with VTOLs will just be able to hover longer. But maybe we'll also change something in that regard. We don't we don't know yet. Nice. Okay. Another one for you: quantum boosting. Is that, yeah. will that replace spline jumps around planets? Mm, yes and no. So boosting, or in, in general, there's blind not warping. a lot of difference between quantum travel and quantum boosting. I wish the idea your, just called it blind warping. Your computer, basically, your ship computer decides if quantum boosting or quantum traveling is being used. Um, we will probably have or implement a version, a spline version of quantum boosting, but it's, it will be it will be working similar uh, in okay. a similar way I guess uh, but also yeah, that you just blind uh, warp around general, the and then you blind down experience is not slated for three to three um and I actually don't know who will own it um later later this year so um oh we might not it, get it, it this can year. Still, it can yeah. still change but uh you can be sure that we bring on the Valkyries. We know the Valkyries are getting a base, massive so, um, HP boost because there was like the question oh do I need them to to go around the um OMs uh, around the planet instead um probably let me just read up here nobody is perfect give a1 some bandwidth he made tons of valuable videos don't forget what has that got anything to do with this podcast panic sorry what has that got anything to do with this podcast
I don't think we'll get drop pod. No, Chris, no. There's also some counter videos doing the same thing he cries about and all the things and he was pushed in. Still need escape pods. We'll we'll definitely get escape pods. I don't think we'll get drop pods. I think uh, Space Tomato is a very prepared podcaster, and he needs a list of questions to keep on top of the show. I think so. Yeah, I think he he, he gave a little bit too much free reign, but again, it's his show. How he wants to do it. I like this this method here, where he's doing the quick fire questions. I think that would have been a a little bit better if he had brought in halfway. Maybe got some more of them in. All right, no reply. Do not like. Uh, yeah. We'll probably we have some version of spline jumping. Cool. Last question that I have uh, is more of a subjective one. What is what are you most excited for that's changing in the flight model or combat experience in the near future? What's something that, that you're really passionate about? All of it. <laughs> this, all of it is so cheesy, right? Yep. <laughs> you can't, you can't um, say that. That's, that's say too that. easy. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, um, I mean... Obviously, I like that stuff and so on. But the the problem that I have when I'm asking when I'm getting asked these questions is I know what kind of stuff we haven't done yet. <laughs> I'm looking I'm looking forward to the place where where I can be happy and say is like yep, that is that is now a good pass of everything that I wanted to have in there and it works. Once it works, right? And I see and we see like climbing combat or uh, climbing numbers and players enjoying combat then I'll be, I'll be happy and I'm excited to getting to that moment. But I also know that the road ahead of that is like, is hard to, <laughs> to go through. So um, I don't know, like, I want to find myself in a situation where, 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 where I enjoy the flying so much again, so that I'm going to play this game for ages. Um, at the moment, I'm not there yet. Um, but yeah, I'll try as much as I can that we'll get, yeah. that we'll get to that place. I guess it's, it's very that. rare that we get to Honestly, hear um, from a developer outside so of like the inside Star Citizen Yogi, stuff. So yeah, awesome stuff. Star Citizen is that we can. And it's really can... nice to like. Obviously, Yogi doesn't speak for the company. He's a part of the company, part of the game. But it's nice to know that some of the directive towards this game are not so much what the sweaty PVPers, you know. The, there's stuff, but it's also they're looking at we want to now extend the game for the other people that are not playing the game. Why are they not playing the game? Is it too hard? Is it too shitty? Blah blah blah. All that stuff. Oops, sorry guys. It's it's really nice to see that they're starting to think about more than just one area of the game for so many years and stuff. Also, his mannerism throughout the podcast and the last podcast makes it seems like he looks down on other people. Yeah, I would agree. That's how it comes across quite a bit. Very much if you're not aligned with ideas, he's very pro self-control and restraint. Yeah, especially again with Mike's stream, it was, it was a bit crazy at one point. Good pause. Oh, look at that. Hey, Speed, how you doing? Yeah, I got a good pause. I got everyone smiling, chat. It can be done. I would play more if it got better AI. See, well, again, hopefully CIG's new AI and stuff will come in. Yogi give me confidence in the game. Yep. Yeah. Everything I see, that's the thing. Everything that I saw in Citizen Con Snowy was the first time where it felt like CIG actually had an idea of where they were going with the game. Not that it's all done. Most of it was demos and stuff that needs to be worked on over the years and stuff like that. Like Yogi's saying it's going to be constantly balanced throughout. But it was nice that finally that Citizen Con showed that they've got their head in the game and they sort of go, want to go in this line and this is how they're going to do it. This is where a lot of opinions need to be there and the feedback needs to be there, but also understand that sometimes you have to sit on the sideline and wait for things to be 
playing out before you can start scribbling down of how it should be, right? And a lot of people on Reddit and Spectrum are losing their shit for no fucking reason. And it's only because all the shit that they are used to in live is getting taken out from the game and they're now going to become irrelevant in the game. And that's what they're worried about. And they're voicing their opinions everywhere because they're so upset that they're going to lose a lot of the stuff that they've done over time, right? And instead of worrying about it from the other point of view is that a lot of people don't even play this game because it's shit. It's absolutely fucking shit. And CIG are trying to make a move on this. Full steam ahead, I say. Talk to the people working on it. And the people who are working on it are also fans and players. That's uh, countless people who work at CIG came from the community, which is really cool. So thank you so much for joining yeah. us on this podcast. Nice. Avenger, thank you for uh, pinging me about this and um, coming and, and joining as well, guys. Before we go, I, <laughs> I usually tell people where to find you and your content. Yogi, I'm not sure. Uh, it's the Star Citizen YouTube channel, I guess. <laughs> like, where, where can people go to find more stuff from you? Spectrum? From me, yeah. um, from starters. Um, yeah, I mean, there's the, the YouTube channel, there's Spectrum. Please, uh, if you have feedback and, and uh, want to say things about the game. And before negative, Yogi becomes a content um, Don't just like throw your, throw your opinions out in Discord because it's very hard to pick them up there, right? If you... Thank you. you Rather feedback thread. Uh, don't necessarily try to uh, propose solutions because that is finding solutions is our job. But please write how you feel. Thank right? you. Like what, what's, 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 See what I mean? What, what doesn't work. And this, this is why I've got a lot of respect for Yogi, right? Because you can give your opinion and it, it's your opinion. But is it an opinion that helps the whole game or is it an opinion that just helps you? So instead of trying to find solutions on this game, just give the things that you don't like or you have a worry about and let CIG figure it out. Because they're not going to listen to people if you start going, my way is the best way. If we do it this way, the game will last for 10 years. Nobody fucking knows how it's gonna last in 10 years. So there's your feedback right there. Give your opinion, but stop suggesting how to fix the fucking game. Only CIG will know how to do that or what works and doesn't work for us. If you want to do like big, big white papers and like do calculations yeah, yeah. on how- exactly. Uh, they need feedback, not how rotations and so work by any means, go for it as well. Um, but keep it consistent and uh, focused because that is all. Focused and short and not ranty and fucking my way. Oh no, it's not gonna work if we don't do it this way. You know also what I mean? Just to gotta stay a lot calm. Um, yeah, as I said, like, I'm not sure if there's actually, if we have an official Reddit group, probably. There's a Star Citizen Reddit, but... Um, this is what I was saying earlier on. They really need to have a Star Citizen official Discord that's moderated by moderators that are from the Star Citizen or CIG paycheck. And... Yeah, an official Star Citizen Reddit would actually be a good idea instead of it being run by randoms, right? They don't have a Discord, which is very strange for me. They don't have an official Star Citizen Discord. And I kind of feel like that would have been the best place to do it, you know? I'm in one. There's no official dark as... Uh, yeah, but that's not official. It's not an official CIG one, though. There is no official CIG Discord. It's just, all, like, orgs running it, or fucking the Reddit, subreddit. Subreddit's not even run by CIG. What's going on down there? All right. Yeah, but there's no official stuff. So the loud people, if they think their opinion matters, a player apply for a job, they are hiring. Exactly. That's a good advice. They want us to use Spectrum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, instead of all the developers on multiple discords giving an opinion to one person and not an opinion to the other, I think what they should do is just have an official Discord. But. Or get everyone off these discourse and just have it on Spectrum. I, I, oh, there's a, there. there's a Reddit. There's a Reddit, Reddit right? <laughs> Lots comes out of there. <laughs> but there's like content every week from Jared. Uh, like there's official videos, like at least two or three videos every 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 week. So um, yep. if you want to follow the project, please go there. 
Um, yes, and um, I don't know what else to say. No, that's um, it, man. Thank you for joining subscribe us. Subscribe to Space Tomato and Avengers <laughs> One Discord. Uh, you know, YouTube channels as well, and uh, all the other streamers out there. So, I love you all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, man. And uh, awesome, Avenger, man. where can folks find your own content? Well, they can find me on Twitch at Avenger underscore underscore one. They can find me on YouTube at Avenger one. And I just want to say thank you to Yogi for coming in and taking time out of his day, out of his work schedule to come here and have a conversation with me and Tomato. And I think that's important, man. I mean, uh, I've worked with other game companies and stuff, but nothing has been as forward and as open and as honest as CIG. Right. And yeah, we've got some good times and bad and everyone's got opinions. You sound so deflated. Not, but I really appreciate What's the, what's the, what do they call it? The five stages of, it's like five stages of something. And like, you've got the, you got anger, denial. Is it five stages of grief? Is that, is that what it's called? I kind of feel, yeah, I kind of feel like Avenger 1 is going through that right now. And you'll get to the end. And he'll realize it, right? You know, he's had the angry bit. He's got the the sort of denial part. I, I kind of feel like that's where he's at with the game just now. Eventually, yeah, he will accept it, yeah. So five stages of grief. He's just obviously gone from something that he's, he's been loving to now it's changing. And there's the anger part. Then there's the, the fucking denial. Like, oh, it's never going to fucking work. Five stages of grief. Are... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think you'll eventually come out of it and be like, you know, understanding that it's not just about the PvP community, but the whole community, right? I don't even know what the five stages of grief are, but that's how it comes over. It's like anger, denial. Is it loss? So it's, it would have been loss, anger. Denial, then obviously it will end up with realization or something, whatever it is. I'll need to check out for that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's how it's coming across. You eh? coming in here, man, and, and having a discussion. And, you know, I, I kind of find it funny because I got a whole bunch of people telling me, like, oh my God, like, like you guys are going to fight on stream. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> hey man, so at the, apparently, at the end, we're, at the end of the game, enemies. right? We're talking about the game, right? We're having, we're yeah. talking about the game and fun. Right, yeah. so yeah, of course we're not gonna fight. I mean, I, I was here. considering we're putting probably, a TKO yeah. count in this scenario. Oh yeah, of, yeah, of, of course. course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like again, if if you're playing something that you love and it changes, but uh, you know it doesn't go your way and stuff like that. Everyone has that, right? But you have to accept that what you think is good for the game isn't good for the game, because if it was good for the game, they would already be doing it for the game. You know what I mean? And that's where you've got to go through the sort of five stages and eventually accept, right, this is what the company's doing. How do I improve on what they're doing, not improving on what's in my head? That's a different story. <laughs> so anyway, but I really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for, you know, I, I feel a lot better too. I have full faith. I don't understand why Bungie yeah, ever removed and, uh, content yeah, we'll, from we'll Destiny 2. I'll never away, understood right? that. But I appreciate yeah, it. Thanks, thank you thanks, so much. Thanks for the like content. Like when you've got it, you can do it. Thank you for the 500. Spicy, appreciate it. Like you know what I mean? Like, I don't understand why you would build content and then take out the game just because not many people are playing it, right? It seems so stupid. Like, maybe if it was like server costs and stuff, but I don't think that's how it worked. Anyway, it's a different story. Dad meta is good for the game. I've got two kids. Bring on. Exactly, dude. You'll eventually start loving different ways of things. It's like, for me, I started off doing uh, rollerblading or aggressive skating, whatever you want. Then I moved into BMX and snowboarding and skateboarding and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's good to try different things. Sometimes the company makes a misstep and there's a right way and a wrong way to go about voicing it. Yeah, exactly. True. Again, going back to it, everyone is human. Everyone makes mistakes. I don't think he's deflated. I would disagree with that, Hawk. This is his more chill mode. I would agree with that. In stream earlier was positive about the info from Yogi and extra confidence and stuff. There was obviously a few rude situations, though. The server cost was always on my thought for Bungie Vaulted. Yeah. 
All of you who are not dads now will be in the game. Well, I'm a dad. And I got two wolves. Like spicy content, uh, content. <laughs> um, no, 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 seriously, right? Because, because honestly, spicy content is usually fueled by passion, which Playing in game turns different you. Yeah, a lot of people just have a difficulty at letting go at sometimes, right? Because they play Star Season as an example, they play Star Season too much and they don't realize it's still a developing game. Nobody is forcing you to play it by negative emotions that's on you or positive emotions but which in turn basically tells us okay there's something there right mm. um so yeah by any means like um play the game <laughs> tell us what what play is good it. what is bad we try to make it better i mean i, I mean in the end we want to make a game that is like enjoyable for the backers uh players i'm not supposed to say backers anymore i say players now <laughs> so, um... <laughs> the members all right, guys. Remember, well, thank you yeah. again so much for joining me, folks. If you enjoyed this, consider subscribing. Or we are already like subscribed. YouTube, check out our audio platform, supported by supporters, obviously, who also get to come and join this one live. So thanks again for watching the Launch Sequence podcast. This nice. is, I think, probably my my conclusion on Master Mode's coverage. I'm I'm ready to talk a little bit more about some of the other stuff. I don't blame, I don't blame Tomato one bit. The other video with Avenger and Spled, and now Yogi and Avenger one, it's like, yeah, I've had enough. I'm fucking, that's it. Uh, I don't give a shit anymore. Let's find something else to talk about, like monasteries and fucking stores and stuff. He is, he's a really nice dude. Tomato's awesome. Uh, so I hope you guys got some good conclusive answers out of this. Again, my only criticism to his layout is this fucking revolving text. Just leave it stationary. It's such a distraction with it going up and down, up and down. At least it picked your brain a little bit more for your own thoughts. But thanks for watching. Awesome. I'll see you all next week. And we need to get more meat. Oh, that's nice. I like that. Ooh, look at that. Shit, that's clean. That's nice. Puts all the supporters down as well. Top supporters? Damn, maybe I should do something like that for you guys. Nah, <laughs> fuck it. You don't deserve it. Alright. Alright. It's got a good intro as well. Alright guys, that was the Space Tomato video. You can go and check it there, drop all the subscriptions, all that good stuff. Very good video. Again, these podcasts are a good insight, but also, yeah, there's, there's a lot where uh, it translates incorrectly to, like, if, for example, Avenger 1 makes a video and he puts his thoughts out, and the way he comes across, people pick it up differently, make Reddit posts, make Spectrum posts, make fucking comments and all this shit, and it's like, Somebody is allowed to have their opinion, but you have to respect that their opinion might not be correct for the way that the game is going, and that's fine. You know what I mean? But some of the people on Reddit who seem to think that they know how to fucking build this game, why are you not a de developer then? You know what I mean? If you know how to build this game and your fucking way is the right way of doing it, why are you not a developer? Don't build your own fucking video game. It's getting crazy with people's opinions. Like, they think that their opinion has to matter for something. Like, you need to justify it or something. It's just like, it's just an opinion. It's just a view. So Yogi summed up that really well. It's put your feedback, but keep it short. Keep it on topic. Keep it consistent, you know, and, and let them do their job, basically, you know. So yeah, that's awesome. Very sick. Good stuff, chat. Oh, God. And it only lasts us five hours, so it's amazing how two hours translates to five. Dude. Were you correct? I should have actually, like, put a poll up how long we'd have actually made it through for that. Which is surprising. Well, I suppose actually that's right. So that was like two hours, five. We, de we definitely had a lot more starting and stopping on the Salty Mike one. But yeah, two good, really good uh, podcasts back-to-back.
Hopefully, again, now let's just let CIG get free 23 out and see how it goes, right? Give her feedback when the, the full system is out, not just the broken little parts that we're getting to play right now. Proper fucking constructive feedback. We should play catchphrase bingo next time. We have a drinking game. A master most drinking game. Go for my phone call and see what's going on. <sighs> Can't wait for Astropub Yogi interview. Well. I don't think Avenger 1 will be on that after saying who cares about lore, right? <laughs> I don't think we'll see Avenger 1 ever invited on Astro Pub's podcast after dissing the lore, you know? Uh, even though it's in joke, right? But still. <sighs> he loves his he loves his lore. I was only expecting another nine hour session. No, I guys, I'm I'm doing this on my day off for you, right? Like I literally I'm not meant to even be streaming today. You're lucky that the weather cancelled my plans for the hike. Can I feel like we need to do some hell divers or something like that? Ah, oh, you're welcome, guys. It's a joy to go through it. Again, you know, I got no hate for anyone in this community. I'm just always going to say it how I see it or how it sounds to me. It's not to disrespect people and it's not to shit on people. It's just to literally do it as a, if you're going to give an opinion, my opinion on your opinion. Or how you come across is going to be my opinion. Doesn't mean shit. And it's the same thing like Avenger 1 ever sees any of my stuff. Like he shouldn't even fucking care what I say. It's irrelevant. But it was a good podcast. Really good stuff. But I really want to see people now just sort of sitting on the sideline and waiting for CIG to cook up the stuff that they've talked about and no more questions on stuff that is irrelevant. Let's get the new shit in. Let's work on that. Let's help CIG. More people in master modes, more people in the PTU, more people in Arena Commander testing it out when we get the, the updates coming soon. Obviously, don't need to worry about it just now because CIG have said that it's it's all sort of a, a fucking meme guinea pig mode, right? But when they start dialing in the numbers, make sure you're right there with giving proper feedback. Even if it's negative feedback, but don't be biased. Like, always look at it that what is good for you in the game might not be good for other people. And vice versa, right? Oh, it's, oh, it's, it's fucked, yeah. Like I said, Sonicsaur, I think... I think I, I want to be super generous with Yogi and the team. Six to nine months from now, it still all won't be in. Or maybe it's all in. So, Master Moses is in. The warping system is in. And the control surfaces and stuff is in. Six to nine months to achieve that. That's my guess. Two years to get the basic tweaking done for every ship. Constant tweaking for the rest of our lives, playing Star Citizen. That's my, my guess right now, my prediction. Six to nine months to get all the tech in, two years to dial the tech in, and how many balance changes in the future, unknown, right? That's my guess. It would be in... Tier 1 in 6 months? I don't even think it would be Tier 1 in 6 months. I'm talking about just all the tech is in. As in, Master Modes, the new Quantum Systems, the new QED Systems, the new uh, Atmosphere and Control Services. I think 6 to 9 months just to get the tech in. I would say end of the year, after CitizenCon for all of that. All in the game. 2 years from now, to dial it in. That would be my my guess. Again, I've got no information going, but it's quite 
It's quite a serious thing. Because again, you've got to remember, they are literally pulling up the band-aid of disgusting pussiness of Legacy, and they're ripping out all the shite that they don't like working with, as Yogi said, and they're starting to put the good stuff in, and they're going to fucking shut it down, and there we go, right? That's going to take a long time to gut it out. Like I said, I said this like when we saw CitizenCon, by the time all the stuff that CitizenCon stuff makes into the game and it's dialed in, it's going to be Star Citizen 2 at that point. It's not going to be Star Citizen anymore that everyone knows. It will literally be another video game. And I'm all for that, you know? We'll be freed from Light Fighter meta, exactly. And I don't think there will be a, a distinctive meta worry that I think Avenger has right now. I generally feel the high-skilled ceiling players are going to be able to create their own meta in the ship that they enjoy. If you are really good in a vanguard with a gunner, you're going to slap a couple of gladius, you know? Only if you're good enough to achieve it. I think that's what the meta will turn into in Star Citizen. Yes, there might be some easy ways to get into, like, a meta role with, you know... <sighs> A certain light fighter or whatever, right? But I'm I'm pretty sure that if you've got a good coordinated group, good experience, good comms, you'll be able to triumph over many, many groups. And by then we'll have a thousand ships to choose from. Possibly. If the flight model is good, the meta will be in combinations. Yeah, exactly. One of the best ways I would look at meta in Star Citizen, did anyone ever play Guild Wars 1? And go into the Halls of Hero? Anybody ever do that? Where you were up against multiple groups, it was an 8v all, basically. Where you had your team, and you would be up against 8, eight teams. And you would go through it and, and do certain things, you know? That is how I feel Star Citizen is going to end up into, where... The meta in that game was you could have a meta of, like, rangers all with spirit bombing and stuff like that, but they could be countered by a full group of monks smiting, right? That's how I see Star Citizen going. There will be a meta, but there's always going to be a meta that can counter that meta, and a meta that counters that meta, and it just depends on the day that it shoots, right? That's how I see Star Citizen going. Like lol and stuff like that. Yeah. I imagine the meta, each player is in a Polaris or Idris with full NPC crew. Well. <laughs> That's another kettle of fish to fucking go through. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I mean, again, going going back over things, there's a lot of things I agree with Avenger. Like, I, I, will, I will bring this up, as he mentioned. I would love it if it was just lag pip. Lag pip gameplay. And you have uh, gunners with doing other things and stuff like that. There's so many things I take from what people say and agree with, and then I have to also take into consideration, because I'm trying to stay neutral in this, because I'm not wanting to advertise myself as a sweaty, degenerate PvPer. I just want to be somebody that does PvP. I have to look at it that everyone who plays this game needs to be able to enjoy it to a certain degree. Not on a hardcore level. That would come over time. Right? And I think it's more important to get more people into this game playing, especially with 400 player servers. Like, oh, wee! I don't want 400 people flying around that don't know what the fuck they're doing in the game and they're just rolling their face over the keyboards to make it work. I want them all to be getting on with things and we find our own content and gameplay and all of that, so... And I think 323 is the start of getting there, right? My meta is a $200 AI, AI blade... Oh, fuck off. I... Right... Obviously, I have no information on this. I'm going to give my opinion down on it. I don't think there's ever going to be AI blades in this game or NPC crew. That's going to piss off a lot of people. But I don't think it's ever going to happen in this game. Hey, Nixie, we see you. I see little ears. Hmm. Hello.
What are you doing, White Wolf? White ears spotted. Look at him, chat. His little brown nose. He's like, why, Dad? Why are we doing this again? Why are you late last night? Yeah, don't worry. We're up early and I'm going to be going soon. I kind of wanted to jump into um, some hell divers, but I'm also like, ah, I want to get up early and get some things done. Maybe, just maybe, people need to want to cooperate in an MMO to get things done, just about- I completely agree. You know what I mean? I can't, like, so... I don't want to offend people that have bought an Idris and they're just wanting to be a solo Idris player, but... I kind of feel like CIG should have always advertised it, where... If you want to have small ships, you do small jobs and stuff like that by yourself, and the big ships are multi-crew only, and you do it as a group or an org or something like that, you know? I really wish CIG hadn't give people the dreams that they're going to be flying around in their big ships by themselves doing all the things and stuff like that, because it kind of comes across as they're... They're not doing that. Look at them shit. Look at his little pinky ears. Hey, that little pink piggy. Do you want to come up and see everyone? Up? You come up? Hi. Look at them chat. It's like a little parrot dog. You want to say hello to everyone? Are you wanting some snacks? Oh. You want some snacks? I'll need to go to the other screen then for snacks. Let's bring up the other screen then. That means the other wolf will be around, right? The other wolf gonna be around? Where is the other wolf? I need to get a button that changes these scenes easier. Oh, he's a big floof. Yeah, he is. However, I don't think he'll be as big as Avenger 1's uh, Samoy. Pretty sure. Oh, wait, no, one minute. It depends on how big the Samoy is. But the Alaskan Shepherds are, are quite big. There's a little Malmet. <laughs> but Avenger 1's dog, Sam, is absolutely gorgeous, man. I would love a Samoy, but I do not want to deal with the hair. Oh, yum, 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 yum. They said straight out once that uh, they will not be making NPC crews for hire. Well, no, NPC pilots will not be a thing. So an NPC can't fly your ship for you and you fly another ship. That's what they actually said, Nero. They have yet to confirm if we get a full crew or not. <laughs> Security father. Well, we don't know about that. Obviously, you just can't. Like, you can't own two F8s and uh, the NPC fly one of them, right? <laughs> Pure and utter devotion to focus on snack. Inverse sneezing! Have you seen NPC fly their own ships? You don't want to be playing yourself. Yeah, that's true. Yum, 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 yum. Right, that's it, boys. Because it is 10 o'clock at... Oh, no, it's nearly 11 o'clock at night. You're going to spoil your... Your breakfast. Oh. All right, guys. Say goodnight to the pups. They're off skis. Mm -hmm. I need to make, like, a better scene that goes through all this. Oh, Nova showing its tail. So... I also need to put this back. Oh yeah, wait, give me a sec, chat. I will at one stage need to redo my scenes where the reaction stuff can memorize. 
position. That is definitely a given. It's like watching you follow the pep. Yeah. Is that a fire extinguisher for, for a flaming game? Dude. I like I am appalled. Can you move please? Thank you. I'm absolutely appalled that content creators never advertise having the powder commander in their fucking sets, man. I got all this expensive hardware that companies and you guys have supported me over the years. And I never see any content creator advertising fucking safety. And it does piss me off. But we have the powder commander here. Why do we use powder instead of water? Powders for electrics, exactly. CO2 is better for electrical fires? Yeah. Okay. Let me just quickly get a fucking Halon system installed. Let's watch me all fucking lose the ability to breathe at the same time, right? <laughs> Guys! Guys! Fucking... Easy 20k investment. I don't even think you're allowed to install Halons anymore. You know? There is a uh, fluid for electricals and powder work. Yeah, I, I always go with powder for electrical. Just easier to clean up as well. Because once it dries off, you can just fucking blow it out, you know. Yeah, the, the halon system is definitely no longer like required or like used in main. What, what do they use now? They use, um. They use the, it's like an air system, but it's not the fucking, the, the CO2 system. The army don't give a fuck. Yeah, well, I would imagine, like, replacing a Halon system is very, very expensive. When I worked in IT, I've been part of a Halon testing thing, and yeah, that was one of the scariest fucking things I've ever had to deal with. Trapped in a room and the fucking air just goes, <laughs> gone. <laughs> and you're like, oh my god, thank god I've got a fucking suit on. Just take a sniff, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember what the safer version of Halon is now that people use. It is a badly designed system, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we use no no <laughs> Isn't that the Russian gas? Like Novachok or something? Or am I thinking of a completely different thing? Yeah, we'll fill the room with fucking Novachok gas. Novak, right, okay, so FM200. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it, all, it always annoys me that when I see content creators showing off their studios, I never see the safety with me. I, I'm, I got a fire extinguisher here, I got a fire extinguisher over there, and I've got one in the other, house, uh, the other part of the house. Different, obviously, for in the house, because the more electrical stuff is here. But yeah, man, I like I I get them. I've got a fucking uh, system above the actual PC, so if there's any like, there's a like a fire um fire alarm directly above the PC, so if there's any like motherboard smoking or anything like that, I'll instantly be told about it. It's too important to me to watch it go up and fucking smoke. So, yeah. Gigabraid, nice. Hopefully they'll build something then. Because I would be in the market for something that's actually like designed for audio, not microphone. Freedom or something. Why are you slowing down? 
I swear this thing slows down all the time, guys. Right, well, we're, we're fucking done, guys. We're fucking done. Mm. So late. Hopefully this will be the last uh, React video until Thursday when we do Inside Star Season. Inside Star Season! Oh shit! I just remembered. It's beards and dreadlocks and all that cool stuff this week. Finally we get to see some juicy beard gameplay. And also I kind of wish I had dreadlocks, it would be kind of cool, but... Well, I'm hairless, so... There we go. I'm looking forward to seeing... I can't wait to see the first bearded woman with dreadlocks. It's gonna be awesome. It will be awesome, chat. Get a wig? I do have wigs. Diff sent me an anime wig that goes down to my ass. It's super long and it's got like a ponytail. It looks like an anime warrior or something like that. We might have a, re uh, a redemption on that one day. We'll see, we'll see. So master mode was designed just so we can show for- Yeah, because when you're flying past somebody and you got your dreads and your beard, you want to be like- And they're like... You know? That's completely what it was designed for. All right. I know where we're going, champ. Uh, I did, but then I'm also contemplating. Oh, I know where we're going. I know where we're going, champ. We are going to see a cunt. <laughs> I love this. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> Alright guys, I'm out. I will be back tomorrow, but obviously because I'm streaming today, I might be um, a little bit later. We'll be probably doing some Master Modes, PvP, and then we will be into Helldivers, because Helldivers is about to drop a patch on Thursday. So I kind of want to find up some things. Are you ready to go, little one? Oh my god. Could you look any cuter for the stream? He's like, goodbye, Chris Roberts. Goodbye. Mm. Oh, little puppy. Is it ready for bedtime? Oh, so soppy. Are you so soppy? I tried a different level eight. Holy shit. Oh, in Master. Um, in uh, Helldivers, you're talking about. Yeah. You should totally play, like, tomorrow, like, if you're free, because the last time, I think it was, like, Friday, what, was it Friday or Saturday we're playing diffs with Willis, and we're just blasting out all the XP farm and stuff like that. But yeah, guys, right, let's fucking do it. We'll have some hell divers tomorrow and stuff like that. But yeah, appreciate it. Thank you very much, guys. Absolute champion. Um, yeah, if I don't get to see you over the week, have a great week. All that good stuff. We're gonna raid Buster the Destroyer. She's an absolute cunt. In a good way. A very good way. Right, let me quickly sort this whilst we're fucking out of here, right? Actually, no, I can't do it from here. But yeah, thank you very much for all the tier 2 tier threes who are massively supporting the push towards partner. Or partner plus and stuff. Preach yeah, she's a 100% certified cunt. That's what she says, it's not my words, all that stuff. Also, why is stream elements just... Fucking derping out right now. Let me actually see here. Why is it derping, chat? Oh yeah, because it's not on, that's why. Right, I'll need to fix that afterwards. Copy the emotes. Actually, I don't even know if the emotes will work. If we do it. Let me quickly post it. Since it's fucked. There you go. Awesome stuff. Right, I will catch you later, guys. Have a good gen. See you tomorrow and all that stuff. Appreciate it. Thank you.